one it is jdf listen i don't know what i'm gonna talk about i just pushed record so i'm gonna speak from the heart i think today we're gonna talk about being yourself and being you and the hardest thing to do yourself is to be transparent i think for me at least i was always stuck in this world way back in the days uh growing up as a kid of not saying no or being the yes man um but you know what transparency is all about is getting down to the bottom of the problem. If you have an issue with someone, honestly, the best thing to do is just go and talk to that person, confront that person, not confrontation. There's a difference. Just confront, be transparent and ask them, hey, you know, instead of all the gossiping and all of this and all of that, is there an issue that we're having or is there a problem? And then you can work it out. So uh, sometimes I think, People aren't transparent. And I know we all have to wear a mask in life. I know that. I get it. Because you can't say, how your day? how's your day going? You're going to be like, my day's crap. How's your day? I get it. We all have a mask. But at least being transparent and being a man of your word. Those two things, I think, will make you the toughest, biggest, baddest man or woman on the planet. Is because, number one, you can't buy trust. You can't buy your word. If you break it, it's broken. No one's going to believe in you. No one's going to trust you. So that has to be built from the beginning. If you say something, you got to do it. Just don't say it because it's getting you out of a situation. If you say it, then do it. That's your word, right? It's gold. It's priceless. You can't pay for that back. Also, it's not for sale, right? So being a man of your word and then also just being transparent. You know, sometimes you got to say no. Um, don't just be the yes man. I used to be out there and say, oh, I'll do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do that. The only problem is I said yes and I'm not going to let people down. So that's where my issue was back then. So I learned just now to be you. Be you, but also be transparent. Be a man or a woman of your word. If you say something, then do it. Uh, and if you don't, then you need to own up. You need to step up and be responsible. There's no one better that I respect than someone stepping up and saying, you know what? I own that. That was my mistake. I apologize for that. What can I do to make it better? Sometimes we got to own up to our mistakes and there's a lot of people that don't do it. So that's what I think we're talking about is being a man of your word, being transparent and just, uh, own up on your own BS. You know what I mean? All right. That's all that's on my heart. Have a good day. Not much advice I'd want to give you because it's the pain that drives your success. It's the stumbles that make you get back up. These lessons can't be taught. It's the experience one has to learn. Sometimes people say life isn't fair, but it's all how you look at it. There are lessons I could teach you but you're the only one that must make the choices. Sometimes we'll lose the battle, but you must win the war. Wounds hurt, but now they're battle scars. I had to let you fall because God picked you back up. Life isn't a race, it's a marathon. Your longevity will tell your legacy. Good job, Jay. Fall. Well, it's been a while since I wrote. I'm sure at times everyone has moped. But this ain't me. I don't want to go back to where I was. All I could do is pray and hope, shake it off. But when I do, my mind says, nope. I mean, how do I deal with this? How do I even cope? I don't want to slide, but it is a slippery slope. I'm struggling, I'm grabbing, I slip because I missed the rope. My emotions are overflowing like a waterfall. The words I speak are positive. Well, at least I think they are overall. With stress occurring regularly, it's too fast. It's a hand side. Emotions are thrown like a curveball. But how can you even breathe when the air feels like ethanol? I mean, I want to fight back my mind. I want to brawl, but when I punch, I'm on the ground. I mean, I see the takedown. I begin to sprawl, but I miss. All I can do is crawl. Then I disappear, I'm gone. And it's just me. Staring at the ceiling wall I mean, people can see my pain You can see it in my eyeball The sun would shine But the darkness moves in Becomes a rainfall I'm all over the place Like a human pinball So 
So I delay and I begin to stall. Please, God, take my hand before I fall. Mm. All right, it's morphin' time. Get your money up, not your funny up. Yeah. <laughs> We back! <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I go hard in the mother paint. Chorizo, I see you four months sub. Thank you. I appreciate it. We are talking all Power Rangers stuff. I know, I know the people like, why are you not talking about Power World? Why are you not talking about the AI controversy going on in Twitch? I know, I know, I know. But, you know, today is a day one uh, stream for all my day ones, for the people who uh, actually helped build the goddamn channel up in this. Oh, I got some, some hair sticking up in the back. I'm tripping. Anyway, uh, for the people who helped build the channel, for the people who, <laughs> who helped make sure I had the proper equipment, the goddamn stream and shit, they like, hey, we tired of seeing you lagging. We tired. Jack, I see you. Who we look, we got we got Robin up in this bitch. I see Chad. He re-upped on the membership. 11 months. I see Cheyenne. I see, is Brent has Brent made it yet? <laughs> has Brent yet made it yet to save the day? Where in the world is Brent? I see we got a lot of a lot of our regulars. I see Petty freaky ass up in this bitch. I see her, but you know, look, guys, today it's a great. I'm talking about. I think I have. I don't want to like toot my own horn, but I think I need to toot toot. Um, the best Power Ranger streams. Can I say in the world or just on YouTube? I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think no one's no one's messing with me and they're only getting better. My soundboard is going through a little uh, reconstruction period. So to make everything go smoother, I know some people were all expecting this probably to be on Saturday, but because of what I have and because of the nature of everything. Is going to be today <laughs> today uh my little my nephew uh birthday is well his birthday already passed but his birthday party is tomorrow so i gotta be up there and i can't be over here so uh hello everybody and dust is he come out the gate dropping memberships get your money up not your funny up get your money up not your funny up uh if you get a membership compliments of dust you know you're supposed to spam the goddamn emoji um letting everybody know that dust put you on uh, so welcome all the new members out here. Uh, but it's Friday, guys. We we got to loosen up. We got to loosen up on Friday. It's a party. It's a pa I know it's a party. I know it's a party. Y'all should know it's a party. So let without further ado, right? Without further ado, let's get the party started right It's morphin time! Is they crushing it? <laughs> All right, 
but somebody said it's Friday. It's he it said Robin said it's Friday. It's what? It's Friday. Like I'm rich, act like I'm rich, act like I'm rich. Act like I'm rich. It's Friday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody said they about to crack a beer? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I thought I thought I had it. We was about to keep going. Look, 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 look. We can keep going. Let me find it. Let me find it. Hurry up. Hurry up. She about to crack the beer. Where, where is my beer drinking? Po up. Is this it? What? What? White Claw. The heavy tequila pineapple. Are you yelling Jing Jing? It's a dwarfing time. Fuck it, fuck it, waste it. Fuck it, fuck it, waste it. <laughs> Let's go! Let's get fucking wasted! That's my ass get fucking wasted! Is that Austin St. John? I I could I, I didn't I didn't know if that was Austin St. John running. I, I didn't know, y'all. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Alright, it is Friday, guys. We gonna have a party. We gonna get deep. When I tell you deep, I'm talking like we it's gonna be deep. And we may have a special guest appearance. I got to keep my eye on my email. A big dog may be joining the chat. Now, somebody asked, right? Cheyenne was like, uh, how, how do you get an Austin St. John interview? We're going we gonna to answer that question today. But, you know, uh, let's let's get into the content. Let's get into the content. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? So we are all here because of this video right here. Give me a second. We are all here because of this video right here. You, you may have seen it. I've seen it. I have seen this video at this point. I've seen the video. Uh, shout out to the, the Power Ranger fan who was in, ensured me to see the video to, to have access, if you will. And they put on for me because they didn't have to. But this is the video that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to stick together as a unit. Right. We were going to fight this together. Right. That didn't happen. Very nice about this. Well, different people for the different reasons changed their mind. I mean, obviously, that would be Amy Jo and David Yost and Jason Frank. Uh, and all of them had their own reasons for deciding, uh, you know, we don't want to renegotiate the contract. After all, we're just going to grin and bear it. But we, we wanted to stay. Yeah, we go. We gonna get to it. We gonna get to it. We gonna get to. It. Sorry, guys. Uh, if you if you see in the commercial, <laughs> look, YouTube is gonna YouTube. Uh, if you want to do anything, if you want to like, they got me hammed up. They got me hammed up. But you can also watch on Twitch if you like. If you want to watch on Twitch, I know we got Jack over there watching on Twitch. Um, and we gonna be watching some copyrighted material. So we might. We look, guys. Remember last time we was watching some copyrighted stuff. They was like, uh, they hit me with the. And we had the skedaddle. I'm also waiting on my daughter to call me. So we have that going on. But um, there's a video right now that people are responding to me, right? A hold on. I got to go full screen because I don't want to expose this person. Uh, here's what's, what's going on in the industry, right? You have certain people with certain, uh, let's say, affiliations with maybe characters or organizations, and they don't get to share their opinion on things, okay? Specifically, ASJ and Walter in, you know, this recent video. So they watched my video, me and Brent talking about it, and this is what they had to say. Um, if you haven't seen that video, uh, go watch it. It is pretty good, pretty informative. Uh, now look, this is a big powering, this is a big, this is a big dog in the industry, okay? And they want to remain anonymous so they can keep continue to work in the industry. OK, uh, what they say, JDF was the brand. They said JDF was the brand. That's a truthful statement. Uh, Steve Cardenas take was spot on where Brent said, you know, he's all about money. He's money grabbing. You know, he's practically taking the money out your pocket um, and that he has no line. 
sorry, Steve. I mean, this is this is someone in the industry. <laughs> uh, they also said that the only Ranger that has a steady line is Kimberly. Get your money up, not your funny up. Um, what else? They, they went on and said Steve has no line. Austin has no line. Walter has no line. Um, and that's pretty much all they had to say about that. But in response to this video, we already have JDF's response, right? We already have. We, I've already showed it to you guys. you like, Henry, no, you didn't. I'm like, I know I didn't show you about the million dollar, <laughs> the million dollar uh, response. But this is JDF's response to people complaining about money. We've seen this. You've seen it. And we don't have to play the whole thing. We don't. But, but we see. Let, let, let's let's give it some. Let's give it some clock. Let's give it some clock. Ranger in the Power Ranger pilot in 1986. So he did Bio Man. That was the one that, that Stan Lee tried to develop, right? In 86, I'm not too sure, but story. So I have much respect for Heim being a businessman. Yes, he is a businessman, and we can't blame him for being greedy in this. He brought Power Rangers to life. If it wasn't for him, you couldn't complain. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. So, I got turned down eight times until Fox Network, Margaret Loesch, picked up the show. Now, if you listen to Heim's podcast, Heim came from selling pencils to the most richest man in Hollywood at that time. Right. Uh, All right. So this is about to be JDS response because his response has been pretty spot on. It's been pretty consistent, if you consistent through the years, if you will. And nothing pretty much has changed. And you're probably not going to hear nothing that you haven't heard if you've seen this clip before. But we're only going to play like a minute and a half of it. And then we're going to keep going. Uh, you know, he bought Fox Kids Network. I mean, he dominated. And that's a whole other story. So I have much respect for Heim being a businessman. Did he pay everyone the proper ways? I know I got taken care of. And that's fine. <laughs> He's like, I got, I got money. Uh, because what happened, guys, if you don't know, if you maybe you new to the channel, when he left the show, they wanted him to come back. He came back making a little bit mo. And I wasn't there for the profit. I was there for stability. So when I went to Cybertron, they said, OK, here's the good news and the bad news. I said, oh, Lord. What's the bad news? You're not going to get your own studio and we're not doing Cybertron. We're turning it into VR Troopers, a three man. Hold I on. came back as the White Ranger. Now, at that time, I truthfully say that I wasn't trying to be the leader. Um, it just found me. Leadership found me because in life, I feel like leading uh, in my martial arts schools. I, I, I lead by passion. So it was very awkward to do table reads. And have my first we don't do table reads anymore <laughs> remember he was doing he was like it's more it's more for time and then you know uh austin was like that's my line he's like dude just shut the fuck up and read the line man we we, we got we got shit to do man but when we did a table read when tommy had to say it's morphin time things didn't go very well in the table read and <laughs> i didn't care about the line i said well y'all can say your lines i i don't really it's okay so we didn't have table reads anymore so when we would get the scripts we would get them you know, week by week, and I would read the scripts, and I was happy and blessed to be there. Uh, talking to Dave and Amy, uh, you know, there was a division among cast members. Some cast members wanted to make it better. They wanted to make it union, whatever they wanted to do. You have to understand, I wasn't there for that. I was there for stability in my life. I was happy. I was proud. I was like a superhero. Yeah, I didn't absolutely. care about the money. I didn't even, and, and when other people left, guess who got paid more by not asking I did. And when it came to Turbo, we'll, we'll talk about this. And I know you got questions and I hate talking all the time. No, but no, no, that's okay. Why, You're getting us caught up. Cook. Cook. Let him cook. Okay, so we're so we're doing that. I came back as the White Ranger. The movie comes up. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, we got paid decent money for the movie, but I'm not looking at the money. I'm looking at are we working? Is the show on again? Yeah, my White Ranger. Cool. The suits are awesome. We're kids. We're going to Australia. And I really feel at this time, when people complain about making money, I can truthfully say one year in my Power Ranger career, I wrote an IRS check for $212,000. And and I never told you on that. But the reason why I'm telling you that is when I wrote that check. When you, make, when you write that check, you're probably making millions. When you write an IRS, IRS check for $200,000, you're probably making millions. I was like, this is a house. That's when I realized... I got money in the bank. Maybe I should buy a house. And I bought a house in cash. I went to go 
you know, through, through the money. I went to go buy a car. No one helped me. No one gave me service until I said, I, I want to buy the car. And they say, you're going to finance it. No, I'm just going to pay for it. Wrote a check. They're like, who is this guy? You know, so I never looked at my bank account. I looked at more of the blessings and who I was on the show. So when it came to the movie, you know, I did the movie and they picked one character to travel around the world and promote the movie. And I went to Germany. I went to Israel. I went to France. I went everywhere. Meanwhile, the other Rangers went to like New York. You know, we did the TV guide cover. It just happened to be Tommy Oliver's on the TV guide co- cover. So it was a lot. I had to fact check him on that shit. I was like, yo, you was on the TV guy? He was like, yo, Henry, chill. <laughs> he was like, chill, chill. It was like, chill. I was on the cover. If I said I was on the cover, Henry, I was on the cover. I was like, okay, okay, okay. You got it. You were on the cover. I get, all right, White Ranger, let, let's let him cook. Let's let him cook. Let him cook. All right, let's let him get back to cooking. All right, here we go. Here we go. A lot of uh, uncomfortable that taking this Tommy and putting him on a pedestal, but I felt like Tommy character and I deserved it because I worked hard. I stayed loyal uh, and it wasn't about money. So I never auditioned for the Red Ranger. I wasn't there for uh, any kind of money. Now, I, I will say I love Walter. I love all the guys. I love everybody. But we each have a different purpose of why we're there. Maybe they were there for money. Maybe sure. people at cons are there for that. I still don't charge anything at cons. <laughs> Brent, if you, you want to buy something, you can. If you Brent, don't, where you, you don't. But maybe my reasons are different from when I grew up on the streets and growing up. I was just happy and blessed. And I do find it kind of rude and in the industry, especially now during quarantine, to complain about life and I wasn't paid proper and I wasn't just be happy and blessed that you business. got a job and I was so happy. And- business. JDF was always standing on business because he was a businessman and some people were standing on greed. And when I watched that goddamn 18 minutes, they guys, it were little things in the interview or in the, in the video that they said, I'm like, if I was interviewing them, I would have pounced on that. Especially when they, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but we'll, we'll get into it. Blessed, I was a superhero. Yeah. You know, and that's what led me into the show. Now, into Turbo, <laughs> time goes on. I'm working hard. Yeah, six days a week. Yes. So this is like 1997 now when we get to Turbo. All right. So there we go. Right. So he was saying, I'm blessed. Now, look, uh, someone said, what does it take to get a JD, a Austin St. John interview? I don't know about you. Uh, when I approach someone for an interview, they're like, well, how many subs you got? I'm like, yo, I got like 30,000 or whatever. It was like, well, I don't know about that. Now, when they ask you that shit, they just trying to little bro you, trying to discourage you. Uh, but shout out to Brent. He sent me this and uh, shout out to chilling on the green box with 22 subscribers out here landing a fucking Austin St. John interview of all of all things. You know what I'm saying? All things. Now, uh, this is what you you have to be like. Well, how do we get an Austin St. John? I have no idea. Reach out to Chilling on the Green Box. See what he did. I didn't listen to all of this. Um, I did skim it, though, right? Jason David Frank came up once. <laughs> he came up once. And Austin St. John just pretty much ignored the question. You're like, Henry, you're a fucking liar. Whenever, you know, all these ASJ fans, when they come over to my channel, they'd be like, you're a liar. You're a liar. He, he would never do that. Look, guys, make no mistake. Even in, in passing, JDF still haunts him. Because when I play this clip and I tell you what the video said uh, of JDF saying they wanted a million per episode, I'm like, hmm, why would they put that in their video? Because they know there's a video out there with JDF saying, hey, y'all wanted to make a, a million per episode. Now, let's go to the Jason David line. Um, here we go. We'll go to the spot right here. 3515. Mark, are you like he was or how are you? So you said Jason earlier. Were you talking about Tommy? Well, first, Jason, Jason I was Frank? talking about, you know, Jason David Frank, you know, he being a okay. martial artist and helping the show. But sure. the second, Jason, is talking about your character. Um. Well, I've been in I've been in the martial arts since I was about, I mean, gosh, since I was a little, and mm. I've been around the arts a long time, and uh, I mean, I can remember teaching David Yost martial arts. I can remember working with Amy Joe. I can remember working with the original cast. Um, I can remember teaching all over the show um, to, okay. a, to to a lot of the crew, and I did that from day one. In fact, they put me in. They tested me in the fifth fifth audition. That fifth or sixth. All right, he 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 doesn't do anything right now. Let's 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 do the Tommy uh, part, okay? Uh, da, 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 da. 
Uh, it's the second one, sorry. Um, but, but, right here. I don't know what happened in the middle of the night. We got up for an emergency, put on the wrong suit. But, uh, you know, it, it was, I love that because for me, <laughs> I people can't talk all the time you. about, you know, Tommy Kimberly, Jason Kimberly, like there was competition and there was never competition. Jason didn't want anything to do with Kimberly ever. Hey, yo, what the fuck? That's Cap. Not the Cap. That's Cap. She, you, that was, that was his love interest until Tommy came to Power Rangers. Now, sure, you can say he didn't write it. Now he's about to throw a jab at Amy Jo Johnson he, or her character or her character. I think, he, I think he's talking about her character, but you know, oh, I, you know, you talk about the character, but it's really about the person and shit, but you use the character as the cover. Yeah, she's, she's an amazing character. I love the character, but Jason isn't about high maintenance. He's more about peace, <laughs> tranquility, and strength. And that's what Trini represents um in, in that character and so i think uh them finding that was she high maintenance oh no i mean you know you try to just slide that shit through the crack slide it through the crack like no nah, you know we wasn't about that we was about this like mm, i don't know that bond between jason and trini that's the direction <laughs> i would have took it myself and i can remember talking years ago with some of them like i love where you're going with that i think that's that's where you you're not a fucking writer you had no choice oh my goodness sorry guys sorry for the profanity sorry for the profanity uh but you know some people embellish you know how important they are and how you know what it is now amy joe johnson she did say something about austin st john john you know i literally have not seen that person or talked to that person uh oh we got a low volume issue because he left before i did uh, okay yeah, but he was an interesting cat. He was, uh, Hold on. <laughs> he was so? a very, very nice guy. But um, he was, uh, I remember he had some crazy stories. Like he used to tell some out there stories. That's sort of the thing I think I remember most about him. Like what kind of stories he would tell? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Now you know this type of stories he would tell. You know, she like, she tried to play a coy, like what, what kind of stories would he tell? I, like story i don't even know how to explain it he's just had these crazy stories about his life and i don't even know if half of them were true or not or whatever but i can't even remember i just remember being like oh my god this guy has had a crazy crazy life oh snap mm. you gotta find austin again <laughs> okay <laughs> now no pink spandex i don't think she's ever had an austin st john interview and that's a good question to ask her. Like, why you never get an Austin say you interview everybody else but him? What what's going on? Well, I can I probably know why. If you don't know, all uh no pink spandex, she is a black woman. And when you see who is uh Austin St. John's handler, you'd be like, okay, it makes perfect sense. Um, you're wondering, like, well, Henry, why are, why are you teasing us? Why are you teasing us? Okay, well, this is ASJ's manager, you know, they, they're saying she, you know, the racist and all this other stuff. And she was tweeting some stuff. Where, where is the tweet? Right here. Here's the tweet right here. Susan Matasi. You know, I wish a rag wearing bitch would attack me for having my country flag display. I beat that bitch uh, to an inch of her worthless life. God damn. God damn. God damn boy. Rag wearing. Look, man. Um, so when you factor that in, like if this is your manager at the time with these type of thoughts and you have a person who is uh, similar to her color and skin, you probably going to steer your client away from that. Right. You probably like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good fit for, you know, when people start saying, I don't know if that's a good fit. That's just code for uh, we not we not we not messing with that. Uh, but let's get back to the to what Amy Joe was saying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I remember, and then like, actually, the, I think the last thing I heard of it about him, that he something happened to him physically. Where and but his dog was with him, and his dog <laughs> kept him alive. Like Yo. his dog kept like. Not when y'all go to Comic Con, you gotta ask him about these stories. Y'all gotta start fact checking these celebrities on these outlandish stories that they be telling. Like, yo, is Amy Joe lying? Did a dog really save your life? Oh she. I my and spot. then now he's overseas, I guess. That he, something happened to him physically, where and but his dog was with him, and his dog kept him alive. Like his dog kept like gnawing on his hands, trying to keep him <laughs> keep him awake. 
Yeah, I heard that. Sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, and he's, you know, attend. I think he attended the first Power Morphicon. And so mm-hmm. you know, we oh, saw yeah. him recently. Yeah. And now he's currently. Um, oh, Cheyenne cooking. Oh, nice. So, uh, Did he, he live in California? Overseas. He, you know, he in Virginia. Oh, nice. And then now he's overseas, I guess, doing his EMT thing. So. Really? So when he comes back to the States, we can ask about the stories. Huh. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Next. Hold we- up. Hold up. Wait a minute. I see we got a legend in the building. I see we have none other than our famous uh, Mr. Monster. <laughs> Put some respect on his name nine months in the goddamn army salute to you uh shout out to mr monster he is our resident putty uh he may be making a special appearance uh later on today uh via a relative be well you know clear the air a twee for the- oh poor twee um yeah, that was just sort of devastating. I actually- All right, that that was it on Austin St. John. <clears throat> so now that we got the, the the intro out the way, you see where we're going with the show. You can see what we got. Uh, let's let's get into it. Like this show is all about the transfer of power, guys. All about the transfer of power, if you will. And we're going to be watching some copyrighted material. If the stream gets shut down, I am multi streaming on Twitch. Uh, and we can go on over there because YouTube be playing YouTube, but hit you with the uh, <laughs> and shut down the stream. So uh, this is a post by Team Johnny Young Bosch. And what does it say? The most drastic change during the second season involved three members of the cast. Mid season, Twee, Trang, Walter Jones, Zach and Austin St. John decided to leave the show over contractual Uh, disputes the cast change was hard to take because you know it was sad to see people leave says jason david frank we had started the show together with our fingers crossed we had gone from nothing to something huge writer jack uh marchow admits that this was challenging circumstance to deal with it was difficult shift it was pretty intense at the office as in Dallas, Karen Ashley, who had been a member of the girl group Crush, spied an ad in a local newspaper and decided to take a shot. What'd she say? I didn't know uh, the show. <laughs> I didn't know the show even was, but I went anyhow because it was a local open audition. She says when I got there, there was a line of people all the way around the building. Fortunately, there was a guy ahead of me who schooled me on who the Power Rangers were. Who do you think that guy was? And what they did, Ashley got a call back and was flown to L.A. to audition for the producer. Steve Cardenas had been heavily involved, um, something, something, something. Uh, but there is the original, you know, the replacements right there. You know what I'm saying? They're going to replacements. And, you know, uh, since we do got, you know, some people who are late to the show, uh, let's go right here, guys. A little intermission, real quick. You know, you know, this is what this is what when you when you dating someone who in the Power Rangers, and you think they cheating. This is what they do. Hold on. Let me let me reset it. You right now. Do you want to know why he's not texting you right now? All right, that's our own Patrick Sky guy. So we saw the we saw the revi- Now let's look at the transfers of power. Let's see how they got the fuck out of here. All right, now look, you did you know this is copyrighted shit. So uh, let me uh, let me uh, let me do let me do my thing. To try to beat the copyright uh, detector on our ass, you know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to run it like this. Thousands of entrants. Three names were announced today as the lucky students invited to attend the World Peace Summit in Switzerland. Oh, the World Peace Summit in Switzerland. Who do you think 
Uh, it was going to be. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what do you think was going on here, y'all? Like, well, who, who's going to get selected? Now, guys, at this point in time, remember how young we are. We have no idea what the fuck this means. We have no idea. We just watching this like, well, who's going? Let's go to the Peace Summit. Who is it? The three youths will meet and then travel with teens from all over the world to discuss global problems that affect all of us, young and old. All right, young and old, all right? Hunger, pollution, poverty, cultural barriers, and education are among the topics on a very busy agenda for these young people. Uh-oh, they going crazy up in this bitch. They like, who is it? <laughs> visited by scientists, politicians, <laughs> and academia. These two goofballs. <laughs> As they attempt to... Oh, look, look, sorry guys for the pausing, but you know, we, we, playing a, we playing a dirty game over here. We playing a dirty game, risky game. <laughs> ...understand these issues and offer their perspective on solutions for world peace. The three teams from Angel Grove are Jason. Uh oh, there we go. Our first contestant. Bad boys, bad boys. What's what you gonna do? What's he gonna do when they come for you? Jason Lee, Zach Taylor. Uh oh, Zach Taylor. Yeah, I don't, I don't even got a sound, a sound effect for him. <laughs> hey yo, what the fuck? How about that? And Trini Kwan. Oh man, <sighs> man, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do this for Trini. We got to. We got to may she rest in peace. But they had they had the bounce. They had the biggity biggity bounce. And then what happened? We look, guys, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. They had to go get the, I believe, like the sword of light or something. You know, uh, we not about to play the whole thing. They're like, what do we gotta do, Zordon? What do we got? Tell us what the tell us the way. Terror was a formidable challenge. It destroyed the whole deserted city. Zordon, we can't go to the peace conference. Wait, 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 what's this? Zordon, we can't go to the peace conference. This is because training was already done when they aired this episode. So they get this standing and they get fake, they get wish version training. And if you heard what she said, let, let, let's run it back. Just listen closely, listen closely. Serpent Terror was a formidable challenge. It destroyed the whole deserted city. Zordon, we can't go to the peace conference. Not now. There has to be another way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, wait, how'd the voice change? Wait, wait, how'd the voice change? Fake tree went from that to that. Like, wait, 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 wait here. I know, I know. Y'all like, Henry, you playing it just a little fast. Okay, let's, let's, let's risk the copyright real quick. You know, he got the sword. That is right good. There. We need to prepare. Zed is planning to invade the earth with Serpentera. Zordon. Not Timu tree. <laughs> oh my goodness. Serpentera was a formidable challenge. It destroyed the whole deserted city. Zordon, we can't go to the peace conference. Not now. Hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> I know you watching that as a kid. Like, you probably was scratching your head like, hmm, something ain't right. <laughs> something is not right. What's going on? Be another way. Greeny, Zach, and Jason, in your hearts, you will always carry the spirit of the Power Rangers. But your destinies lie elsewhere. Yeah, you off the show. You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. Give them ring the bell. You wanted new contracts? <laughs> no. You wanted more money? No. No, 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 no. You wanted... You wanted a union? You wanted to deepen down my pockets and take my money from me? Uh, no. Nope. Uh-oh, hold on. Daughter calling. Hey, baby. Hey. You in your fort? Yeah. You are. You have been chosen. To what you? What's going on? Give me one second, y'all. I'm gonna uh, be back. How do the people you want opportunities? What's going with on, love? See your value. Mm. You see how I'm sitting right here, and everybody you just named is sitting right here with me. Mm -hmm. My partners are sitting right here. Everywhere I go, my partners are with me. If I'm in Dubai, if I'm in Al Africa, if I'm in Morocco, if I'm in Ghana, you there with me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a rep this set. You got to show your partners how valuable you are. That's do you just do what's required or do you go above and beyond? Right. I want to go above and beyond. I, I never ran from anything because I never had nobody to go to. I've always had that where I'm going. Home to get me? Ain't nobody there. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, I've always been in a situation where I'm forced to deal with it myself. So let me tell you what comes on the road to success. If recently, at any point in the last 12 months, you've experienced doubt, if you have a lot of fear, 
or anxiety on the road you're on, or if you've experienced those emotions recently about what you're doing, you feeling like an imposter, like you have imposter syndrome, like nobody knows, I don't really know what I'm doing. You're on the road that I think you should be on, the right road, the road less traveled. Surround yourself with people that's just as hungry and eager to learn, eager to succeed as you are. And don't let nobody talk you out of your vision because they can't see it. I think that's the biggest mistake I ever made because, you know, we all have visions. Each and every last one of us, every human being on earth has a purpose and has a vision or something that they can contribute. It comes to us first by way of a vision, mm -hmm. something that you see in your mind, an idea that you have. Nobody else had it. It's yours. And the first thing we use. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was cooking. I was cooking. And my daughter hit me up, yeah, you know I'm saying so. I had to talk to her. I told her I'll see her tomorrow at ballet. I said I'll see you tomorrow at ballet. But let's get back to the transfer of power. I know they was asking for everything, and Saban was just like, "Shut up, bitch!" But in actuality, he didn't. He actually fucking heard them out, and they still walked. Ah, oh, when I listened to that damn fan work video, I was like, "You motherfuckers!" To help the world in a different way now. Retrieving the Sword of Light was your last quest. <laughs> Get that Sword of Light. <laughs> it was important that you be successful. And because you were, the Power Rangers will endure. Oh, the po look at these guys. He about to cry and shit. He about to cry because he's sad. You know, he's sad he's leaving. Uh, he made a mistake. He's down bad. City girls are down. City girls down. Wee woo. Down bad. You know, like... <laughs> The Sword of Light will allow your powers to be transferred to three new rangers. He like, three new rangers? Three new rangers? Get your money up, hey, right, yo, money what up. the fuck? But who? Behold, I present to you the new Power Rangers. Look at them. Look at them. Look at my man right there. He like, he, like, he, knew, what, he knew what the business was. He like, Oh shit, what the like shit, I didn't know that was gonna happen so fast. <laughs> was it happened so fast. Right he was now. like Alright! <laughs> he was like, alright, alright, guy! Alright. <laughs> he like, get your asses off the set ASAP. We got the replacements already. We we turned it black for black. You know what I'm saying? We got Asian for Asian, and we put a little uh a pep in the uh Rocky step. Isn't this incredible? <laughs> yeah. Hold, hold the sword of light high above your head. Hold it above. We will now start the ceremony. To All right, we got the ceremony coming up, y'all. <laughs> ceremony is coming up. Transfer power from Jason, Zach, and Trini to Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. Raise the sword. Excalibur, be my strength. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, new Rangers. New Rangers for the win. <laughs> oh, man. Departing Rangers. Fire Rangers. Get the fuck off set. <laughs> Get off set, and we'll see you crying in your video about how you regret leaving the show and missing out on the movie because you had your heads up your asses and people got in your ear. That's what we're going to be looking for, and they, and they delivered. They delivered. You have served with courage. I thank you. We thank you for your services. Salute. See you later. Arriva Darche. And what does my man say? What, what, is, what does he say? Uh... Austin crying saying, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy. <laughs> he was. Yes, I'm not happy. He was. They both were. Oh, when I saw the video, I was like, oh, I know Brent gave us the rundown, but you know, Brent, Brent was a little biased. You know, Brent was like, well, you JDF fans are not going to like it. And I'm like, all right, let me go watch it and let me poke all the hoes in that goddamn video that people are paying like 20 bucks to goddamn see, which is, uh, you know, like, how is fan work charging the same amount as fucking HBO is beyond me. I think they charge it more. Uh, don't quote me. Don't quote me. Don't. Hey, but you, hey, look, sometimes people be, they be. Can't you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke? I get it. Dead, flat, get stony, it. broke. 
We See? all broke. We all broke. I got three dollars and eighty-five cents in my purse. We get it. We get it. We get it. But we got more transference of power. You like? Well, who else got the power transfer? Y'all remember this episode? We was like, well, and then there were two. <laughs> you like? What the hell? What the hell? It was two people left. What the hell? You like, what the hell? I'll speak to you now. My thoughts and feelings are divided. <laughs> Zordon is the only one who like, I got job security. Ain't nobody placing me until David Cranston came in for the movie <laughs> and tombstone the <to> fight. <laughs> Look, we gonna give Cranston the money. We, we, we know you've been down, but you've been a little too close to ASJ. You, you asking for Cranston numbers. Why don't we just go get Cranston? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh, shit, bro. They was not. Saban was not playing. Kimberly, you have been a proud warrior and have defended our planet valiantly. Hello. Hello. Yeah, that brother's yes, starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> I know. I know y'all favorite questions on there. Yet the opportunity. And shout out to the actor. Oh, too. I see you in the chat. The that lies before you is much too difficult for you to ignore. So, Don, you don't have to worry. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> I'm not going to go to Florida. Kim, are you sure? <laughs> you sure? Like, what do you mean? You're not going to Florida? Like, yo, you supposed to be, yeah, I'm saying. I'm supposed to say, yeah, I'm saying. Hop out. Do you realize what you're giving up? I do. This has been a dream my whole entire <laughs> Oh, I see. I, yeah. Yeah, that brother's yes, starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> I know. I know. Look, see, coach gang up in the, coach gang in the building. I see you. I see you. <laughs> For life. But when I became a Power Ranger, I made some promises, and one of them was to stand by you guys. Now she left to pursue music, but then we got we got the lovely, the lo one of my favorites. They're like, well, who you gonna give your power to? He's like, well, Once again, you have demonstrated wisdom beyond your years. Thanks, Arden. Catherine, I agree with Kimberly. I'm brothers, brothers. We we have to decide, right? We have to decide. We have to make a decision. Now, I met Kat, and, you know, I mean her, no. She's married. She got kids, you know what I'm saying? But at this time, she was not married. And you were just a little boy. And you're like, well, shit, who am I going to choose? You got option A, and then you got option B. you like, mm, B is a little taller. But some people like them short. They're like, I like the short. You know what I'm saying? I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This happens. It happens. I'm saying what people was thinking. But hey, let's get to the power transfer. He like transfer that goddamn power. Power is all yours now. Okay. Look at look at look look at Brent's girlfriend right there. You know what I'm saying. Look at her. Look at her, man. Zordon, is Zed and Rita's spell over her really gone? Hey, 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 Johnny Young Boss, you ruined this shit, man. Who gave him speaking lines, mm. man? Who gave who gave him speaking lines? Hey, Dr. Umar. <laughs> I know you know these snow bunnies. You know how he'd be like, yeah, get with a snow bunny if you, you know. Uh, I, I can't get into all his, uh, his, his talking points uh, about the snow bunnies out here. The black man's kryptonite. We need to uplift our black queens. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Fucking Dr. Umar, uh, entertaining guy. Uh, but you know, I don't subscribe to that. You know, I'm an equal opportunist out here. Uh, we do not discriminate. Uh, when the lights go off, everything's the same color. But anyway, let, let, let's not get distracted out here by Mike Bradley, who was about to arrest my ass at Comic Con and shit. Like, hey, 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 I don't hear no shit out of you, boy. He was like, no shit. He, he dapped me up, pulled me close and shit. And I was like, all right, all right, sir. All right, sir. No, no shit. No shit. All right, all right. So we got the transfer of power, right? Whoa. Uh, so now we got Johnny Young Bosch. Here we go, Johnny Young Bosch. My martial arts school that I was at. Um, and my instructor as I was training. So the, like today, guys, is all about people joining. Okay, all about people joining and leaving Power Rangers. So now that we're getting into the clips. Now look, this clip is 17 years old. 17 years old, and we don't got to worry about copyright anymore. Uh, at this moment, this is a 17-year-old clip. Okay, so... I typically go for these old interviews. I was living in Texas. Because this is when these actors are giving it up. They're giving this shit up with no um no media training, no anything. They're like, oh, you got you got some shit to say? Alright, we're gonna let you run that shit. Texas. And um I was I was I'm a martial artist and I was training actually at, at my martial <laughs> arts school that I was at. 
Um, and my instructor, as I was training, he, he called me over and he said, hey, come over here. And he shows me this newspaper article and it's got these five Power Rangers, you know, standing in this thing. And he tells me, hey, they're looking for some people to be Power Rangers. Um, and I said, oh, that's cool. What, for like stunt guys or something like that? And he said, well, I don't know. He's like, why don't you uh, go give it a shot? And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> We're in like, if you hear this story, everyone pretty much was like, yo, they doing interviews. Go, go fucking see what that shit about. You know what I'm saying? Texas. What are you kidding me? Prior to that, I, I, was, I watched a couple episodes of Power Rangers before I even saw the newspaper article. And uh, I was watching them doing all this martial arts stuff, you know, and cheesy acting. And I was like, dude, I can <laughs> definitely do that. She was doing a little bit more than healing his heart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He let his heart, you know what I'm saying? But let's keep it going. And then there's like a thousand people lined up in like a cattle call. And um, I'm seeing guys doing these thousand kicks in the air. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm in for it, man. This isn't going to work. And so <clears throat> I go, they call us all in. They line us up like 10 of us or whatever at a time. And then they just say, okay, you, you, you can come back. The rest of you get out of here. And I was like, whoa, all right. And I made it. And my friend made it through the first one. And then the second time through, we had to show off what we can do. I showed off my martial arts and they said, okay, come back. I read a monologue and then um, <clears throat> they said, okay, we want you to come back in uh, about like an hour. And I said, all right. So I went home and I changed into my jeans and I'm like, okay, all I'm doing is gonna read this monologue. And I come back and then they're like, okay, we wanna see you do some of that martial arts stuff again. And and this was a time when tight. You know, it's like real stereotypical when you got the Asian guy doing martial arts and shit. You're like, yeah, yeah, you Asian, right? Yeah, do some of them, do some of them roundhouse kicks and shit like like Jackie Chan used to do. You know what I'm saying like Bruce Lee. <laughs> You'd be like, <laughs> "Hey yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> You'd be like, "What?" My jeans were cool, and so and and in Texas, you know. So I'm jumping around, and I swear my kicks were no higher than two feet off the ground. But I just kept thinking, man, look at the hot chick that's there, and just smile at her, and maybe she'll be like, "This guy's sweet," you know, or something, you know, which it worked. You know? <laughs> and uh, my brother calls me, and he says, "Hey, uh." They want you to go to California. And I was like, shut up. What are you the rest is history, right? Talking about. He's like, they want you to go to Cal California audition again. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to kill you if, if you're joking. And he's like, no, no. They want you to go out there. And I was like, okay, cool. So I flew out there, auditioned again, and then, uh, you know, auditioned with a few other people. And then we eventually, I eventually got the part. That's how I became a Power Ranger. And um, did that, was that the question, how I became a Power Ranger? <laughs> <laughs> I was living right. in Texas. So that was how he became a Power Ranger. And he's like, well, who's next? Who's next on your list? Well, we got Steve Cardenas, right? Uh, this is Rocky. Now, the problem with uh, Rocky is... Uh, snap, give me a second. Is these interviews are so old that there is no picture. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, Henry, what the hell? Like Henry, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's no picture. It's it's low key, no picture. So what I have to do is superimpose some stuff so everything looks uh, peachy for <laughs> peachy for stream. You like what the hell, man? What what type of system you running here? I'm like, well, you know, we got We got to do it on the fly. We got to do it on the fly. You know what I'm saying? All right. So this is an uh, interview with uh, Karen Ashley, right? And yeah, he was in the movie. He was in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Um, and we're not going to play all of this because we got a lot to get through. Because um, we got another. We got a, We got him talking about replacing ASJ. Can... I've been auditioning for. You know what I mean? So I get into wardrobe and I start fitting. And I'm like, okay, which one are going to be? The wardrobe people. I don't know. Which one are we going to be? <laughs> And none of us knew we had to go up to upstairs to the production office and they're like, oh yeah, Johnny's going to be the Black Ranger and Steve will be the Red. I'm like, yes, it's be the Red. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, but the thing is, they didn't even bother like making a suit for me. Well, that's they okay. just that's gave me a Boston St. John's old suit that and made like a muscle suit for me to wear everything because I was too skinny. <laughs> so, you know, they just made a muscle suit. So when you guys watch those old episodes yeah. when I first came on the show, that's me in a muscle suit. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a muscle suit. <laughs> All right, so that that's him in a muscle suit, but we want we really want his story. Okay, we want his story. Um, let's let's get into this a little bit. I had to be either a martial artist, a gym. I want everyone to get that off my chest for sure. 
get the get the shit off your chest tonight. <laughs> oh wait, what happened? What I missed? I was in the screening room. I'm gonna cry. I don't want to miss the good stuff. No, you didn't miss anything. I we were just talking about our week, and I'm so excited that Steve is an amazing martial artist. For a lot of the people who don't know, when we auditioned for the show, you had to be either a martial artist, a gymnast, or a dancer. So this is where uh, him and Jason really got along because, hey, martial art, real martial art, not that fucking ASJ martial art shit. And, you know, we did, there were amazing fights on the movie, amazing things, but he was actually a martial artist. Like, he actually knew how to do this stuff. Absolutely fabulous. He just opened up a new jujitsu and yoga studio, and I'm very proud of him. He is just an amazing person, not only as a Power Ranger, but also as a friend. He's a great friend of mine, so I'm very happy he's here. Wow, thanks, Aww. Karen, and the, uh, the check in the mail for <laughs> that one, too. <laughs> good job, baby, good job. I'm sure Walter and Nakia will call in soon, but we'll just get things going, right? Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah, Absolutely. let's do it. Absolutely. So it's kind of weird, Steve, because I'm never on this side. I'm usually on this side with you, like we're answering the questions together, right. so it's like, so great for me to, like, t- turn the tables. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Well, ask, ask me anything you want. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh <laughs> You know what? I want to start off, before we go any further, I want you to tell us about this new jiu-jitsu school and this new yoga studio, because this is your baby, and you've been working on this a long time. Yeah, we've been, we've been, we have one step, <laughs> yeah, we have one step in California, right by the Burbank Airport. This is a full facility. Beautiful. He's talking about his Thanks. stuff. Yeah, yeah, Karen, Karen's been by a couple times. <laughs> website for you um, yeah. I, actually if anybody ever wants to go to the website you go into these gyms and they stink like it's just a, it's just the greatest place and it has like the greatest energy and you'll get a Sorry, great workout and feel so good and they you know do classes for kids I can't even talk and adult classes so I mean it's a great family friendly kind of place so yeah that's, that's, that's the thing uh, we really want to stress too is that you know, All right, with, here we with, go. with our facility, you know, if you play martial arts running in the 90s, at the same time that I was doing the show, the studio was doing really well and taking off. You know, I was kind of faced with a little bit of a dilemma, you know. I, I, I... So he's about to talk about why he left the show. And their stories kind of are the same. And when you get to, when you get to Walters and ASJ, uh, why they left the show and why they stayed gone, very interesting. I just, I had some minor you know, minor disagreements with, with the uh, with producers of the show and stuff. Decided, you know what, I'm uh, taking this as far as I, I, I could, and I've got a studio that I'm running right now that's doing well, so it's kind of hard to serve two masters, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and walk. Um, but now in hindsight, you know, I, I probably should have stayed on for that last season because at, at the end of that season they were going to get rid of everyone anyway and, and, and recast the whole, uh, the whole group. So... If you notice one thing when all these former Power Rangers talk and they talk about making the choice to leave, it's always I should have stayed. It's always regret. It's not like, oh, I made the right decision. I stood on business. No, no, no. They're like, ah, even even Austin St. John and Walter till this day wish they would have done the movie. They wish they would have done it because they didn't have the long sight vision to see it. Even though they slipped up in their interview and they said some shit. I'm like, well, if you saw this, why the fuck you ain't stay? Oh, uh, well, you know, I thought they would come back and, you know, uh, uh, Saban just gave you the fucking uh, bail. Well, you know, I should have just stuck on for one more, you know, for one more year. But, you know, whatever. When you're 22 years old, you don't think everything all the way through. <laughs> right? So, yeah. But it's cool, though. I mean, I, I had a great time. You know, I, I had a blast with, when, I, when I was there. And, um, you know, it was something that you know, experience that no one will ever be able to take away from me. You know, I, I got to touch a lot of people's lives, and, you know, this has afforded me the afforded me the opportunity in the venue to kind of reach out to people now and, 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 and touch their lives in another way by, by teaching them now. So, well, I mean, you know, it had to be amazing for you running the gym. You know, you could, it's great PR for you, right? Like, that had to help. Like, hey, come. There's no better PR than being in a movie. Don't let anyone tell you different. No, it's just good PR. You don't run the gym. Like, no, 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 no. Being in a movie is the best PR. Check out the yeah. Ranger at the, the gym. Well, yeah. The, the thing is, though, that one of the one of the um, one of the stipulations uh, that uh, f- yeah. they had at that time, because they were so protective of their image and whatnot, yeah. with the Power Rangers, was that we were not allowed to like promote in any way. We were not allowed to do personal appearances. 
We were not allowed to, like, advertise anything. So I really couldn't, um, you know, advertise. I could only advertise it once people got in. You know, now it's different. You know, now I can advertise it, and I do I do use it a little bit, especially when, I, when I'm reaching out to, like, the kids, you know, the kids to, to bring them in for the kids program. You know, I definitely have, like, flyers that say, you know, come learn jujitsu from the Red Rangers, things like that. But back then I wasn't allowed to do it. So I, I was I'm all for a cheap plug. I would be wearing the costume on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's Steve Cardenas talking about, you know, why he left. Now let's get to Karen Ashley. You know, this is Brent's this is Brent baby out here. Where's your baby up to, Brent? Where, where's she up to? Where's she at? You know what I'm saying? What's she what's she doing, Brent? What's she doing? So her story, fire. Her story, because she is the most outspoken. Power Ranger till this day. I mean, because maybe she got nothing to lose, or maybe it's just in her character. She's just like, <clears throat> she's just gonna give it up. And back in the day, she was giving it up because Saban pissed her off. I'm talking majorly pissed her off. You like Henry? What the? What she do now? Look, when we do her yellow stream, you gonna we gonna get all into it. But today we just gonna we just go we just gonna give you a little taste. I'm gonna give you a little teaser. You like Henry? A teaser? I'm gonna give you a little teaser. Just a little teaser, Karen Ashley, how funky she was keeping it on a national fucking show. Was this on a show? Let's let's hear her out. Now this this is I think eleven years old. And I'm so happy that you guys are going to get this moment, but it's just not something that was anything. I felt disrespected by the whole situation. So for me, I don't want to be in that place. I've never been in that place. I've never wanted to be in a place where I don't feel the work that I do or the things that I bring are not appreciated. I'm telling you, man, people be wanting to feel appreciated at work. It's like people's kryptonite. Hey, I go to work. I do my job. I get my check. I leave. I don't need to feel appreciated. I don't need that. Hey, my check clear. Check clear. Cool, cool, cool. I'm out. Peace. See you. See you, see you tomorrow. But some people, they need that pat on the back. They need that Good job, girl. They need that acknowledgement, okay? Sometimes people get entitled. They're like, well, why are you? I'm in your movie. You paying me. Why don't you acknowledge me? He like, shut up, bitch. Just get back to work. Why you, you on the clock right now? You talking to me. I got shit to do. You hold me up. You know, like. If, if you're not in a situation where you feel appreciated, then you need to go to another situation. <sighs> That's why I originally left the show. When I went to the premiere of my the movie, and it was my first movie, and it was this one the, one of the biggest moments in my life. Like if you can ever hold on, let me turn this up for y'all. Let me turn it up. Give me one second so y'all can properly hear her complain about not being appreciated. All right, let's go back. Probably right here. For me, I don't want to be in that place. I've never been in that place. I've never wanted to be in a place where I don't feel the work that I do or the things that I bring are not appreciated. If, if you're not in a situation where you feel appreciated, then you need to go to another situation. That's why I originally left the show. When I went to the premiere of my, the movie, and it was my first movie, and it was this one, the, one of the biggest moments in my life. Like, if you can ever, I don't, I don't know if you'll ever get this moment, but if you could ever imagine walking out of a limo, there's a red carpet, and it's all for you in the movie that you're in. And you're there with your castmates, and you just spent six months in Australia dying, wanting to finish, and it seemed like it was never going to end. And you spent all these hours, and you were so like, oh, my God, oh, my gosh. It's so hard to make a movie. So to finally show up and the movie is done and it's finished and you're just like, wow, this is the best moment ever. And you step out of your limo and you see, guess who you see? You see Han Saban. Oh, my God. Han Saban, the man who hired you, the guy who brought this whole thing to life. And you go, hi, hi, how are you? And he has that blank <laughs> stare on his face and he has no idea who you are. He like new phone. Who this? Who, who you? Who you? Who you? Who are you? And meanwhile, she over here on some Roman Reigns shit, talking about acknowledge me and shit. Oh my good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh no. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can find the proper the proper Igno I hear it go right here. Here's the clip. Right acknowledge here. me. Acknowledge <laughs> me. You're gonna acknowledge me. This what this the type of shit she was on. She's like, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. He like, nope. You there, sitting at home. Acknowledge me. The whole world will acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. I know we roughly gonna get a copyright, but she is on some. Acknowledge me. <laughs> like he like. <laughs> Oh, go acknowledge yourself. Get the fuck out my face. I'm trying to get to the goddamn premiere. She like, but I'm in the premiere. He like. Shut up, bitch. I want you guys to think of that moment. <laughs> How would you feel? Because that happened to me. Oh, man. And I was like. Not a, not a dry eye in the house. We are, we are crying for you, girl. We are so sad that he didn't put some respect on your name when he didn't know who you was, even though you was filming in this movie. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity. I don't feel the work that I do or the things that I bring are not appreciated. If, if you're not in a situation where you feel appreciated, then you need to go to another situation. That's why I originally left the show. When I went to the premiere of my the movie, and it was my first movie, and it was this one the, one of the biggest moments in my life. Like if you can ever, I don't I don't know if you'll ever get this moment, but if you could ever imagine walking out of a limo, there's a red carpet, and it's all for you in the movie that you're in, and you're there with your castmates, and you just spent six months in Australia, dying, wanting to finish, and it seemed like it was never going to end, and you spent all these hours, and you were so like, oh my god, oh my gosh. It's so hard to make a movie. So to finally show up and the movie is done and it's finished and you're just like, wow, this is the best moment ever. And you step out of your limo and you see, guess who you see? You see Han Saban. Oh, my God. Han Saban, the man who hired you, the guy who brought this whole thing to life. And you go, hi, hi, how are you? And he has that blank stare on his face, and he has no idea who you are. Oh, man. I want you guys to think of that moment. How would you feel? Because that happened to me. And I was like, you know me, Karen. Karen. No, 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 no. We don't know you. We don't know Karen. Uh, it was, it was. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> he was stunned. She stunned locked them on the way out. They got damn much McCall it. But, you know, uh, she was giving it up, guys. She was not happy that he didn't acknowledge her. And next thing you know, um, she was like, they sent their ass back to Africa. It's like, oh, you disgruntled? All right. We're going to put you on the next thing smoking. She's like, yeah, where are we going? You're going back to Africa. <laughs> We're going back to Africa. Now, look, she has not gotten over that back to Africa shit. And maybe I don't blame her. Now, this interview is nine years old, right? Now, look, these interviews, guys, uh, these are gold. Gold. This is Power Ranger gold. You're watching something that probably most of you probably haven't seen. Let me see. Let me see if I see Brent in the comment section. You know how Brent be down here. He, you, you, you be on my channel writing shit. Brent gonna hit you up. He gonna be like, hey, 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 hey fuck JDF. Hey, 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 hey. Henry's bias. You know all that good shit. All that good shit. Uh, but he not in the comment section. So even Brent ain't even seen this shit. So I imagine if Brent ain't seen it, y'all ain't seen it. Now we could play twenty minutes of this because they be cooking. They are cooking. They're coming out hot. You know why? Cause guess what? All of them are off the show at this point. <laughs> he didn't tour. He didn't tombstone all of them. He was like, "Oh, um, see you, uh, Karen Ashley, peace, Nakia, peace, um, Cat, it's been real, peace, um, Steve Cardenas, you you been quit, peace." So he tombstone all of them. So imagine them. Put yourself in the mindset of everybody. Uh, <laughs> and this is exactly what he said. <laughs> this is exactly what he said. What up, helmet head? <laughs> he like acknowledge me. He like, hey, I, I only see put the put the helmet on, and then I recognize who you are and shit. You know what I'm saying faces. He, he faces don't look too good. And shout out to my man Chanzo up in the chat. You know what I'm saying 
Chanza, where are you at? Now, look, guys. I do, before we get to this, I do have Chanzo. We do got, we do got something for Chanzo, right? Uh, he, he has a girlfriend that he, you know, he got the, the love of his life. Love of my life. And here is what she talking about right here. You know what I'm saying? She was questioning one day. To this day! To this day! To this day! Now, I can't confirm this is Shanzo's room, but it looks pretty accurate. To this day! To this day! To this day! <laughs> um, hey, Chanzo, is this your room? Just type yes or no in the chat. <laughs> Just type yes or no in the chat. Is that, is, that, is that your room? But anyway, let's get back to them cooking. Look, they're going to cook. And then after this, it's, it's nothing but fire. When I say fire, remember how... The, he said he left because of her over the insults. Well, someone said that's Cap. Someone said that's Cap. They, they calling his ass out. They like, nah, nah, nah. We ain't doing that revisionist history shit. That's Cap. So anyway, let's get back to uh, the interview, if you will, with everybody just giving it up. Giving it up. All right, let's go. Wow. Like like you were Latino. Uh, yeah, I was a Latino. <laughs> Hold on, let me uh, let me turn this stuff down. Sorry, uh, certain sound, certain um, these old videos, the sound don't be the, the be the crispiest, so I have to um, electronically increase it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I am. But you're African American. Come on. I said, was you African American? <laughs> Just a good half. All right, we're not going. We're not going to do this in chipmunk mode. We're going to do this in normal. Sorry, I listen to it in chipmunk mode. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's me. I was the Red Ranger, and I was also the Blue Zeo Ranger, too. All right, Yay. we know that. We know and all that. Make also, trying to get here, couldn't make it. But we're really the only um, six that replaced people. Like, we didn't, you know, we didn't come into an all-new cast, and let's start this adventure together and have that moment of being on set for the first time with everyone. We kind of came on Brent, to that's an the, existing cast. Yeah. That's the love of your life right there. And shout out to God is Diva. For God is diff. God is diff. Okay, because I'll be saying diva. She was like, um, put some respect on my name. She said, put some respect on my name. All right, name. shout out to God is diff. Um, seven months in the goddamn army. Salute to you. Yeah, you know I'm saying. <laughs> and yes, I am digging, guys. You like Henry? Where you find this shit? Dig, bro. You like to dig. I was digging up in the trenches for my day ones for the people who be putting on for me. I got to put on for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, Henry, you ain't did a day one stream in a while. I was like, I know. I know. I've been slacking. I've been, life has been life in me. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Let me do this. Brent, I mean, actually, Dust was like, you need a day one stream. I was like, yeah, you're right, man. You're right. You're right. I look back and it's been like two months. I was like, what the fuck? I said monthly. It was, it was, it was a, 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 I set you up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you came on all by yourself. Yeah. Um, so how did that feel? How was your first day? Because I know, luckily for me, you, and Johnny. Now they got their feet out and shit. Like, I, hey, feet, the, the feet guys is out here and shit. You know what I'm saying? We got to be together. So yeah, at least we, we, had we had the support other. of each other, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your first day like? What do you remember that first day we walked on set? It was on Castaic Lake that we went. We're at the park. We're yeah, well, that, well, was that the first day, or did was we do it? the? Did we do something on set first with all the wardrobe stuff, or was it the first? Oh, our first day was in, out in the. Out. Why y'all got jokes, Patrick? You got jokes. <laughs> you got jokes. People got jokes, man. <laughs> People got jokes. I swear, man. Oh, yeah, out, the, out, out of the, the park. park. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I was nervous, definitely, because, you know, I was nervous to meet the people I had been watching on the show, because yeah. David Yost was going to be there, and Jason Frank, and, and Amy Jo, so I was definitely nervous to meet them. Look at that cast, look at them, fair use, fair use. Uh, look how young everyone looked. These are your movie stars, guys, for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. This is the, this is really the all-star cast. Um... Sure, the OGs are the most memorable, but this is the cast that like solidified themselves. And uh, I was just hoping that I was going to be able to, you know, to live up to some big shoes to fill with Austin's character being. Gone. You see them feet? <laughs> I know the feet gods is like whoa, 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 feet. Now so somebody probably gonna snipe a picture of this shit, put this shit on Feet Finder or something like the the feet site or whatever. But uh, yeah, they got their feet out. They got their toes out. What the hell? Um, 
I know. That was a very daunting because, I mean, we when we came on, it was like Austin, Walter, Austin who played um, Jason, Walter who played Zach, and Twee who played Trini, they were very popular characters. Like, no question. <laughs> hey, watch this. Watch this, yo. Watch this. <laughs> so, me too. I was freaking out. I was like, okay, don't forget your lines. Don't forget your lines. And look, but like I said, we were lucky because we had someone. You two came on. and I mean, you were coming on and we've been together. We were all friends right. at that point. Yeah. How was it for you? Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't know the situation on how you left or anything. Right. I had never met you. And I really didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know what happened. Yeah. So, in all honesty. I they sent your ass back to Africa. You start complaining about money. I was like, oh, here we go again and shit. Let's, let's get her back to Africa, guys. Write that shit in the script. I was very excited to be. I was very excited to be on the set. Yeah. Um, she was very, very nice. My screen test was with Kat. So I got a chance nice. to meet her. I hadn't met any of the other cast, but I got a chance to meet her. And I was like, wow, she's really cool. <laughs> um, but I remember being on the set and we were doing, um, the Alien Rangers were filming at the same time. And I saw you for the first time. And I don't think I ever told you that. You had finished one of your scenes and you were walking, um, across the parking lot, I think, to your car, and you were, you were done. Why y'all going in on cat feet, yo? <laughs> she is a taller lady, so taller ladies tend to have uh, <laughs> bigger feet, you know what I'm saying? But I know Patty will put her mouth all up on them joints, so I don't know why she laughing. You were done with the show. It was the last day. And I just remember looking, I was like, because I, I was like, Boy, who's Karen? I didn't get a chance. And I remember, and from your facial expression, it was just like, um, you know, that's a wrap, I'm done, da da da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no telling um, what was going on right, at that point. Right. right. And so there were just a lot of things that were being said on how. Um, Which were all untrue, probably. Yeah, how you, how you left the show yeah. and how, you know. But it was, it, none, of, none of it was really negative about you. Like, um, like it wasn't, you weren't written out the way that you were supposed to be written out. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, th there, there goes the entitlement, right? So you've been working on this show for so long. And what typically happens, you're like, well, put some respect on me. Give me, let me go out the way I want to. And they just looking at you like, when you start cutting the checks, then, then we'll make you go out the way you want to. You causing us headache. You asking for more money. You a pain in our ass. We just bought to send your ass to Africa. We just bought to send you to Africa. They gonna be like, what happened? Oh, we sent her. To, she went to Africa to do the Peace Corps Part Two. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we on that shit. But uh, uh, definitely what my man Dominic said. Eight months in the game. Salute. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the members up in this bitch. Let's keep going. And so the way that it was handled, I was just like, wow, that's that's really not cool. So welcome to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> shocker but I didn't and wasn't surprised because the way like you're right they had originally um promised me 20 or 10 episodes to ease the character out and I was like great it'll be great I'll get to hang with my friends and then literally the next time I was on set that was the last day like literally like it they put her in these streets in the street they was like uh you gotta go get that shit on your own girl she's like where am I gonna get this was like in these streets gotta go take the streets girl we we we, we done business is concluded it was the weirdest thing and I didn't even get to say bye to everyone no. I didn't get I didn't see anyone anymore and then I kind of felt weird about going up to the set because I wanted to but I didn't want to make you feel uncom uncomfortable hey if she, if her ass would have if her ass would have went on the set they would have been like bad boys bad boys they would have called the law on her ass and security. She would have went out in handcuffs for that. trespassing. I feel uncomfortable. So I never went <laughs> back up there. And eventually we all got in touch again and we all never see each other. But yeah, it was really, really weird. But I wasn't surprised because of the way the people we replaced. One day they were there. Next one day they weren't. Right. Like it was that quick. How was yeah, but what she's not saying is like, wasn't Austin St. John and them just walking off set and shit, putting up a stink, you know, uh, because people got in their ear. If you watch the video, you know.
Now he came up to her. You know what he was on. You know what type of time he was on back, and he, it's rumored. You know, I can't say this allegedly, but you know, you you women out there, you have a great shot at getting your cheeks clapped by uh, Steve Cardenas if uh, you know you catch him at the right time. But guys, they start cooking for ten more minutes. Now, I didn't plan on showing you them cook. But are you interested in watching 10 more minutes of this or do you want to get to the Blue Ranger story? You know, this is where, you know, I'm trying to speed to the finish line right here because I know y'all got it's, it's the weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's the weekend. It's the weekend. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? What y'all doing on the weekend? Do y'all want to see them cook for 10 minutes? Just put yes or no. Y or N in the chat if you want to see them cook for 10 minutes. Because remember, guys, they're off the show. And at this point, there is no sign of coming back. So they were kind of like letting it, they was letting that shit loose. Okay. <laughs> it was letting it loose. Like Petty, he'll even chop you down. Um, you give, you look at him the right way. He's going to be like, Hey Petty, I could fix you. <laughs> he's like, I could fix you. <laughs> oh, do y'all want to see him cook? I see cash guy say, yeah, 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 yeah. Let them cook. Are we here tonight? We slow stroking. Look, we don't got to slow stroke it, but if y'all want to hear him cook, we can hear them cook. I see one no. I see mostly up. Uh, the sponsor said yes. You know, when you just sponsor the show, <laughs> when you dust, I'm like, hey, with dust said yeah. Um, so his, his, his vote counts twice. Okay, y'all said let him cook. Okay, so in my notes, we have to stop at the 20 minute mark. All right. But remember, they off the show. They're all off the show. I'll let it rock. I'll let it rock for a decent amount. I won't even pause it that much. And he was so sweet. He could tell I was so nervous. Probably. I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you were like, hey, what's up? What's up? Oh, you <laughs> little cousin. I did that to all the girls. No, no. That was, he that was, did that, was that, that to me probably. Me. Ah, you see, you see how it works? He, it's a numbers game to him. It's a numbers game. Hey, let me go at Karen. Okay, she said no. Let me go at Kat. All right, let, let me go at Cat. Cat you know, I'm going to go at Cat a little harder. He was like, what's up? Welcome to Pop. Let me show you around. Look, I did this shit. Come on, man. We, we man, we know what we do. I have to cut you no, off. He, was, he was very kind. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. He introduced me to everybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was very, I remember the same thing, being very nervous. And I remember in my contract that they had said it was a three-month trial. So I knew if I didn't pull it off that I could be going home. What the kind of pressure? That's pressure. pressure. Like, no. trial? Trial. <laughs> trial. I didn't know that. Scary. I that either. Yeah, it's a lot of, lot of responsibility. Wow. Um, so I guess I was lucky. I yo, did wait, 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 wait. Hey, yo, what the fuck? We got a married woman in the chat saying, can we get the D report? Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> Where your husband at, girl? Where your, where your husband? And you stepped in the huge shoes. Yes, I mean, I Pink did. Ranger was like, oh, like, yeah. I mean, it was, you yeah, know, she was so was popular. Probably, it was probably a blessing that I didn't know the show. Um, Absolutely. I only watched one episode, so I knew who everybody was. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I didn't know the popularity of the show. It wasn't until we went to the movie premiere that I was like, oh, geez, this is bigger than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, Amy, Amy and I didn't do a lot of work together when we were when we were doing it. I didn't work with her that much because you were the, I was the cat, so yeah. you guys were with the cat more than me. Yeah. Um, I think I maybe did like three or four scenes with her, um, but it, it was a little awkward. Like How is the volume on y'all? And I think it might be low. I think it might be low. And shout out to my man Chanzo up in his bit. Look, he said I got money. They didn't give Aisha a country in Africa. They didn't say you're going to Kenya, Senegal, or Nigeria. They said, take your black ass back to Africa. Tame Mufasa since Aisha worked in the veterinary office. God damn. God damn. The chance will just come in and cook her? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hey, yo, what the fuck? He cooking. He said, it's the weekend. Wait, what we doing? What we doing? God damn, Chenzo. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they sent their ass to Africa. And then back in the day, uh, saying telling a black person to go back to Africa was considered racist. 
You know what I'm saying? They like, hey, you racist. You said go back to Africa. Hey, Chanzo, no. Chanzo, no. And my brother from another mama. Shout out to uh, Mama Chanzo, too. You know, she's, it's her, it was her turf, and I was trying to be respectful of that. And um, and she was open, and she was very nice to me and everything. But it was yeah. just, I, I'm, I'm sure it was weird for her because she wanted to leave, but it was her family. Yeah. And she's developed that character. Like yeah. That's very awkward for her. No, totally, totally. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing that, the reason I, I wanted to do this show, because I was, you know how, Facebook, Instagram, they have all these groups and all this stuff. And I sometimes go in there and chat and like, you know, get to know people, but I also go in there reading stuff that they put. And I always feel like social media is like our best. <laughs> Look, social media cook they asses. They about to get they're about to cook themselves. Right? Because now we can tell people, oh, we're at this convention, we're at this yeah. show, we're here, right. come see me. But we also get the the backlash. I will never forget this. And it actually like threw me for a loop, but it said it was a picture of me, it was like our cast picture, I think a movie picture. And it said something like, or it may have been a recent picture, I don't know, but it was a picture of a cast, like it was all of us. And it said, the only reason Aisha was popular is because Tree, t- t- because Twee, you know, isn't around and she passed away. Oh, but if she- <laughs> God, dude, look, look, you do not supposed to read these comments on the goddamn internet. Like if you, accru- I read them all, I read them all. I, I like to see what people say. Uh, but she got cooked by some random person, probably on fucking Facebook saying, uh, you only hear because Twee is gone. Like, no one cares about, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They wouldn't care about you if she was still alive. And I think there's some truth to that. Flash. I will never forget this. And it actually, like, threw me for a loop. But it said, it was a picture of me. It was like our cast picture, I think a movie picture. And it said something like, or it may have been a recent picture, I don't know. But it was a picture of a cast, like it was all of us. And it said, the only reason Aisha was popular is because Twee, t- t- because Twee you know, isn't around and she passed away. Oh, that's but if she were here, she wouldn't be popular. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> like, I was just blown hey, yo, away. Like, I thought that was the most <laughs> horrible thing to say. And I, you know me, like, I, I can't, I'm not one to, like, shut up. I, didn't, I just was like, young man, what's your name? And I, I don't know what I said, but I instantly, like, reprimanded man, him. But I wasn't doing it to, like, win praise or... Hold on, hold on. I am sorry. We have a new sponsor. <laughs> Get your money up, not your funny up. <laughs> Shout out to my man. The answer is he's still here, brother. Speak up. Let yourself be known in the chat. The answer, where are you at? He dropped a bag. I got money. Get your money up, not your funny up. Henry, thank you so much. Thank you. The answer, 06, if you are here. Acknowledge yourself because I want to acknowledge you, my brother. I appreciate the donations. All the donations do go to the uh, <laughs> the the divorce recovery fund at this point. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Or with anything from them, but I told him I just kind of explained it. I said, you know, you guys have to always remember we were actors. We wanted a big break, and if there was a Power Ranger audition right now, you guys would line up and audition too. And you, if they would have told you you're going to be on Power Rangers, and guess what? You're going to replace Rocky, Cat, Makia. Karen, you're gonna replace us, Steve. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't even know where that came from. But I would have. You would do it. You would do it. And that wasn't what we were thinking. We were like, I want to be on a TV show. Exactly. I wanted. This is my big break. And we were so happy to be there. And I felt like we all did it differently. Mm-hmm. I don't think we had anything like there was no comparison. No. You know? Do you feel like there was any other than the color? Was there any way to compare us? I think they make the color. <laughs> You see, you see, they start, they started talking about, hey, they were, they replaced black with black and shit. They won't say this shit now. They'd be like, well, we got to skirt around that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they made Amy and uh, uh, Kimberly and Kat's character, other than the, the K sound, uh-huh. um, but very complete opposites. Like, um, she was very kind of valley girl and, um, and my character, she was much more serene. Yeah. Um, and just a, a totally different energy. I think. Yeah. I, I still, I stand by this. I really think it was a mistake for them to try and put Kat and Tommy together. Because that was Kimberly and Tommy. That was right. Me. And I feel like that created a lot of distension towards my character. Right. Yeah, Cheyenne ain't buying this cannon for shit. She like, nah, 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 fuck this. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Because they did that. Um, they should have just left it. I mean, she didn't need to be Tommy's right. girlfriend. <laughs> right. Do you, do you ever feel like just doing your own thing and being your own version of that character, that you are compared to people and, you know, now, or do you feel like they kind of try to pit us against each other? Yes, they do. Oh, totally. absolutely. Like, Drama wins. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, it's just, yes, yes, I was just told about, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, other drama, <laughs> uh, with Rangers, and, and you know, it, it's like... You're talking about fans, you mean? They try to put us, to get, put us together? I think fans, but I think even just the show sure. itself, I think there were certain things. Of course, of course they were trying to put you to, their need to dream, uh, drum up controversy, controversy sales, Red Ranger versus Green Ranger, that shit's still been going on, it's still going on to this day, and the damn Green Ranger, he gone, it's still going on. You know, I don't know. I, I, but don't you feel like 
any any time someone's replacing in any show, I think that there's always like Ashton Kutcher and Charlie Sheen. Absolutely, it's always going to be like that. I think the original person that, that evolved that that color, that character, whatever it is, yeah. um, they, they the people love that person. It's yeah. always hard to come in and replace. And they feel like they have to love. choose when they don't really. They don't. No, yeah, you know, they don't have love to. For everybody. Now we pick a side on this channel. We always choose. Okay, I want everyone to pick a side. If you want to stay in the middle, go play in traffic. Go walk down the middle of the highway. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> much but you grew on me that's what i, I did that too. hey and that's facts though that's facts i can see people not liking cat but you know uh she she can grow on you man she got that that charm that that southern australian charm you just be like oh man she cool as fuck i get that too you were my 11th favorite <laughs> you were my second crush yeah. i know why are you telling me this <laughs> they, get, they do that they say you're my second third fifth i'm like <laughs> Where they rank for you guys? Where, where does Rocky rank amongst the Red Rangers? How about Cat? I know a lot of people don't like Cat, but she's my favorite Pink Ranger. Uh, Nakia, I mean, you know, uh, I'll tweet my favorite Yellow Ranger. I'm sorry. I mean, it, it just is what it is. I mean, I don't want to. And people are like, but you black. And I'm like, I know, but I, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, where Dr. Umar at? <laughs> I, I loved you, but I loved Aisha better. Yes. I love her too. I so. know. I know. I get the opposite. They go, I love you, but I love Trini better. And I'm like, I loved her too. I absolutely, and you know, it was like, I absolutely, I felt everyone did their job and did it well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you and you and, uh, and Tweet can be more different. The totally. characters were totally different. Right. She was very like zen and, and nice. She was all bubbly and bouncy. And they yeah. really, I mean, made you very different. So, yeah. I mean, I, it, it doesn't make sense to even compare. Right. You know? Right, right. So, this is my thing. I know at this point, we've all met. <laughs> I keep looking at you, you're so funny, I'm so glad we sat next to each other. We've all met, but the first time we met, I don't I don't remember specifically the first time we met, because I feel like I've known you my whole life. Oh. It was so weird because I, I would see you all the time at auditions and different things. I think that's where we, I think we might have met at an audition. And, but I, and the weird thing was it was never awkward. So Hey, that's their camera, man. I mean, they doing a lot of moving. This is, this is, remember guys, this is old footage. So they're reliving what happened, and they're not knowing that they're going to be back on Power Rangers, you know, 10 years from now. They ask me that. They go, when you guys finally met, was it weird? Right. And I was like, no. 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 It was not, I think we were like, hi. Like, yeah. it was just like, I don't know. When you finally met, you're the person you replaced. Was it ever weird? To, well, I, I met Well, you met Amy on set. Yeah. Um, when she came back, she came back to do the movie. That was a little weird. Mmm. Um, when people say it was a little weird, you like... Amy Cho, she's never been on, <laughs> what's their chat, Power Rangers playback, she's never been on, po why do you think that is, why do you think that is, because they know, maybe, Amy Jo knows, that's a bag, that's a big bag, a how many Amy Jo uh, interviews are out there outside of her doing a panel, where she probably has some guarantee, and we're going to talk about guarantees when we get to Austin St. John's uh, manager and shout out to my man Dante Carroll. Praise God up in his bitch. You know what I'm saying? What do you say? Uh, the episode was the day Brent became bitter. <laughs> this the episode Brent became bitter. Uh, where is Brent? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> where he at? <laughs> um, and um, and then I saw her. I hadn't seen her again until Lexington, and right. she was very sweet and warm and yeah. yeah. Um, Why do you feel the, the meeting just so that you could explain so that people don't take it another step further? I know. You know, no, they, here. They we'll will. All Why do you say that it's weird um, when you guys met during the, the, the movie? movie? Yeah. Well, because I'd already now. I've Look at her. She's get, she's bailing her out. This is this is how you bail out a friend. You said, "Oh shit, she was weird." Uh, you can't say that. You that, like the two most popular rangers, pink, green, and I want to say black. I mean, at, at the the Comic Con stop places, you probably. I mean, the Red Ranger is always going to be the Red Ranger, but you're going to have a better experience meeting Walter. Just saying. I was the Pink Ranger. I was established as the Pink Ranger. Right. And she was coming on um, into my turf now. So it just that I was very aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Amy, Amy may not have been that cared less. But for me, I was very aware of, of being like. Wait, wait, um, wait. Look how Steve looking at her, though. Is he, is, he, is he sizing her up and shit? Someone just pointed out, like, why is he looking at her? Is he just paying attention? He's just being attentive. Like I've stepped. I was stepping on her toes. I didn't want right. her to feel like uncomfortable. You're so sweet that 
way, though. She, the only thing about Kat, if you've never gotten to know her, she's always aware of how everyone feels. And, like, I'm always I'm like, it's not that I don't care how people feel, but I'm always like, girl, you got to do you. <laughs> I'm always like, girlfriend, like, don't you worry about that. That's fine. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's not to not be aware of other people, but it's more like just, you know, but you're sweet to, to even think that way. Yeah. I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable. Um, Aww. But, you know, we, we, again, we didn't have a lot of scenes together. And then when I saw her in Lexington, you know, I, we probably have more in common now than we ever did back then. We both got children, and um, we were talking about our children. And yeah. um, it was a brief, but she was very pleasant, and, and yeah. it, was, it is what it is. Yeah. Know? How about you, Steve? Um, well, the first time I ever actually met Austin, because, you know, we never we did any scenes together. Now, here we go. Here we go. Austin St. John story. Was uh, at a party at his, him and Walter's house. Woo! Now look, she like I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if it's part of her. She be she be hitting on like pretty much every guy. At at some point, I was like, oh, you hitting on him? You hitting on him? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know, Karen. Let me know. <laughs> and it was right before the movie came out, you know. So uh, and Austin, he was really he was really gracious. Actually, he was really cool to me. He never, you know, there was no animosity ever. Well, he you know? worked with us on Turbo too. Well, no, no, I know. And and actually, on Zio. yeah, he worked with us on Zio and, and, and he did the Turbo. Yeah, but um. Yeah, so that was cool, and then they actually kind of touched on that in the in the Zio scenes. Where like, oh, hey, you bubble skull, like, hey, hey look, look, Jason's back. He's like, like ah! he kicked out of the group and all this stuff. Like, that. So, like made my character nervous, you know. Ah! It, you know, but they had to, you know, assure me that that was not going to happen. But you know, it's kind of yeah. funny that they touched on that. Yeah. Because yeah. I was feeling left out, you know, my character was yes, like, right, right. right. Well, you were, brother. You didn't become the go Ranger. You know what I'm saying? It was like, eh, let's bring, let's bring Austin back. Yeah, you know, I remember that or that, that episode. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So if there was ever like, a project that where we could, like we, we all talk about it all the time, and, and luckily on these maybe uncensored talk, we all kind of get together, but if there was ever a project that presented itself to where um, we could all be together on one screen, reboot, um, <laughs> would you guys do something like that? Absolutely. Now, what she's talking about is rumored to be a scam. It's a movie called The Order, where she collected like $150,000 and never put out the movie. Now we're going to save that for her episode. Yeah. Would you yes. be down for something? I would love, I would love it. Like I would absolutely love. I don't know about the spandex part. She can pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> the spandex. No, he I can don't. pull that off. They, by the way, yeah, can, they pull it off. Go to, go to any convention. These two will. Hey, okay. I'll see you. Actually, dare to put on the suits and they look fabulous. Okay. Yes. And they take pictures. <laughs> in the suit. I think yeah. be a mentor to the young Pink Ranger. I think that would be fun. Like, yeah. All right. That that's pretty much it, guys. That that is them cooking. Uh, the later part of the interview, they start talking about like what they were are working on and shit they plan on doing. Nothing of uh, voiceover work for another toy from the town. Yeah. Just you know, just plug what you're doing. Now let's get to Billy. All right. It was just pretend. Nobody really gets hurt. We're about to talk about Billy, and you gotta you gotta talk about this with kind of like kid gloves because you know he made a statement, and then someone said, "Nah, he lying. He lying." Sometimes in the real world, real things happen that frighten us, and we should talk about them. So join me and the other Power Rangers for the special talking it out right after an all-new X-Men tomorrow morning on Fox Kids. All right, after Billy, we cooking. We're we getting into all the other good stuff. Um, so, you know, here it was like, yo, I quit over the insults and he was called the F word. He did an interview where he talk about it right here. It's low as shit because hmm, it's a good it's a good question. It's actually a really serious question for me. Why did he leave? So if I cry, apolo I apologize in advance. So, um, yeah, you know, I. Uh, all that me getting old and going off to some foreign... <laughs> Yo, they just write everyone off like, oh, they taking a trip, they ain't coming back. Planet or something. I don't know. I wasn't there for any of that. I don't know anything about it. I've never watched the episodes. But um, I, I walked <laughs> off set one day uh, during the middle of lunch. Is that during halfway through the day. Uh, I just had made a decision. I'd been thinking about it for a good week. Um, and the reason that I walked off is because I was called faggot once oh, many times. Oh, man. I, I tried to get past it, but he got through. So um, I had just heard that uh, several times uh, while working on the show um, from creators, producers, writers, directors. It's not that people can't talk about me and have their opinion about me, but continuing to work in a, an environment like that uh, is really difficult. You were 
Wonder. I'm, you have you're never not, been a victim okay. here. Okay, so he got some pushback, and it was from the a producer. He just said, "Hey, producers were calling me the f word." Our producer was like, uh, "That's cat." Uh, Morphin Power Ranger, Morphin producer, Blue Ranger was a pain in the ass. He was a pain, and that's the guy right there, a guy who co-produced 450 episodes of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Claim he's positive that the Blue Ranger didn't leave the show over uh, homophobia on the set, insisting the departure was all about money, all about money. But the thing he remembers the most was he was a pain in the arse. Now he goes on to explain, as we previous reporter, you know, that he left because of the gay stuff. He was called F Bird Bomb by staffers. But producer Scott Page Pactar explains David and two of the other actors were all getting a bonus on top of their salary. So uh, that would be your Jason David Frank and Amy Jo Johnson. Uh, when the other two left the show, pr- production wanted to stop giving him the bonus. And that's ultimately what led to his departure from the show. I mean, he probably wasn't the biggest draw at the time. And, you know, the rat- ratings don't lie. As for the allegations of uh, uh, homophobia, he said, I don't know why he's saying this, but he was the only one no one got along with. He was a pain in the ass. Now, here's the thing, man. A lot of people in the industry, um, when it comes to, you know, stories like this, they are very reluctant to come forward. And the reason being is they still want to work in the industry. And but this producer is is not one of those people. I mean, he he does see motors like, look, man, I, I'm going out with a bang. I'm going to just tell it like it is. And sometimes when you play the victim, you do get sympathy. People will sympathize with you like, oh, my God, they called you the F word. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm just saying maybe he embellished. May, maybe it's not the whole truth. Maybe he's not um, telling the whole truth all the time. Tell the whole truth all the time. Maybe he's not doing that because, hey, saying I left over homophobia sounds a lot better than me leaving over money, you know. Um, but he did go on to become a successful producer um, and he got he got money. He don't need this shit like everybody else. Everybody else need money. He like I got money. He got money. He out here, but shout out to my man Chanza who also got money. What is he saying? Never forget, there's a moment in the Turbo movie where Amy Joe kicks Cat and says Pink is out. I think they wrote that in because there was tension. Facts. Facts. Of course. You know they have to create the controversy. They are aware of the fandom. They know like, oh, well, people are putting these Rangers together. Well, let's have them fight. <laughs> let's have the OG win. She come back evil and kick them out because at the end of the day, every ranger saw the success of Jason and they wanted a evil arc. They wanted to play the villain. They wanted to get that out there. Even even uh, ASJ like, yeah, man, I just want to play a villain because that they saw the success of Jason. They wanted to duplicate, if not exceed it. However, none of them ever did. Even when ASJ came back evil in the movie, did the cameo and shit. And I was like, mm, all right, thank you for coming out. But what do you guys think of this story right here? Do you think you believe it? Do you not believe it? Is it cap? Is it good? Uh, what what what's your what's your take on it? How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? All right. Now, let's get into some good stuff. Right, I'm saying let's 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 pump it up. Rangers, pump y'all up pump y'all up a little bit okay now we about to now we're about to get into it uh this is stuff i presume that no one has ever seen um this is austin st john's manager you like no it's not this is now look at the name susan matisi 
Susan Matisse, you know, this is back door, you know, the political climate where everybody was speaking their mind. Oh, let me move this. Sorry, guys. I can move chat now, now that we're not watching copyrighted stuff and shit. Yeah, you know I'm saying you're like, hey, 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 hey. How about uh, how about you get that chat out the goddamn way? <laughs> Look, when we watching copyrighted stuff, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. I gotta do what I gotta do. Uh, so you know, hey, I wonder if gorillas in other zoos have started setting stuff on fire and looting in the gift shop. So basically, she's calling black people gorillas. Uh, this man had been there. I'll listen to him over keyboard warrior anytime. War as hell, Ben Shapiro. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how I, I don't look, guys. I really don't delve into politics too much. I'm not telling you who to vote for. Vote with your wallet, not with your heart. Um, you know, I wish this rag wearing bitch would attack me for having my country's flag displayed. I'll beat that horn with every inch of her life. You like, God damn. God damn, you know, the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressional White Caucus, Congressional Asian, Congressional Latina. Oh, I see. But everyone else is racist. Oh, OK. All right. So you kind of see where she's standing at. But Francis was calling her out. Francis was like, no, no, no. We stand on business over here. We stand on business. Some other Ranger admins um, have said JDF dot dot dot. I believe all the BS, BS you hear online. Uh, Austin St. John's publicist Susan Matisse blocks people from following ASJ on Twitter and does some other stuff. What do you think about what um, Susan Matisse said about JDF? And would you believe that she used to be JDF's uh, a manager? These are some some heavy things. Now, let's get to the interview that I'm sure you guys have never seen. OK, you like Henry Ward. What is this shit? How do you be finding it? Like, look, man, I dig, you dig bro. You like to dig. But other people dig for me. And when they bring me a credible source, I run that shit. So she's doing an interview. Um, this is from May 3rd, 2014. And she's about to give it up. Now, what you're about to hear, she's about to talk about a multitude of things. Now, let me get my notes because I got notes on her, y'all. I got notes. All right. So according to my notes, because I've already listened to it. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? All right, we're going to start the video at around the two. Is it the 220 mark? The 220 mark where she gets introduced. And she's going to talk about some things and she's going she gonna to confirm some things. Yes. Ryan, you got to go to the virtual world. Today on the Power Hour, Episode 9, Ranger Nation interview, Susan Matisse behind the convention table, recorded on April 28th, 2014. Welcome to the Ranger Command Power Hour on the Four Eyed Radio Network. It's time to Ranger up with your hosts. I'm Eric, also known as Trucky B47. I'm Zach, also known as the Cinema Slob. And I'm Chris, also known as Kickback. This episode is brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Hello, Ranger Nation. Today we have a special interview. Today we are interviewing Susan Matisse, public relations for Power Ranger actors such as Austin St. John, Daniel Southworth, and Jason Font. She has also helped out at numerous conventions with other Ranger actors, including Aaron Cahill, Johnny Young Bosch, Jason David Frank, and more. Currently, she is working closely with Austin St. John for his upcoming convention appearances. All right, so she was working with him when he came back off the boat. When he came back over, uh, this was her cash cow. Uh, he was, she was, he was making money for her. She was making money for him. The mute, the relationship is business. Business. They standing on business over there, boy. Business. Get, get your money up. Stand on this business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's keep going. Let me see where we get. All right. Welcome to the Ranger Command Power Hour, Susan. Hello. How are you? Good. Thanks. Thank Good. you for joining us. Yeah, no problem. All right. So that's the lady who made the tweets. Uh, let's go to her. Oh, man, I, uh, it's it's a great moment in here that I don't want. I'm going to have to skip because we, we're a little bit behind on time. Uh, here we go. Come on. Don't fail me now. Don't fail me. We got to skip around a little bit. Please. I tested this all day today because I was like, all right, we're going to hear here, 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 here. And come on. Like, I can't download it. So. And it's old. Oh, my 
goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, this is what we're going to do. Let me try something. Is it crashing the page? Okay, there we go. To that, she's okay. ex Navy and security guard and all this kind of stuff. So she, when she barks, people listen. She can control a two or three hundred person line by herself. I saw her. She talking about a line Nazi, if you know what I'm saying. Her at like she describes one of the people working for ASJ as a line Nazi. Lexcon last year, I saw both of you yeah. at Lexcon last year, uh -huh. and she knows how to work a line. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yes. you listen to her. Exactly. Yeah, when she speaks, people listen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So she's she's extremely handy to have around. <laughs> um, you're basically just making sure that they are where they're supposed to be at the con. Now with Austin, like I said, this is different mm -hmm. because we're we're starting from scratch in getting him ready for these first few con appearances. Like I said, we're designing and ordering merchandise and deciding how much of each item to bring with us and getting eight by tens printed, getting a banner printed, you know, all this other kind of thing. His he has a great booking agent named Zach McGinnis who is doing all of that. He's handling that part. Okay. So that name sound familiar? Zach McGinnis, booking agent? That's good. He's getting him into a lot of cons. So we've only had been able to announce five so far, but there's a lot more coming. That's fantastic. And I know a lot of people are really excited to see him, all of us included. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, he's excited to see everyone else, too. It's been a long time. Now, the All right. Now, now we got that. Now, let's hear it talk about JDF. You like she talk about JDF? Absolutely fucking lutely. It's stories to tell. He's he's a good guy. He's he's very honest, down to earth, easy to talk to. So I think anybody that gets an opportunity to meet him at a convention is really going to enjoy it. Well, we definitely look forward to it. We also appreciate your efforts working with all the different actors. Well, I'm glad to do it. I enjoy doing it. There are a lot of great guys. All the ones that I've worked for are good people. They really are. I know there's been a lot of stuff being said lately about JDF, but I'll tell you this from my perspective. A lot of stuff being said about JDF. Jason is a good guy. He is. He, I consider him sort of like a brother. He's a good man, and he's got a good heart. Some people question how he goes about doing things sometimes, and I don't claim to always understand why he does things the way he does sometimes, but it's just like it with anybody else, with any other friend. You know, you're know, you not always going to agree with them, and you're not always going to understand them, but they're still your friends. Right. So that's pretty much the way it is with Jason. He, he is a good guy, and he does love his fans. He really does. And Dan is a good guy. He's not as out in the fandom as some of the other guys, he's always working. He's probably the hardest, besides Johnny Young Bosch, he's probably the hardest working guy as far as like, you know, different roles and different jobs and, and all this kind of stuff. It's amazing. Why she compare him to Johnny Young Bosch? Because <laughs> they both Asian, I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, but this is Daniel Southworth. And just to see him pop up in random episode, like I saw him last year in Revolution. Yeah. He was playing a thug, and I was like, "Wait, that's Dan Southworth. Like, what's <laughs> he just shows oh, yeah. up in the in the movie?" Now she's about to go into the business end, guys. This is the, this is how Comic Con works. I know people like Comic Con, Comic Con. We we don't know how it works. She's about to talk about the guarantees, and the guarantees are going to play a pivotal role in Austin St. John and Walter Jones's decision to leave the show. Most yeah. unexpected places. Oh, he's he's random thug number three in a lot of stuff. You know, <laughs> he really is. And he's been in I don't know how many episodes of Disney's Kicking It, the show. Oh, yeah. that, you know, I mean, and he's always, he, as far as I know, the, the ones I've seen, he has not had a speaking part yet. But he's always just a different random thug, and he's always fighting the kid on there who re really is a martial artist. I forget <laughs> his name, lady. but I guess they get a better show that way. But yeah, he's always popping up here and there and everywhere. So he doesn't do as many conventions because he's always working. Mm -hmm. And the, conven the convention scene, a lot of people, let me throw this in about Here's the thing with conventions, guys. Ultimately, what you're going to find out is Austin St. John and Walter, they were getting paid more for appearances than for working on the show. And that was a factor in their fucking decision to leave the show. About conventions. A lot of people sure. don't, know, don't know this. It used to be that conventions would pay an appearance fee and transportation, hotel, per diem, all this, right? And that was great. You know, a lot of people did cons that way. And then they've kind of gone to this sort of guarantee thing where because so many people sell autographs, sell merchandise, do all this sort of thing that the cons are like, OK, well, we will guarantee 
that you'll make this much money this weekend. And if you don't, we make up the difference. And then some of them are just like, we'll get you here and we'll put you up in a hotel room and we'll give you some per diem and, and you know, there's a green room. You can eat there and stuff like that. But what you sell is what you get. Mm -hmm. So for people who don't sell a lot of stuff or like Dan who won't sell anything, it's difficult for them because they're not making any money for the weekend. And as much as us fans would like to be like, oh, yeah, you know, just come on out for the weekend. We'll hang out. We'll party. Yada, yada. You know, it's a business. Right. And... Now, back when when Austin St. John started proving himself, he was getting thirty to forty thousand a weekend, guaranteed. He was like, he got money. I got money. He had money to burn. Eventually, that money would run out, and he would do the PPP stuff. Particularly for somebody like Dan, who works all the time. If he's at a con for the weekend, he's turned down work to be there, so he's not getting paid what he would be paid for whatever job he turned down to be at this con. And if the con's not paying him anything to be there and he won't sell anything, then he's not getting any money for the weekend. I can kind of see, you know, how fans are like, well, you know, just come out and do it for the fan. I hear that all the time. Do it for yeah. the fans. Go back for the 20 year anniversary thing. Guys, when I tell you the 20 year anniversary drama, I could do a whole stream on all the drama surrounding the 20th anniversary. For the fans. I hear that all the time. And I understand that, but at the same time, these guys have families. They have right. obligations, and they can't just take a lot of weekends off, or in the case of New Zealand, a week or two off, and not getting anything for it. That's like you taking off work unpaid and just going and hanging out with somebody. Just now she's being misleading, right? Because what was happening was for the 20th, they wanted people to come back. But... At this point, people are doing Comic Cons and they're making thousands of dollars on the weekend. So let's just say pure math. Let's just say you're Austin St. John and they say, hey, we need you to fly out to New Zealand for two weeks to do this 20th anniversary. And he's like, well, shit, in two weeks, I'll make $60,000. And they're like, yeah, we're going to pay you $20,000 for two weeks of work. He like, uh, no, I can't do that. Whereas your boy Jason David Frank was like, OK, I'll do it. I'll, I'll take two weeks off of Comic Cons. I'll read. I'll get some new content. I'll get some new pictures. I'll have new merch to sell at, at my Comic Con stops. I'll be there for the 20th where other people were looking at the short term picture of it all. Like, well, I'm going to take a pay cut if I go out to New Zealand for two weeks because that's two weekends of shows that I'm going to miss. So with that being in mind, I am not doing the 20th. Fuck you, Power Rangers. And they like, OK, all right, cool. Have good luck. Same thing. They're just like you. Yeah. Going back to Dan, you said that he doesn't sell anything. Now, right. why is that? Is that a personal choice on it, his end? or? Yeah, he has agreed to sell 8x10s, autographed 8x10s on his fan page for people that can't get out to see him or whatever. Mm -hmm. But as far as... Oh. All right. Now we're about to get into the ASJ versus JDF stuff. And then we do the movie and then you'll hear the... The JDF interview where you talk about a million dollars per episode. Oh, wow, how about that? Yeah. I see all the time, especially lately. People are like, oh, Austin and JDF need to make up and they need to be <laughs> friends again and they need to, do, you know, all this kind of stuff. So here's my question Do you think that people are really wanting JDF and Austin? To make up, or do they want to see Tommy and Jason make up? Because they're not the same people. People, uh, yeah. you know, people think they're <laughs> they're projecting the characters onto the onto these real life men who are not those people. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Whew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. That's that really is, deep. Yeah, that's, that, that is deep. That's what do you guys think? Did people want to see them make up, or did they just want to see the characters or the people in real life? Because here's the thing. As a character, Tommy was always more popular, and that's just the way it was. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, okay? And shout out to the Answer 06, the sponsor of the show, who says, ASJ came back from where? Kuwait or Iraq? Uh, it was uh, Kuwait. He never seen Iraq, and I think you know that. And I, I know what you're trying to do. I know, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. Uh, because the answer 06 um, looked up some military stuff <laughs> for him. And I appreciate this being your 10th super on the live stream. 
Uh, YouTube is tracking everybody's donations now. Salute to you, Answer06, and thank you for sponsoring tonight's show. Um, but did y'all want to see them get back together? Or did y'all want to see them fight? Dust is like, nah, I want to see them fight. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I want to see them fight blow for blow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's keep it going. It's like a Power Rangers philosophical question. I think a lot of it might be stemming from just stories that have been told, at least on one side of it. And it could be that they're also projecting the characters on, because in the show, the characters themselves had kind of a rivalry going. Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess people don't know how much of that is the actors doing that or how much of that is the characters. It was... Yeah, it was a little bit of both. And, and Dust is right. I didn't want to see them make up. I wanted to see them fight. Them having that that ongoing beef contributed to the show. You're like, well, shit, what's going to happen? When when the Red versus Green Ranger happened every episode, even when, you know, um, there was a later episode where Tommy went back evil. And he, he was, uh, it was, I want to say in Power Ranger Zeo. Don't quote me. I know my purist out there. When he went back evil and was giving everyone the beat, <laughs> uh, no one could stop him. Not even the Go Ranger, I believe. But um, yeah, everyone wanted to see the controversy. And if you're going to email me, Shaw, do it now. So without knowing the full picture, I guess fans are just filling in the blanks. I would even I, take it one step further than that, Eric. Yeah. I would say, going on with what you said, it has been kind of a one-sided narrative as to what rivalry there is between Austin and Jason David Frank. And what happens is a lot of that is told or was told in intimate settings, panels that people don't go to or haven't been to, and it gets passed on. You know, kind like of like a game, game of telephone. telephone. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of people who really have no idea if there really is a rivalry or if there is what it's about. Then they just want to see something make up, whether it's between Tommy and Jason or Austin and Jason. I, I just don't think a lot of people really even know what's going on, to be completely <laughs> honest with you. But yeah, I, I would. I don't know. That's. I think the more intimate fans, the ones that are a lot more involved, a lot more, you know, the ones that pay attention to things or research things, like I would say me, Eric, and Zach on, on the show here, I think we're all, mm -hmm. like, private investigators. <laughs> Everyone's an investigator. I know Brent being argumentative in the chat. Guys, don't respond. Don't fall for his traps. Just spam the emote. There's more or less. <laughs> what a lot of different things. So, you know, we've researched this stuff just because we're bored one night. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of people do, and it's just all hearsay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got to agree. I mean, I, I think that it's just one of those things Things that's going to kind of live on in the fandom for a while and whether or not we see a resolution i think it's still going to be talked about for quite some time to come mm -hmm. who would think a decade later we still talking about it now if the two if austin st john and jason david frank ever did do a team up at a convention where both of them showed up they're at like a double table or something I think that would be the largest gathering of Ranger fans oh, just absolutely. because of it's the both of them together. I think that would be an amazing experience. So, but I don't know what's going on personally behind the scenes with them, whether or not something like that will ever manifest. But I think for the fans, it would be really good if they showed up at a convention together. Right. Well, there's no reason in the world why they can't do a convention together. Let me just say that. Right. As Austin yeah. has said, they have no professional problems between them. He did say that on the on the fan page. And I know what you mean about every there have the narrative being one sided. You know, because really, Jason's the only one that said anything. Yeah. You know, for the last. <laughs> I'm not sure if this was when uh, Austin St. John was ducking uh, JDF. And there was a Comic-Con where uh, JDF announced that he was going to be there. And Austin St. John said he was going to be there, announced later. And then next thing you know, uh, JDF said he, he was not going to be there. He was taking his daughter somewhere. Now, people called out uh, JDF for saying that was bullshit. They was like, no, no, no. You were supposed to give us that. And for whatever reason, he just didn't. You can say he was lying or he forgot about the trip or maybe he just didn't want to be around ASJ. And mm, here's the thing, right? If you are a huge draw, you are a huge draw. Every, everywhere you go, you're going to bring a shit ton of people. And you, the Green Ranger, you're the king of Comic-Con. And someone maybe want to poach on your audience. You're like, eh. 
you pull out because you're like, nah, 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 I'm not going to allow you access to my audience. You think about that. You think about Amy Jo Johnson. She, have you ever seen her at the same Comic-Con as any other Power Ranger outside of uh, David Yost and uh, Jason David Frank, who got her into doing cons because she was anti-con for a while? Uh, no, you haven't. Have you ever seen her on a con with Walter and uh, Austin St. John? No. And you likely never will until, you know, the, the popularity dies down. And at some point they got to team up. But if uh, Austin St. John get convicted, I don't know how that's going to impact him and people want to work with him. Several years. Austin really hasn't offered a rebuttal. And a lot of people, unfortunately, have gathered or they just figure that because he hasn't said anything, that somehow he goes along with what's been said. And he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He absolutely doesn't. But it's just one of those, it's just like, is it really worth getting into? Right. You know, is, yeah. it, is it really worth, I mean, why? Why get into an argument about stuff? There's just no reason for it. He wouldn't mind, I don't think, doing a con with Jason. Let me say JDF. There's too many Jasons in the, in the Ranger <laughs> fandom. Okay. There's, J with me, it's JDF. Font and Narvi, okay? <laughs> because no, nobody gets called Jason. I'm sorry. Um, no, there's no reason why they couldn't do one together. It's just a matter of it working out. There's some cons that Austin just can't get into mm -hmm. for whatever reason. There are lots of them, like some of the some of the bigger cons, that they're not real ranger heavy, and they just don't understand how big a draw he'll be. That's the thing with cons. You, I mean, a lot of people don't understand that they're in one fandom like the Ranger fandom, and they don't understand why a big con like New York City Comic Con or something like that wouldn't want somebody like this. But the con doesn't know. At right at the moment, Austin is an unknown entity as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know how big he's going to draw. They don't know. We know. We know it's going to be crazy, <laughs> right? Or right. We, know, we know this, okay? And well, it was crazy back in the day. Now it's not so crazy. Now, not too much. And that's what I've been trying to tell Austin. He's like, yeah, well, I don't know. And I, I'm like, Austin, <laughs> listen to me, bro. <laughs> it's going to be huge. <laughs> it's going to be huge. It's, the lines are going to be insane. We're going to need the line Nazi, okay? It's going to be <laughs> insane. You know, the con doesn't know that. So in order to have a table for him or to pay for him to go or anything like that, they're a little reticent about that kind of thing, as they would be with anybody Right. that they don't know how it's going to go. Some cons are willing to be like, oh, yeah, sure, right, you know, absolutely. Well, they don't want to hit him with a 30000 guarantee and he only do like $10,000 in, in revenue because then they like, shit, we owe him $20,000. The goal is to give him the guarantee to get him at the con and then he makes the money and you don't pay him back out of your pocket. And maybe the people there, they get some concessions, they go see other people. Uh, the more people there, the more money that's going to be spent. So it's better for the con. You know, we want you there. Rhode Island was announced. And Rhode Island has always, as far as I know, had, at least in the last several years, had a lot of Rangers. Zach McGinnis, he represents Austin and Walter Jones and David Yost and Karen Ashley. He has a lot of the originals or close to the originals. Love you, Karen. <laughs> so he brings a lot of them to the same con mm -hmm. as he does with some of the Star Trek and Star Wars folks that he represents as well. So there's no reason why they couldn't do a con together. It's just a matter of it just working out. Now, here's the thing, right? As you see, everyone was represented by Zach McGinnis. Uh, we, I've showed you Zach Taylor McGinnis' profile, and we saw um, everyone there. Uh, Zach Taylor McGinnis. Uh, we saw him. And we saw all the people he represented. Uh, give me a second. We, we can pull it all. We can pull it all up right here. Go to the photos. Let's go to the left. Let's keep going. Keep going. Uh oh, hold on. Hold on. Where are we at? Where, where is it? Where, there we go. There, there is his cast right here. So now what happened? <laughs> this guy. Uh, shook JDF down for like $1,500 at a Comic-Con um, on the tape that Francis has not released. I heard it. I heard JDF count off the money. And now we're, we're, we're at that main event. So what did you think of her uh, basically giving you the lowdown of how it went back in the day for Austin St. John, who came back fresh off the boat, linked up with Zach Taylor McGinnis, who was happy JDF uh, tombstoned himself and Eventually, all these people fell off one by one. The only person I believe is still with them 
He is Austin St. John. He ain't letting them go. Maybe he know where the body's buried or where the PPP money is. Uh, who knows? So they they cut him loose, but he did not. He did not. He stuck with him. Uh, where is he at? Where is he at? Where, where are they at? Right, there they go. There they go right there. Cool, 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 cool. Now, let's move on to me watching the goddamn video. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is the video at? Right here. So I watched this video and Brent, Brent did an okay job of explaining some things, but I have some notes. You like, <laughs> Henry, wait, 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 what, what do you mean you got some notes? I got some goddamn notes. Okay. I watched it. I watched it. And there's some things we got to, we got to touch on. We got to talk about. All right. What was said in this uh, this thing, right? So the first thing I got, it, they it, they talked about the whoa 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 edit. Um, how do I make this bigger? Pause. <laughs> oh Jesus, Jesus! I haven't used this notepad in so long. Uh, maybe if I zoom. I don't I don't want to zoom like that. Font size, font. You know what? I'm tripping. I'm tripping. We don't even got to do that. All right, so here we go. I have my notes up, right? I got my notes. So first thing they talk about was a $40 million, $40 million non-union film. All right? This is me summarizing the video. So you, if you don't want to uh, go see it, trust me, I don't need to lie or anything like that. Uh, shout out to the person who provided me access to fan work. I'm not going to shout you out. Uh, but they talked about first $40 million non-union film. So they thought that because it was $40 million, they would get more money. Nope. No. Uh, Walter, then they go backwards. Uh, Walter couldn't make any changes to his contract. And why would he? Like, he's not a fucking star. He's not established talent um, at this point. So... That that's that's what it is. Now, ASJ signed his contract one week before turning eight. One he post dated it one week after turning 18, after his 18th birthday. But he did drop out of high school, so he's a high school dropout. Um, that kind of explains a little bit. Uh, the original contract was for 40 episodes, non union benefits was the experience. They said, Oh, we're just gonna do it because of the experience, we're gonna get. 40 units, 40 uh, episodes under our barrel. It's going to be great, you know, and it's cool being a superhero it, who, who, you know, it is. Uh, the show became number one in the world. Now, second season, this where shit start getting murky. Their faces were everywhere. They were on the TV guide. It was pot. They were popular, but not wealthy. OK, so they like they YouTube. They're 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 movie famous. But they still driving around their beater cars and they're upset because they see Saban. He like, he made a billion dollars and we didn't get any money. OK, so second season contract for uh, they, now he he is very misleading right here. He talks about the second season contract for a commercial. OK, and the, he said the commercial contract was anywhere between 30 K and 45 K. And I'm like, in the 90s. Mm. I don't think they were paying you 30K for a commercial in the 90s. Uh, that's more than Seinfeld was making per episode uh, in, in, Seinfeld, in Seinfeld. That's more than Jerry Seinfeld was making per episode. So I got to call a cap on that. Stop the cap. Uh, what else? They got free Suzuki's, but them shits got recalled. Second season, they, lo they noticed a lower budget. The lower budget was only noticed, guys. You're going to get a kick out of this. It was lower. They noticed it was lower because of the food. They like we getting less food. They're, they're less food. Shut up, bitch. You're getting paid all this money and you're complaining about food. Now, granted, they like, well, 600 a week ain't, ain't, ain't much. OK, so they complained about the food. They lamented on the billion dollar profit. They like, well, he made a billion dollars. They're counting Saban's pocket. OK, um, and what happened? People start getting in Austin St. John's ear, because he's young, dumb, and full of whatever, uh, and they start getting into his ear, talking shit like you should be getting more. You get you you getting cheated. You getting cheated. 
You, it's unfair. All right. All right. They're getting into his ear because he's young. He don't know no better. He don't know. He don't know what he doesn't know. And that happens. You're like, well, shit, man. What, what was he supposed to do? He didn't know. So they're getting into his ear. It seems noble, you know. Uh, people got into his ear trying to, trying to, oh, no, 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 no. He wants to make the show union. He's like, I want to make it union for everybody. You like everybody. Yeah, everybody. Now, the, it's a little pushback, right? Now, you got to think about this. Let's put yourself in Haim Saban's footstep. His, his, um, put yourself in his mindset. You just made a billion dollars, okay? Or the show did. Uh, it generated a billion what are you thinking? He's thinking long term. These guys are thinking short term and it's, it still shows today. No, I'm not making the show union if I'm Haim Saban, because guess what? That not, I have a 10 year plan. You have a one year plan. My 10 year plan does not include me making the show union. And then now I have to report to SAG and I got to worry about you snitching on me to SAG because you had to work a little overtime. You either do the show or go the fuck home. And that, that's just what it is. Now, they said this was not fair. they like, this is not fair. And the only reason it's not fair is because he's reaping all the financial benefits in their eyes, in their short-term vision. All right? Life is not fair, guys. You get what you negotiate. Rule number one of business. You get what you negotiate. The reason other people can renegotiate contracts because they have performance incentives in their contracts because they are proven talent. You being proven talent on a uh, Power Rangers show where you mostly read lines and uh, doing a little bit of acting and no growth whatsoever, um, you didn't have too much leverage. Saban had all the leverage. Now, what else happened, right? Um, they complained about the lack of toys and free merch. I'm like, this petty as shit. Y'all complain that y'all didn't get free toys that they're selling. You complain that you had to pay for your jacket. I'm like, bro, what, what are what are we really, really talking about? If you're complaining about this frivolous shit um, now, they finally get into the film in Australia. Right now, they said it was three movies. David Yost, there's rumored that he tweeted out the contract was for two movies. So they're saying three rumor that Yost said two. Now, typically. Contracts typically have no renegotiation unless you put that in the contract. They said in the in the video, they were offered a little less than 20K per week part part for the video, for the movie, for the first movie. And they go on to say, well, this is for months of work or whatever. They never specify how many days of shoot. Normally they say, hey, we don't need you to shoot for 90 days, 20,000, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. And 6K more per movie. That was the incentive. 6K more per movie, less than 20,000. So let's just say the first one is at 19. The second one is at 25. The third one's at 31,000. Three movies. Um, they got main character syndrome. Okay. They were jaded by the fans. At this point, they were going to shows and doing things. And like, well, we got this show and all the fans appreciate us. Same thing that happened with Karen Ashley. The fans appreciate us and you treating us like shit. And Saban is like, Wait, I'm treating you normal. I'm not treating you like shit. This is the same contract that all you, all, you, all you people have. What do you mean I'm treating you like shit? Well, you making millions and I'm making pennies. Well, I mean, you signed the contract, right? Yeah, but we didn't know the show was going to pop. I can't help it if you didn't have the vision. I'm sorry, but that's the contract you signed. So he said they felt bullied. I'm like, no one, no one put a gun to your head. All right, now look, to put things in perspective, right? I looked up the episode. I looked this up. Yes, eventually, Seinfeld was making one million per episode, okay? Seinfeld cast negotiated one million per episode, uh, but they missed out on more. How did they get there? How did they get there? They had to eat shit for a long time. You're like, well, how long? Nine seasons. Nine seasons of eating shit. These fuckers couldn't last two seasons. They couldn't last one and a half season of, of eating crap. They was like, oh, no, this, this is not, this is not what, this is not what's, what, what the business is. But it didn't start at 1 million per episode. It started at 20,000 per episode during the first season. And guess what? 
These guys were established. He was a comedian. And what did he do? He used the show to bolster his celebrity. And then he can go do these sellout tours um, for comedy when he wasn't filming. But then he made once he got to that million per episode, shit was nice. You you be you be lucky to catch him doing stand up because he doesn't have to anymore. At this point, it's just all about whatever he wants to do. So this is apples to oranges because you have to remember this. This is a SAG show. These people were established. They were established and they really didn't make bank until the ninth season. So they had to eat shit in this game. You have to put in your work. You get it. I y'all want to go at Saban for being cheap. Don't blame Saban. He put the contract in your face. No one told you to sign it. But I get I wanted to be a movie star. OK, well, if you want to be a movie star in Saban's world, here's the contract that all the movie stars have to sign. You are not special. You are unproven. I'm putting my money up banking on you. So if I'm putting my money up banking on you, you're going to follow my rules. OK, because if the shit flop, your ass still going to expect to get paid. Right. Yes, you are. But it happened to do good. So now you want a little more. You want a little more. All right. Now. Different people change their mind. Here is where it gets murky, because according to Brent, David Yost was never part of it. He said, if we all do it, I'll do it. But if one person's out, I'm out because he knew that it could work if everyone did it. And what else? Jason David Frank never was a part of it. And the tape I'm about to show you is going to say like, yeah, he was never a part of it. We played the Coliseum interview. But what if I said it was an interview he did before the Coliseum interview where he talked about this and he said these fuckers wanted a million per episode. You'd be like, you talking out your ass. And I'm like, well, I'll play the tape and let you hear it. Now, this is where they kind of pissed me off during it. All right. JDF said he, he laments he was never part of the union, never was with the union. They were offered something new. So not only did Haim was like, OK, all right, guys, you want more money? Here is a new offer in the video. They never say how much the offer was. They just said it was a joke as Austin, it was a joke. Well, what was the number? What number did you want? These are questions. If I'm like, if I'm talking to him, like, well, what was the number that you wanted? What was the new offer for? What were you making originally going into season two? What was the new offer for season two and the movie? And what number did you have in mind? Because they could have had unrealistic expectations. They're like, well, we popular. We, we sold out uh, Orlando Studios. No, you didn't. Austin St. John didn't sell out Orlando Studios. The Power Rangers sold out Orlando Studios. Power Rangers were so popular, they had a show on Broadway. Guess who wasn't a part of it? These guys. Because you know what? They realized they could Disney on ice this shit to send people around the world in helmets with their voices and make money too. So at that point, they realized your value was not much. But people overestimate their value all the time. He had people in his ear. He said it himself. So what was the new offer? Next time you go to the Comic-Con and you see these guys and you pay, pay, to, pay to interact with them, why don't you ask them that question? Hey, I saw the video on Fanware. Hey, I saw Henry's video. You said that you got a new offer. What was the new offer? So it seems like Haim was trying to negotiate with them. But they didn't like the idea. And next thing you know, new Ranger auditions were scheduled. These guys got discouraged because, as he said, the other side had cut a deal. And what did they do? Divide and conquer. Hey, you with this shit? No, I'm not. Jason, you with this shit? He was like, nope. No, I'm happy to be here. All right, cool. Now that these fuckers are going, we about to, we about to bust down that money that we was going to give them and give it to you and whoever else stay. You pulled the Jerry Maguire and the ship, it backfired in her face. And in the end, in the end, they both regretted it. And during it, one of, the, one of the things that they said, car shows in the day, they were making more money doing a car show appearance than they were making per season. So in their mind, they're like, I could do these car show appearances and I probably don't need the show. And guess what? After they left the show, sure, the car shit was popping for a little bit. And then guess what? The shit stopped. The, 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 the franchise moved on and your popularity tanked. And then what? Now you got to go to Kuwait and, and play EMS. 
you got to get you got to get the hell out of Dodge. You need money. Daddy is like, hey, go, go, go get this government contract. And they both still to this day wish they were in the movie. They know they made a mistake. They can say here and say, I'm the hero. I stood on business. I was looking out for everyone else and I sabotaged everyone else's career. We should have did the movie. We would have been solidified. And then guess what? After you do the movie, you have a little bit more leverage. The longer you stay on the show, the more leverage you get. You put you you pulled the the Jerry Maguire a little too soon. They bounced your ass, replaced your ass, repeated success, and then now your value tanks. Tanks is, is donezo. Now look, guys, that is you know my take. I mean, overall, the thoughts. The video was weak. It was weak. Here 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 we go. Here here's my notes right here. Here's my notes right here. I'll I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll make them bigger. Um, this was my notes, and I took this as I was as I was doing as I was watching it. So, what are my final thoughts? Um, overall thoughts. The new video uh, was weak. Uh, now I know ASJ fans gonna say I'm just saying that because I'm a JDF fan, but you know, putting that aside, what new? Did you actually learn from the video? If you've been here with me, most of this stuff you already knew. I, I, I knew he signed the contract when he was under the age. Uh, the selling point is them doing uh, what more than likely is a scripted video about them leaving the show. And the things that stood out, there were no concrete numbers mentioned and nothing jarring stood out. There was no like, aha moment. Like, oh shit, I didn't know that. No, it was just a, a money grab. So uh, now they got that. Now that that is over, let's get to JDF talking about how they wanted a million per episode. All right. Can we do that? Can we do that? And what did you guys think of the video? Sorry, I wasn't reading chat. I was cooking. I was cooking. Let him cook. <laughs> I was cooking. I am sorry. I was cooking. What's my take on this movie or in this uh, cash grab by Austin St. John and Walter was it accurate or inaccurate? They did a weak ass video for clicks. Uh, well, you know, not clicks, subscriptions. They get they going for that HBO money. Woo, Jesus! I may clip that. I was cooking. I felt like I was cooking. I was in the zone. I was in the zone. <laughs> Shit, I was cooking. Uh, anywho, uh, you know, wish them all the best of luck. I can't wait to see how his trial or plea or case turns out. Um, I get it. You gotta, you gotta beat rock with your friends to the very end. You turn your back on them now. Who will they have left? Nobody. All right. So, what is the <laughs> what is up? Total excellence. All right, all right, all right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's get to the tape. You like? Holy shit! Now this interview was provided by the actor O2, who provided it, and he was like, they wanted a million per episode, and I was like, no way. He said, here's the proof. I'm like, you got proof? He's like. Yeah, I wouldn't say it for nothing. All right, so let's, I got notes on this, because look, guys, I was like, you know what? I have to put on <laughs> for my motherfucking people. But before we get to that, you know, let, 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 let's, uh, All let's, of them had their own let's lighten the mood a little bit, man, because, you know, I, that, that was a little, that was a bit much. That was a bit much. I know I got, I know I got some Power Rangers stuff up in the, in the clip uh, <laughs> for y'all. I know I do. I have to. Um, all I do is uh, keep the Power Ranger stuff. Now, I know people are like, what is this sister, sister doing in the Power Ranger thing? Like, why? Like, Henry, what the fuck is that? I know y'all starving. Yeah, that brother's starving. I know. I know y'all like, who is this chocolate little chocolate drop? All right. So let's take a little break and I'll, I'll give you who she is. You're like, who is she? Who is she? I need to know. <laughs> Henry, I need to know who she is. All right, so this is Yanni official, right? You know, Walter Jones may be a sniper out here. He might be a sniper in the game, sniping uh, these women about, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I gotta get him. So this right here, what you're about to see is a lawsuit. You're like, what the fuck? You're like, Henry, what, what lawsuit? Um, compliments of dust. Um, this is a lawsuit between... Six Flags Magic Mountain, a one Walter Jones. He he got he someone told him that. Shut up, bitch. 
And they told him with their fist. <laughs> they was they told him with their fist. They like just because you play some a hero on TV, I'm the villain in real life. And they gave him the beats. All right, all right. So what happened? Six Flags Magic Mountain. This was filed March 25th, 2022. Now look, guys. I was I went looking for this complaint. <laughs> I did because I can get it. But this shit is sealed or it's high up. They said you don't got the clearance to look at it. I mean, and why would I? It's a it's a billion dollar business. Six Flags. Uh, what happened? Uh, failed to protect a celebrity guest of a movie premiere event from being attacked by theme parks paying customers, a California lawsuit state. Six Flags negligently allowed public patrons to remain on the premises during the event and security guards did not respond to plaintiffs Walter E. Jones and Yanin Coleman who were assaulted. God damn. God damn. Oh, my goodness. According to complaint filed March 21st uh, in the L.A. County Court, the security staff was so incompetent that the assailants seen by dozens of people were able able to easily evade capture and attention by the park security. So uh, they got the beats and then they, they skedaddled. They, they popped them in the mouth and skedaddled. What does he say? Um, Jones, the actor, he was there for the Space Jam thing. Plaintiffs say they were expected only invited guests would be at the Six Flags grounds during the event, but the park was still packed with paying customers. A park attendant escorted the plaintiffs to the front of the line of the Apocalypse roller coaster, right ahead of a long line of patrons, the suit says. So sometimes, guys, if you got a little bit of money, you know what I'm saying? I got money. You get the front of the line pass. I have had the privilege of having the front of the line pass, and trust me, if the lines are long... People will be giving you the death stare as they've been waiting in the line for an hour. You walk up. In some instances, I you have a wristband. They scan the wristband. Me and my party, we go straight to the front. And we just, you know, I usually wear glasses. I, I have that hater blockers on when I'm at the park. But I'll be looking at the people. They be standing like, what's your black ass doing that walking to the front of the line? And I just be like, shut up, bitch. In my mind, because I don't engage. Um, but I imagine maybe he engaged. So what's the story? What's the story? According to uh, the complaint, a group of unnamed white men and women in the line shouted racial epithets at the plaintiffs who are African-American and accused them of cutting the line. Good thing when I do it, like it shows you like, hey, this is for the people who pay and this is for the people who don't pay. Uh, But when the two men of the group began shoving the plaintiffs, Jones attempted to defuse the situation but the men tried to push him down the staircase. They was trying to tombstone his ass. They like, man, get your little ass up out of here. I mean, he all are like five, five guys, uh, five, five. Um, but anyway, Jones says he suffered lip lacerate. Whoa, 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 whoa. We missed the part. The plaintiffs say they were violently thrown to the ground and the men struck the plaintiffs faces and heads. God damn. You had to give them the beats. Hey, hey, everyone tough. Everyone got to play until they get punched in the mouth. That's what Mike Tyson said. Uh, Jones said he suffered lip lacerations that will require plastic surgery. Uh, They trying to get the bag and run. Got to get my bag and run. (laughs) He like, oh, I got to get plastic surgery. Six flags. You got to pay me out. A hairline fracture uh, of his nose, knee pain and other injuries. Coleman says she hit her head and back on the ground and monetar- momentarily passed out at the scene. She, she hit him with the, my neck, my back, my neck and my back, you know, shout out to Friday. She received treatment for the after effects of post concussive syndrome. This, so she got concussed. It, they put her ass in concussion protocol. In addition, the physical impairments, the plaintiffs suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, now they claim it PTSD. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's all Jermaine's fault. Yeah, I mean, look. Whoa, 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 whoa. It is all they going, they're undergoing therapy and are reluctant to attend entertainment events that they need to attend to promote their careers. The complaint says, you know, when I was in an accident, my mom would pull this shit. She would say she couldn't go to work and she didn't even have no job. <laughs> she, would, oh. <laughs> she would say, look, she would tell me to like, tell my, me and my sister, tell them your back hurt. <laughs> I was like, so it was like when a doctor touched me, I was like, ooh, ah, ooh. 
<laughs> trying to get the bag. Now, look, I don't know if she, my mother, got a bag. She probably watching now. I'll probably get a text message like, why are you putting my business up? Uh, because you did that shit. But um, Six Park security is in- inadequate. The plaintiffs say there were no security guards present during the incident. No one apprehended the assailants in the parking lot. The plaintiffs again encountered the two men who shouted at, look, they doubled back. They like, look, we'll beat your ass again, boy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> It'll beat your ass again, boy. Like, damn, 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 damn. L.A. Sheriff's Department officers in the parking lot took the plaintiff's statements but refused to arrest the two men because the officers were acting at the request of Six Flags which wanted to avoid publicity, the suit says. It, this is probably true, considering I can't get the lawsuit. The complaint says Six Flags was utterly unresponsive to this incident, failing to respond to the letters and phone calls regarding the horrific assault on the plaintiffs. It failed to provide adequate security for the guests, celebrity uh, trained and supervised security. The plaintiffs represented by the attorney, Stephen J. Uh, Goldberg. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say uh, that. Seek compensatory damages and other relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want their money. So uh, that's where uh, she comes from. She was with, J- uh, I don't know what capacity, but anyway, we about to get into what uh, Tommy said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lawyers trying to, hey, everyone's trying to get paid. Every, I, I, man, I got to sign a goddamn Money over to my ex uh, soon. I got to see what my lawyer say. <laughs> like, we got a meeting on the 29th. You got that bread? I'm like, nope. How much you want? I need to know exactly how much you want before I pay your ass. Uh, because I got I to gotta move some things. I got to move heaven and earth. But anyway, uh, we'll do this and then we'll get into what uh, JDF said. <laughs> all right, Sava, let's start all over. Wait, Tiger Zord. Tiger Lord. Battle ready now. Let's go. I know I'm about to get copyrighted. They like, uh, Henry, what you doing? That is Chanzo. Uh, Chanzo, where you at? Uh, yeah, look, look, man, I, I, I am a curator of content. So, yes, people are saved. And, and don't forget, guys, it's Friday. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, let's get into it. This is the main event. This is what everyone came for. Uh, let me pull it up. Uh, let me set the stage for you, young whippersnappers. We going to do it like this. Give me a second. Jason David Frank 20th anniversary. You know why do you pick the 20th anniversary? Because it's probably one of the best pictures of JDF. Where is it at? Where is it at? Ba bam! This is easily the best picture of Jason David Frank. And everyone could have had this picture if they didn't have their hands up their asses. So uh, here is the video. Um, this is a no pink spandex clip. You like Henry, what the hell? This ain't on YouTube. Some of it's on YouTube, but shout out to No Pink Spandex. See, what, what you guys don't know is she wants to play the game. Okay, so when you want to play the game, remember what I said. Like, no Pink Spandex. Shout out to No Pink Spandex. Shout out to my sister, sister. Remember I said she was a black woman, and people were like, what do you mean she's a black woman? No Pink Spandex. Uh, interview. Give me a second. Where's she at? I gotta find my sister. My sister, sister. No pink spandex. Where you at, girl? I know you be in the chat. Hey, type type at no pink spandex. Um, interview, and see if she pop up. I know I seen her. No pink spandex. Face. Hold on, guys. You like Henry? Why are you doing this to her? 
I'm putting her on blast. So people like you might, she might be at a comic con and you don't know that you're next to a legend in the game. She is legendary. So we got to put some respect on her name. No pink spandex, blah, blah, blah. Sorry guys. I know I didn't plan on showing her face, but I'm gonna put her out there. I'm gonna put her out there so you can see her who she is. The woman, the woman, behind uh mighty morphin right you like henry she she probably like henry why are you putting me out here i'm like i gotta i gotta give you some shine girl because you won't come on the channel so since she won't come on the channel we gotta make her famous I'm from no pink spandex. yeah she got got the volume all low and shit all right so this is no pink spandex right here y'all that that's her i know i know this is my interview where she like i'm not coming on your show henry i'm trying to get paid out this bitch and you, you trouble, you controversy. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. But we appreciate your hard work and due diligence out here, girl. So let me bring up my notes because, guys, this is one of the rare, um, the rare moments I am actually prepped for. You like, Henry, you prep for this? I'm like, yeah, I prep for this shit, boy. I prep for this. I prep for it because y'all deserve it. Y'all been working with me for a while. Let's get into this video. So you probably heard this, some of this before, but we're not going to play it all. So let's talk about how we got into MMA. Are you like, ah, this I don't think is on the internet. Stuff going on, a lot of, a lot of publicity, a lot of press and, you know, um, but again, I, what, you know, you can't have all this stuff if you don't have fans. And mm -hmm. I do, I have a lot of fans that are loyal. I've got a lot of people that, you know, a lot of, you know, there's some haters out there, but that's standard. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, some haters out there. Yeah, I mean, so, okay, because, yeah. yeah, you mentioned a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So we're going to, like, to backtrack on that a little bit. There was one person in particular, I, I don't know, I forgot the name, doesn't really matter. But they mentioned a point where, you know, they saw you that you were getting into, you know, MMA and what have you. And they took offense to... Um, you mentioned that, like, you know, a lot of the MMA fighters that you see now, they're getting movie deals and what have you. And they took that as that that's your motivation to get into MMA. So what do you say to no. that? That's not at all. They're silly. Look, everyone knows the real MMA fighters that have real deals, they know why they do MMA. Forrest Griffin said it nice in the UFC magazine. He loves punching people in the face. And that's just what I love. <laughs> I mean, I love fighting people. And you know damn well he wanted to punch ASJ in the face. And I think ASJ was scared that JDF would just let one loose. You know, he's like, hey, man, pull your punch. Like, I'm going to pull him, man. And then he clock his ass for real. And then next thing you know, he break his nose or something. Sorry. That's just what I like. I ain't blaming Power Rangers. I was like that way before Power Rangers. Even before I booked that show, me and my brother were kickboxers. So, you know, uh, we kickboxed in Inglewood at a place with Steve Fisher, uh, you know, and Red Dragon Karate, Louis D. Casamass. I was a fighter. You know, I just had a, I just couldn't fight because I was on a TV show. I couldn't bash my face up and stuff. So they're silly to say that. I'm that, that's, you know, I'm saying that those MMA guys that are getting movie deals, they didn't do MMA to get movie deals. They did MMA because they love it. Do you think Rampage Jackson yeah, Rampage went into Jackson, MMA yeah. to yeah, do yeah, the yeah. A-Team? Right. No, he didn't do that to do the A-Team. He did it because he loves MMA, you know? So it's just, um, it's just one of those things where people are going to say that, you know, but yeah. That's not going to happen. So, I mean, that's, you know, if, if the movie deals happen, that's great. You know, whatever. But, you know, I'm probably going to turn another film down. I've, I've been turning movies down. You know, I'm more into doing my training. And, you know, there's some films I've turned down. I mean, honestly, you know. So. All right. So you, you establish he's a fighter. Now, I know we got Francis in the chat. And I am going to go way off script because I'm going to talk about the, the recording that I heard. And, uh... We bought the scorch earth right here. We bought to piss a lot of ranger people off. A lot of people are going to be like, what the fuck, Henry? Look, I, I have no interest. I, I do have an interest in going to a con, but um, let's let's keep let's keep it moving because he got a lot to say. And I don't know why she didn't put this whole interview out. Uh, maybe if she ever come on the channel, which I doubt she will, uh, <laughs> she'll tell me as a warm up fight for me. But he, he never called. You know, he says he's a fighter. He's talking about ASJ, right? And we've heard all this before, but something is a little different because I think the recording that was put out may have been altered for to protect ASJ and to maybe, 
uh, keep no pink spandex in the game? Well, everybody, all the fans, you know, I'm an underground fighter. I mean, you guys know the story. I've been saying it for years. Yeah. But if you tell your fans something, you need to live it. If I say I'm a fighter, then I need to be that fighter for my fans. I can't, I'm not going to just lie to my fans and tell them, oh, I'm a fighter, and lie. That's what Austin's done. You know, he's always, he's always lied. That's why, I always, that's why that always thing between me and him that I always want to fight him because he says he's a fighter. He says he kills people in the ring. So, you know. Whoa, I mean, wait, 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 wait. Now, he says he kills people in the ring. We heard this before, but has anyone ever had the balls to ask ASJ if he killed someone in the ring? Anyone. Brent, where you at? Hey, did you kill someone in the ring? He's dropping all these facts that maybe we we skipped on the first one, maybe we went in here, but I literally gave this my undivided attention and was taking notes throughout the whole thing. And we're not going to play the whole 36 minutes. He says he kills people in the ring. Austin St. John, yeah, he said that on set before. He said not only, not only did that, you know, he's like, I don't fight no more. And the reason why I don't fight no more is because I killed somebody on the ring. And everyone's like, Amy... Ken, you know, Andy, Kimberly, you know, David Yost, they were all there listening. And we're all just kind of snickering, like, sure, he killed somebody in the ring. And he's like, and then you know what? It was the guy's birthday. Oh, look, look, P Pisano got it. He killed the guy in his ring on his birthday. Come on, God. Did we not hear this? <laughs> look, uh, where does it, where do these stories come up from? Look, I'll rewind it. I know. I'll, I'll be talking over it sometimes. I'll be talking over it. But this is... This is some epic shit. As a warm-up fight for me, but he he never calls. You know, he says he's a fighter. He tells everybody, all the fans, you know, I'm an underground fighter. I mean, you guys know the story. I've been saying it for years. Yeah. But if you tell your fans something, you need to live it. If I say I'm a fighter, then I need to be that fighter for my fans. I can't, I'm not going to just lie to my fans and tell them, oh, I'm a fighter. And lie, that's what Austin's done. <laughs> you know, he's always he's always lied. That's why, I always, that's why that always thing between me and him that I always want to fight him because... He says he's a fighter. He says he kills people in the ring. So, you know. Whoa, I mean, wait, 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 wait. He says he kills people in the ring. Austin St. John, yeah. He said that on set before. He said not only, not only did that, you know, he's like, I don't fight no more. And the reason why I don't fight no more is because I killed somebody on the ring. And everyone was like, Amy, Kim, you know, Amy, Kimberly, you know, David Yost, they were all there listening. And we're all just kind of snickering like, sure, he killed somebody in the ring. And he's like, and then you know what? It was the guy's birthday. I felt horrible about it. I'm like, okay. Stop the cat. You don't right, think so he was just him, joking? No, heck no, he wasn't joking. You don't know Austin St. John, too. You don't know him. Yeah, you know, come on. See, I think this was cut out of the clip that we that we played. Maybe it wasn't, but let's keep going. It's been a while. You, you know, he goes on Morphicon on, on the, the first Morphicon thing and tells people he's fighting again. He's never fought before in the ring. He's not joking. I think I remember... Was, there was, there was, no, I think I remember because like I was at the panel and I I think I remember like he, he said that he's doing, you know, like being a paramedic and whatever. And he's thinking <laughs> about, you know, getting yeah, but he's always whatever. been thinking about it. That's the problem. That's why he shouldn't even think about it. Look, I don't think about it. I do it. You know, and it's one of those things that when I don't think about it, I'm training it, you know, and look, when a guy, you know, has a little shave cut on his face and he comes in on set and the, the show's not even aired yet. And then he's like, they're like, you're late. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was driving and I saw this guy beat this little girl and man i pulled over and was like hey don't be hitting your little girl and i spin sidekick the guy through the window oh the window broke and then the cops came and then i went down to clover city police station and then when i was down there all the police were like hey dude are you that guy from the tv show and then i got mobbed and then i was signing autographs that's the reason why i'm late and my thing was okay austin our show hasn't even aired on tv yet oh yeah yeah it's not aired yet but you know all the cops know we're, you know, filming down here in Culver City. So, you know, they all recognize me. No, they didn't. These are stories I've heard for years and years. Anybody who knows Austin Zane John, he's a liar. He's a compulsive liar. He lies about everything. And I don't care what he lies about. Just don't lie about my livelihood. I'm a martial artist. I've been in martial arts my whole entire life since I was four. So when you start lying about martial arts, it, it, I take it personal. You know, I, I take that personal. You know, martial art people are not supposed to be cocky and arrogant. And, hey, I could beat this person. That's all I've heard for years from that guy. I mean, him got in physical fights on set before. Now, we heard we heard this before, but we're going to let him cook for two minutes. And then I'm going to talk to you about the tape that uh, Francis played that she ain't released yet. I don't know why. Physical fights? Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, missing around and start sparring and it turned physical, you know? So, I mean, here's things where 
okay, you fight, you know, in Saudi Arabia is what he told me last. He's got a contract at some overseas thing that he, it's a fight contract and he can't fight in the USA. So whatever. All right. So there's another fact that, Hey, he has a fight. He has a contract in Saudi Arabia and he can't fight. So that's another, uh, question for, um, ASJ. <laughs> um, and Walter, you know, for ASJ, eh, Walter. So, Brent, when you at Comic Con, ask that question. The point is, I'm done with the whole Austin St. John thing. I think people can really see if he was a fighter, he'd be in shape. He's, he's so out of shape right now. And that's just, you know, I refuse to be like that. I, I mean, we've been a superhero, you know, for many kids around the world. And that's what I continue to be right now, is, is I continue to be a hero. Not a superhero, but like, I want to meet people, I'm nice to people. You know, people are like, oh, that's cool. And, you know, I work out and I'm in shape. I keep my body in shape. This is stuff that I love to do. This is like my world. That's why when I took it so personal and he was like, oh, I'm a fighter. And don't, even, don't even say you think about fighting. Because if you're thinking about fighting, I mean, one of my trainers offered him like 25 grand to fight me, $25,000 for one fight. And he'd even call back. He even had the decency to call back. Or, don't even, you know, can't even go on YouTube and say, no, I ain't fighting you. Or, a phone call or a text because he's got my number. Hey, man, I don't want to fight or whatever. You know, if I don't want to do something, I'll tell someone. You know, if I'm hurt in a fight and I got hit, like when Mac hit me in the jaw, did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt, man. Now, I had Mac Truck on the show before. You know, did I continue fighting? Yeah, I continue fighting. Was my face swelling up? Yeah, I was swelling up two times the size. But, you know, that's the fight game. If I'd be, anyone else would sit here and go, no, nah, that didn't hurt. That didn't do nothing. You know, I'm not like that. I'm really, I tell my feelings how it is. So sometimes I get myself in trouble because I speak my feelings. Well, but I, I just can can't see. hide my feelings. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, you know what? You know I what happened? Can't like... hide them. I mean, then then I'm going to be fake. And Hollywood's already full of fake people. Mm, so, it is. You know, yes. Hollywood's just full of fake people. All right. So, what happened with the fight? Now, this is the recording that Francis has not released. Of course, I heard, and I am about to talk about what was said in the tape okay so um it's it's really about walter but he talks about this fight and he talks about austin st john and maybe at some point she'll release it um so jdf was indeed trying to fight isj in an exhibit you know exhibition like you know you see floyd mayweather going around fighting uh people it was the same thing but at the time he was into mma okay so in the francis recording jdf told walter about the fight at this point walter is accusing jdf of blackballing him in detroit which is his hometown so as a result of him saying he's blackballing he's going around telling everybody that hey jdf is blackballing me in my town now you can ask walter this the next time you see him jdf i hear in the recording him count out i would i believe to be fifteen hundred dollars to pay Walter's guarantee and for him to stop telling people I'm blackballing you. At the time, JDF was like, I'm not blackballing you. You have no fucking lines. So because you charge a guarantee, people don't want to book you and then they're asked out on the guarantee because you didn't sell enough to cover your guarantee. And he he basically told him, stop charging a guarantee. I keep telling you guys, stop charging guarantees. You will make your money. You roll with me. I'll guarantee you make your money, but stop charging guarantees. So he gave him the 1500 and told him, and then, well, he didn't tell him, he said, Hey, what's up with Austin? I emailed him. I want to do this fight. Can he respond to the email? Right. It's 20, 25 K just for a sparring ex exhibition. He told Walter, Hey, can you reach out? To ASJ, Walter said he would see what he can do. Okay, now Austin St. John never got back to him, and this pissed JDF off so much. He even said it in this interview. I don't have to play it, but if you find he said if he would have just said, "Hey, no, I'm not fighting," everything would have been cool. But all he did was ignore it, like it didn't exist, like it didn't happen, and that's what got under his skin. So. That is a portion of the tape of Francis, and this is the backstory 
of the recording. If I'm lying, I'm flying. Maybe she'll co-sign. Maybe she'll she'll skedaddle up out of here because uh, some people don't want to be a part of this shit. You know what I'm saying? People, but she, she'll say it with her chest. I know she's under weather, though. All right, now let's get going to uh, the 3130 mark. If I'm lying, I'm flying, and I got 10 toes down. All right, so now we at 31. Look, guys, I took notes. No, yeah. honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm done about it. You know, sort of conventions and stuff. But I will say that if I ever did see him, I will ask him on, on the panel. I'm not going to punch him in the face and be like, oh, you. It's no, it's no need for that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just, hey, man, I challenge you to a fight. It would have been great. How many fans would like to see it? We would. We would put him on the spot. He'd be like, yeah, but, you know, he'll make another excuse up that he's got some oversi- overseas contract that he can't fight. And I'd be like, okay, I understand. But yeah, but he's a I mean, he's a paramedic. I mean, I mean, you can you can give him some credit for like you know saving people's lives on a daily basis. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, I give him a lot of credit. Yeah, man, he's a paramedic. He's doing good. But I think that you know when you why not go off that then? Why not why not just say, hey, look, this is who I am. I'm Austin St. No, forget Austin St. John. That's your stage name. I'm. You see, I'm a paramedic. <laughs> I saved lives. Cool. Why do you have to go into a whole story about like you know even afterwards? Well, I'm fighting. Don't even just drop it. That that's that's the old part of your life that you've never done that you're never gonna do. So when other fighters hear that, it bothers people. It mm. doesn't bother fans, but for me, it's like man, just he's always been insecure about himself. He's never been confident and comfortable with who he is in his own skin. I would have been like, yeah, my name's. That's just the way it is. I don't care if Jason Frank comes on. I don't care if Jason Narvi. You can call on another 10 people. You know, I mean, I'm who I am. And I never acted like a star of the show. That's why I ended up becoming the star of the show. I never wanted to be the star of the show. I never asked for that part. I just was in my own little world. And I'm just saying that, you know, some people should just be happy with who they are and don't say anything. That's where all the conflict came from. Mm. You know, so it's just one of those things. So, yeah, I do give him credit. He's a paramedic. He saves lives. That's awesome. I mean, all right. You know, so, I mean, I don't think he's happy with it. That's why you always got to make up, well, I'm thinking about this. And- <laughs> Look, he's going in. Now, guys, put your listening ears on because we're about to get into the part where he talked about them wanting a million dollars per episode. And, and it comes up at at the 34, 30 mark. But there is a little backstory about who JDF was. And if you've been watching my content when I show where he grew up at, it's word for word, beat for beat, everything you saw in that video of his house, of his childhood pictures that we saw. Thinking about that, and I'm Stallone's double and body double, and oh. all this stupid stuff he always says. We have another fact that we can have someone verify. Was Austin St. John ever Stallone's body double? Okay. Was he ever a body double? Did he kill someone on their birthday? And was he signed to some Saudi Arabia fighting company? Those are three good questions to ask him. It's just annoying. It's just be who you are. You know, I am who I am. If you don't like me, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I am what I am. I, I, after this, I'm going to go back and talk to my Facebook people. And, you know, I mean, I, I am what I am. I, there's no, I can't hide who I am, you know? So yeah. when I talk about, you know, the, the talk about... I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I was training. And then I got injured and I'm like, God, and how many more morphic cons or, you know, or these cons can I go to saying I'm going to fight? It just it sounds too stupid. I've been training. I'm like, I need to fight now. That's why my career, I have to get going. Mm-hmm. Call the promoters. And I'm like, God, fight, fight, fight. That's why I'm fighting back to back because I want to do something out there. Yeah. Was- All right. Pay attention. Listening to some uh, interviews that you've done recently and you talked a lot about your brother and you guys were both fighters and what have you and in fact growing up uh something about you know you know your family i guess you, you, like one story about you having to to bathe in an outhouse and it was and you know yeah, so yeah you know people see the whole thing is i never came from a house full of money okay people see me and i think that's why i appreciate money so much and respect other people, and respect people that don't have money. And I don't care if you have money. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. If I like you, I like you. And I'm pretty down to earth, and you can come and you talk to me. That's why I never acted like an actor or, you know, and, and all those guys did. Austin did, and all those guys did. They wanted, you know, they want to strike, and a million dollars an episode, and I had a family to feed. I couldn't do that kind of stuff, you know. God, oh. They wanted to strike. They wanted a million dollars per episode, And I couldn't do that because I have a family to feed. Let's run it back. Remember, he was paying child support out the ass. Uh, Interviews that you've done recently. And you talked a lot about your brother and you guys were both fighters and what have you. And in fact, growing up, uh, something about, you know, you know, your family, I guess, 
you, like one story about you having to to bathe in an outhouse and it was and you know yeah so, yeah you know people see the whole thing is I never came from a house full of money okay people see me and I think that's why I appreciate money so much and respect other people and respect people that don't have money and I don't care if you have money I don't care who you are I don't care what you do if I like you I like you and I'm pretty down to earth and you can come and you talk to me that's why I never acted like an actor or you know, and, and all those guys did, Austin did, and all those guys did. They wanted, you know, they want to strike and a million dollars an episode, and I had a family to feed. I couldn't do that kind of stuff, you know, but my family, my dad's a trucker, and, um, you know, when I was about 15 or 16, we lived on five acres, which was no electricity. We lived in a in a commercial mobile home with no, no carpet, okay? It was dark. We had no lights. It's five acres in the middle of the desert. I mean, just when the sun goes down, the sun goes down, so we had a yeah. generator to watch. I showed you all of this. And, you know, Shaw84 is right. He probably was exaggerating that they wanted a million dollars per episode. Um, but that is an exaggeration that, that may not be completely accurate, but they definitely wanted more than what Saban was willing to pay. It may not have been a million an episode, but it probably was probably like 20,000 an episode. I mean, because you comparing yourself to uh, people like um, Seinfeld comes up. And you're looking at Saban and you counting his money and how much the show was making. And I know they started off at what, like 600 a week or something, which is like 31,000 a year, something like that. I don't know what they got bumped up to for the second season, but they were not happy at all. And I'll, I'll run it back one more time where he says that they wanted a million dollars per episode. Sure, it could be some exaggeration, but what do you guys think? How much were they asking for per episode? They never say. They just say it was a, the offer was a joke. And sometimes people can have um, a overwhelming sense of entitlement with unrealistic expectations. You're saying, well, this show makes a billion dollars. We're doing all the work. We should get 20% of a billion. And then and Saban was just like, nope. Nope. You know what? You, you're a pain in my ass. Uh, interviews that you've done recently and you talked a lot about your brother and you guys were both fighters and what have you and in fact growing up uh something about you know you know your family i guess you, you, like one story about you having to to bathe in an outhouse and it was and you know yeah so yeah you know people see the whole thing is i never came from a house full of money okay people see me and i think that's why i appreciate money so much and respect other people, and respect people that don't have money, and I don't care if you have money, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, if I like you, I like you, and I'm pretty down to earth, and you can come and you talk to me, that's why I never acted like an actor, or, you know, and, and all those guys did, Austin did, and all those guys did, they wanted, you know, they want to strike, and a million dollars an episode, and I had a family to feed, I couldn't do that kind of stuff, you know, but my family, my dad's a trucker, and, um, you know, when I was about 15 or 16, we lived on five acres, which was no electricity. We lived in a, in a commercial mobile home with no, no carpet. Okay. It was dark. We had no lights. It's five acres in the middle of the desert. I mean, just when the sun goes down, the sun goes down. So we had a yeah. generator to watch TV. When the generator ran out of gas, we didn't have a TV. And then I had a heat up stove, had to heat up water on a propane uh, tank, like a propane stove to yeah. heat hot water, pour in a five gallon bucket of, you know, five gallon sparkless water, carry that outside in the freezing cold to an outhouse shower and outhouse these are all real stories these is shit that he did and he had uh photo proof on his page i showed the video where we looked at his first house we looked at his brother we looked at them build a fence we looked at the goddamn outhouse i mean this is my life it's not like you know i'm making up stories and you know this is i've lived that kind of life and then you know getting in school bus people you know making fun oh yeah you got an outhouse and you know hearing all the horrible people say things about you not having money and all this other stuff. That's why I think it, it, it drove me to be successful. You know, my dad sold the property for a lot of money afterwards and got himself a good house and, you know, all that stuff. So me and my brother were pretty close growing up, you know, and pretty much in the boonies. And and we, we weren't really in the boonies, though. That's the problem. You know, everyone else had houses and carpets and all this, but we just had to do what we had to do. And my dad taught me to, to, you know, I got a job at 13 years old. You know, when I was working at a restaurant out there, when I had no electricity, and you know, I was on the, you know, got the employee of the month, so, you know, I worked at a restaurant in Fontana. I grew up in Fontana. Mm. We had property out there, and um, that's out in the California area, and, you know, so, yeah, it was just one of those things that I learned, and I guess I got along 
with the truckers and the people that didn't have money versus people that had money. Because mm-hmm. I just didn't like the arrogancy of people and how, just how they acted and the, the fakeness of someone of seeing them. Oh, yeah. it's good to meet you. And then you're hearing the, I mean, everyone has those people. I know everyone oh, yeah. listening here has those friends that you're like, I can't believe you backstabbed me. I can't believe you two-faced talked about me. Everyone has them. Mm-hmm. Gossip <laughs> is gossip scene. Remember, um, JDF said that, and I found the video that shows everything that he just said, which I'm going to show again. We'll go through it. To be the thing that everyone does. I just, I don't like doing that. I just tell you how it is. That's why I think people sometimes when they hear it, if you're going to have a question for me on, on, on AFO or anything like that, I'll tell you how it is. You might not like the answer, but I'm going to tell you how it is. <laughs> you know, and I just, my dad taught me that and, you know, and, um, you know, it taught me that my, my word is is gold and no matter how much money you have you can't buy your word back so my yeah. word is, is gold and my word is you know means everything so if i tell you okay i'm gonna do your interview at nine o'clock and i just blow you out and don't call you back for another two days then i don't feel good about myself mm-hmm. you know i mean it's just one of those things i knew i had the interview I'm, with a million other things that i got going on right now i'm standing outside my house right now and you know talking on the phone and it's cold out here in Texas, <laughs> but, you know i want to yeah. i want to make sure that i do what i have to do you know and so, I mean, I, I kind of uh, lived on those five acres, and I was excited about getting a house with carpet. You know, and here I was 15 at the time buying a house, and my mom buying a house, and I was, you know, I asked the realtor if the carpet comes with the house. You know, it was one of those things where, you know, it's kind of the life I, I lived. I didn't live, you know, one of those you know, people seeing me, and they're like, you know, Mac, Mac, I know Jonathan Max, I come from the streets. I was too. I grew up in a, in an all Hispanic town. You know, I grew up in San Gary in the Zeus area out in California. I didn't have an easy life either. Me and my brother didn't have easy lives, but mm-hmm. I'm not trying to play the vanilla ice roll either saying, you know, I lived the game. There goes the outhouse guys. There you go. Right there. Makes your life. Not at all, but we didn't have yeah. an easy life. You know, I mean, we had hard lives and I think that's what makes you, strong and that's what makes you drive for success you know and Mm -hmm. the people that have easy lives don't have success stories because there's nothing to talk about that's successful it's just people that are very successful either you know end up in drugs or get themselves in trouble and you know i mean i i struggled to 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 be someone you know and uh that's why i'm happy with who i am jason even frank it ain't about power rangers and all that stuff i'm happy to do that show too what other five-year-old, my little girl Jenna, she loves, she thinks I'm a superhero. Oh. You know, what other dad can walk around? Yeah, what other dad can walk around and say, hey, you know, I'm a superhero, you know, and a kid looks up to him. I, I like it. So people that sit there and say, give it up, give what up? I'm not, you know, you think I'm running around the streets in my Power Rangers spandex and doing appearances <laughs> like that? You know, I'm not. You know, it's just people <laughs> know me fun. from what show that I'm on. And if it brings back memories for these people and they're like, I remember when I was six, then let's talk memories. Because that's all we live on, memories and, and future goals. And if we're not going to live on that, that's then, then I'm being embarrassed of what I've done and who I am. I'm not. I've, mm. done, you know, I've done Power Rangers, love it. Anyone in the world would have took my role. I don't care who you are. Any guy that says, I wouldn't have done that, yes, you would have. <laughs> yes, you would have. You'd be on yes. one of the biggest shows in the world. You would have took that show. And then you probably would have been a lot different than I am right now, you know, so yeah. whatever. I was going to just. All right. That, w- there there you guys have it. There goes the million dollars per episode. Now, I'm sure y'all going to say it's an exaggeration. I know. I know. It was an exaggeration. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Who knows? I don't know. I wasn't there. But all I do know is they never said in their video how much they were asking for how much they were offered or how much they wanted so with that in mind there you have it like the stream <laughs> what do you guys think what was that was it good now here, here here's my final thoughts here's my final thoughts uh before we go to that um what did he say what did he say I, you know i got i got my notes here I got my notes um some wish they had the role right here we go um, I, I was right now. I was cooking, guys. Some wish they had the road when they had a glimpse via the Gold Ranger. Uh, they wanted the success of JDF. They wanted to be held in his light. And for a split second, as I said before, ASJ was in that light. He was as popular, if not more popular than JDF. 
but his ego got the best of him. The people around him got the best of him. He took the scraps, the forgotten people, the people JDF fired and hired them to work for him, thinking that they would bring him the same amount of success that Jason had. And temporarily, it did. Because he was new. He was the new kid on the block for once. He was the new guy on the on the Comic-Con scene. And he was making money over money. I got money. Weekend after weekend. But what happened, there's a reason that JDF fired them. It's something that he saw. He had the foresight to see that Nah, the, these are not the people who are going to take me to where I need to be. I need to hire someone like Francis who's going to work hard for me and we're going to have a partnership and she's going to elevate me to the next level. Whereas these people that I fired, one guy wished my death upon me. Some other woman is talking ish behind my back. You got Walter shaking me down. These, these, this validated his decision to remove those people from his circle. And as Austin would grab him thinking he's going to recapture that success, all they did was leech off him for momentarily and then pull his ass back down to reality, right down to the depths. And that's where he will forever be, even getting haunted by JDF from beyond the grave, exposing him, not for just, you know, all his his fighting antics. But for, hey, obviously, you may not want a million dollars per episode, but you wanted a lot. So, sure, a million may be an exaggeration. But what JDF was saying, they wanted a lot. For what? What were they putting out? And in the end, we see how the cookie crumbled. People are regretting that the decision that they made. They followed them. And where are they at now? They own fan work, charging HBO Max prices for giveaways and shit. You know, ring the bell on them. It's Dunzo. It's Dunzo. Now, another thing, Lumen, is this he got a he got a fucking federal indictment hanging over his head. Federal indictment. FBI, open up! Which there's a rumor he's gonna take a plea deal. And I I can't see them not making him a felon. If they don't make him a felon, he he better thank the high horses because everyone else is getting hit with felony charges for wire fraud for scamming the government. And how is that going to impact their relationship? How is that going to impact Fanworth, the company? How is that going to impact Comic-Cons? Time will tell. Anywho, do me a favor. Like the stream. See you in the next video. Peace. All right, cool. Now we can drop the link so people can come up and shit. Because I know people got a lot to say. I know Petty said she wanted to come up. Uh, other people wanted to come up. I can read the comment now because I'm not um, I'm not cooking. I am not cooking no more. He looking sad because uh, he got to do the shit, right? You got it. Like, you think he want to be doing these videos on fan work? You think he like loving that shit? Or do you think he was like Jerry Seinfeld, retired, working when he wants to and not doing Comic Cons and putting on the face and charging $80 for a signature and then letting it fluctuate? Like, well, you know... You know, it's more if you got a collectible you want, son. You like, you like. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Like, what? What, what do you mean it's more if I have a collect? What, what the? A si How is my signature signature worth more? Like, um, but the the reality of the situation is, um, sometimes the signature gets worth a little less, um, because it's so readily available. Whereas the Amy Joe Johnson signature, you like, shit, I got Amy Joe, who does a couple comic cons a year. And that gets her through the year because she, you know, she can command a line. She can say, hey, I want a $50,000 weekend and you damn, damn well. I'm like, I'll put that shit up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll put that shit up. You know, we could bank on Amy. Uh, but anyway, let me drop the link. What do you guys think? Was that, was it a good stream today? Did we, did we, did we, was we cooking or was we, was we lukewarm? Let me know. Let me know. Now you got to cam up and shout out to San. Salute to her. She said, I got money. I seen a lot of ASJ's thumbnails where he's offering free giveaways. It's a sad reality check for him now. Uh, I believe the free giveaways, you might have to be a part of fan work. So it's free, but it requires the, the subscription I'm at. We're going to draw from fan work, guys. And um, if you want to, 
If you want to get something, make sure you subscribe to FanWord, follow me here, replace the link, you know, all that good shit. So the link is posted on YouTube. If you will, if you want to join, I know we got people who want, I know Brent going to click it fast because I know people are surprised that I've seen. Um, it's probably more. I mean, it, it probably is 50K. Look, look, Legacy of Nerd. You know, you know how the game go. I ain't got to, I ain't got to school you. Don't be, don't be coming over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Legacy of Nerd though. Um, brother from another mother. I'm going to sue you for my channel at some point. Um, you guys know the, the lore. If you don't know the lore, he stole my channel. Ooh, we have the actor O2. Now, because the actor O2 is a special guest, this is the only time I will allow someone to come up without a microphone, without a camera. They supply the juice. All right. So because, because they supply the juice, they can come up. Actor O2, how are you? Hello, you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, what's up, Henry Resilient? <laughs> you tell me. You've been wanting to come up. I know you want to go against Brent. Um, but what would you like to add? What do you think of them asking for a million dollars? Uh, well, uh, me being an actor myself, that's ridiculous, even when you're not even an established name, you know, so that's crazy. And, and I think they were asking for that crazy amount, because if you hear it in JDF's voice, he was it sounded like he was repeating something he heard in the past. You know, you can tell when somebody's just saying something as an exaggeration, you know, so. Mm, so you really, yeah. you really. And guys, this is actor O2 who provided the clip. Now you really like how did you find this clip? Are you just a JDF fan that you've been that you just know where it's at, where you sent the clip? Are you like anti ASJ and you wanted to expose them? Because I probably would have never found that clip because it's like um typically what no pink spandex would do is post the link to the video and in, in their video in the video description. Um, but on YouTube, that link is not there. So how did you um come across that clip? Yeah, I, I've been following JDF for like since like the early, the like what, 2007, 2008 when he like uh, started doing cons and stuff like that. So I, uh, the reason I found that, I used to follow him on Facebook and everything. And I, uh, I heard that interview back when it was fresh. So that was when he was, uh, I think, about to film or was filming the One Warrior movie, which okay. is a different name right now. All right. All right. All right. And what would you like to say to Brent? Man, I will. I want to debate Brent because Brent, I, like I saw him in the fan word, um, <laughs> the fan word uh, section and he's just trashing JDF. I don't know why he, he has a JDF so thing much. against JDF. He has like, a uh, thing if, I, if I can uh, bring up some, some, uh, some points, he's claiming that JVS JDF's never said that he said that, um, that he never charge, uh, he never charged for anything at cons. And what Brent doesn't understand is you need to take things into context. JDF said that he always gives stuff for free. That doesn't mean he gives everything for free. So he can't find one interview because I watch literally everything on JDF. He will not find one interview. I I I I I, I challenge him. To find one. Well, he's going to he's going to hang on the fact I know we played it at the beginning. It's the Coliseum portion where he says I doesn't charge anything at cons. If you want to buy something, you can buy something. If you don't, you don't. And what uh, Francis said is he doesn't he doesn't have these guarantees that everyone else would have and that he meant the appearance fee that does he doesn't charge at though in that capacity. And there were incidents where Francis said, yeah, he would go to cons and give away free Funko Pops and yeah, then exactly. charge for the signature. Yep, exactly. Because he, there's lots of videos with JDF always says, I never charge appearance fees. He said, because he's, he's not like that. He always says that. And Brent, like, you know, Brent is like, you know, it's like, you know, 
an atheist taking a uh, Christian out of contact, you know, the Bible out of contact. You like, you got to take stuff into context. When well, JD, that's another thing JD have always, uh, always said is that his grammar is not great. So sometimes he may speak in a way that you may take it out of context and you need to, you know, respect, you need to take it into context. That's it. Like, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> thank and, you. And, and, Go ahead. I have a, a couple of extra points because I I kind of like had a short debate on the on the comment if I could bring it up. Oh, let me let me get some other people up here and then just just hang tight, hang tight. Okay, no problem. All right, let's bring up my girl, my one of my fave, my day ones. <laughs> Sam, where the where them girls at? I, how they doing? They 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 not driving you crazy. Oh yeah, they are today, especially because they know I'm on, and they're like, "Show this shrine." Um, they set up my display, and I have. They bought me some green Power Ranger merch, and they set it up like a shrine to be funny. And <laughs> did, they uh, the can- did they light the green candle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, let's, see it. let's see it. Let's see the shrine. <laughs> oh wow! Look at look at that collection over there. Look at that. Look, hey, she, yeah, look, hang on. She a real one, y'all. All right. It's more yeah. <laughs> so that's my daughter's game, by the way. <laughs> uh, hey, at least they embracing your hobby. You know what you they they've taken oh, yeah. interest in what you have. Oh, they do. They know. Yeah, you know? they do, and they, they were they were fun about it, but they've been messing me with like, when is the next Power Ranger stream? When is it going to be on? You have to show everybody. <laughs> well, you know, we, we um, hear now. We hear it's been a while. Um, yeah, but, you know, um, it, it is what it so, is. Yeah, so they they had fun with it, and um, we're celebrating my daughter's birthday. So, oh, how old is she? Happy birthday! Sixteen. God Henry damn. Said, <laughs> Oh, yeah. she is 16 you gotta be you gotta be worried about boys at this point right you're like oh shit um i was worried with my first one she's my oldest is 19 so you know oh, i'm not worried oh jesus she's okay well, what do you think of asj and jdf saying the million dollar demand per episode i think that he let people get a hold of him and that it's still happening. That he's still letting people get a hold of him. And he did say that in the video. He did he said he said people got in my ear. So that just means you're uh susceptible to um manipulation and other people's influence over you. Yeah. And that's why things have I think have gone so bad for him because he keeps dealing with people who they're they're not good for him. They're not, you know, they're not looking out for his best interest. They're looking out for their best interest, and they don't care if he's the fall guy. And uh, my oldest is going to con, and I told her like, um, don't if he's there, don't don't even bother, <laughs> <laughs> don't waste your time. What? Um, because she, yeah, because she was like, oh no do you want me to go say something to him? Like I can say something like, but it comes from you. It's like, don't even bother. He'd make you pay. Yeah. yeah like, you, gotta no. pay. you gotta pay for it. You gotta pay to play. Yeah. It's, Hey, what do you want? You yeah. want a picture, autograph toy, um, yeah. conversations and, ain't free. Yeah. It's, it's not worth it. Unless you, and, Brent, if you Brent, you yeah. Brent, Brent get conversations free. Um, he, yeah. he, he got the gift of gab. So he's, we going to put Brent out there on it yeah. um what do you uh, think about the the uh austin uh, the walter shaking down jdf for 1500 at a comic-con i think that they made mistakes that they should not have made and that it's you know um i i really wish francis would put it up i know why she won't she need to put that shit up i didn't gave away the goddamn secret i didn't gave up the juice i don't know why she won't put it up um, well, you know, she's being, you know, she's been really nice about it. She's being real not. nice. I would not. I would be like, all right, here y'all go. Here's the nuke. Uh, go ask ASJ and Walter about this shit. Yeah. Straight from the horse's um, mouth. Not that, they, yeah. not that they'd uh, agree to say anything about it. They'd be like, no, we're not. It's negativity. Yeah, 
We're not going. We're yeah. not going to address it. Like they go, they go. Don't act like I don't exist. But then probably like this yeah. fucking Henry guy just keeps posting my shit. He keeps putting my yeah. court docs out there. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't think he's ever going to comment on it. I think that you know, I think that he made a huge mistake in walking off like everybody else who did. And um, and I know there's been a lot of comments in the chat about how oh they were treated really badly. That's common for nineties actors oh, you know you ask this your me. first go around like what the hell you expect them to roll out the red carpet for you when you got thousands of other people just waiting to fucking sign and if jdf did hand him money and um you saw the video so you know i trust that what you're saying is true um then that's something jason didn't have to do he didn't he did, have he, to hand him he money. did not have to give him the money he could have just said no fuck you i'm not i'm not paying you money uh, if yeah. people, uh oh, I gotta drop you down, Sam. Okay, go ahead. I got a, I got a big dog back here. Roof, roof. I see. Hey, <laughs> put your, put your clothes on, Francis. Goddamn, she, she over here grabbing titties and shit. So, all right. Thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate Thanks. your contributions. Uh, Brent, right. sit, sit tight, Brent. I see you back there. But we gotta bring up Francis because she, she, she like hello. Hey guys, I'm sick. Love so. my life. I'm still like dying. Hey, but. what's what's going on, man? How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what's up, bro? Bro, uh, <laughs> I know. I sound like a bro. So Go what ahead. what did you think of all of this stuff? And uh where do you want to start? Oh my god, you put you you digged so deep. You um, dig, bro. You brought you like a lot of dig. things. Fucking no, like, no pink spandex sitting on a fucking go, and she just like she put out the fight part, and that part you like. I, if it wasn't for actor O two, we never would have had it. I'm like, whoa, 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 where is this shit at with the, the strike? Because no one wants to talk about the strike. They do the little fucking fluff video, but no one wants to give specific because details. This is this is why, right? People don't want the truth out. People want to keep the facade that they're this way when they're not um it's easy to put out a video now saying oh well you know jason frank and amy joe and david yost they backstabbed us that's basically what i understood i saw that i saw that stupid fan word video which made me want to throw up um so let's be honest like it's it's okay now to say something because Jason's not here. Amy Jo um, probably doesn't even know they exist at this point. <laughs> or care, care. That's the truthful statement. And then David Yost, um, I think he's just unbothered. I, I think he has more important things to do to than to like be like you guys are lying. Um, I think there's a lot of interviews of from Jason from Amy Joe, even from David himself, himself that say, like, Austin was a liar, made up stories. They never wanted to leave. Think about it. Jason already had his, you know, first son. I believe he's already on his way to the second son when when everything went down. He had a he had a family. He wasn't just gonna lose everything. You know what I mean? I think he was very he was a very smart businessman. Mm -hmm. um, even till the end of his life, right? So hearing that video, I don't know. You didn't play the whole thing, right? I don't, I, uh, I, I, I play. I, I jumped around. It's about an hour. Yeah, well, I saw at least like 20 minutes of it or something. But um, they sound like they're lying. D d I, I don't even know how to explain it, right? Like you can tell when someone's a liar. And what's sad is when you're a liar and you believe your lies. Hey, that's a pathological liar at yes, that point. Like you have a mental illness if you believe your lies, right? So when you're to the point like Austin, who has been a liar since he was young, okay, at first you could be like, well, he made up these lies, you know, because he was young. But there's also like a limit to your lie. Like if I make up a lie, like, hey, Henry, you know, today, I wore, you know, a yellow shirt because I wanted to, you know, to a triangle or whatever, like some bullshit lie, right? <laughs> right? But like to make up a lie that you killed someone in the ring 
on their birthday. On their birthday with like one hand or tied behind your back. <laughs> like, you know, oh my God. That is like <laughs> the most craziest thing. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to lie, at least make it believable. You know what, well, I mean? like, what do you want them to do? What do you want them to do? Tell the truth and say, hey, well, I never I fought. Mean, Sometimes. Like they're telling the truth because you could be like, yo, I, you know, Henry, I got in a fight today and I dragged the girl and I beat her up and I broke a finger. Like, you know what I mean? That's kind of. See, here's the thing, right? Sometimes a lie can get out of hand. You tell a lie and then someone overhears the lie and you're like, fuck, now I got to keep the lie going. And then the person may pass and they say the lie on YouTube and then I'm digging up the lie like, wait, wait, you killed the guy on his birth on his birthday in the ring? And, Where's and the set? The problem is that I know that there is an interview from way back, way back, um, and where he mentions the story. No way. I think there is. I don't know if it's Jason that mentions the story or if it's him, or he's responding to Jason. Holy shit! The story. Holy I, shit. I mean, I'll do some digging. I've been kind of out of it. Um, the last few weeks. But. What do you think about this? Dust said the only thing Austin killed was his career. I agree. I agree. I think. I really think if he would have, I'm gonna go back and Brent's probably gonna come back and be like, ah, ah, ah. I think if he would have listened to Jason, if they all would have listened to Jason and done that stupid reunion con, they would have been up there still and they wouldn't have he wouldn't have needed to steal from the government <laughs> and or allegedly steal from the government right? God, oh, um because shit. he would have been making that money let him cook um at cons and he would have had people willingly and happily give him that money right because now if you go, if you go to the real comments, right? Not the ones that he deletes and his team. <laughs> um, there are cooking. people that are, up, are upset about paying eighty to hundred dollars for his autograph. What? Because they feel swindled and cheated. If you come to, a, if I go to a line, and I'm seeing this person who's upbeat and happy and having this conversation with me, and entertaining the line. And yes, I'm giving up $100, but I'm also getting a good experience, a free photo, free autographs, free cards. Jason had dog tags. Jason had all this stuff. I would gladly give it, right? But when you go from 60 to 120 in two months because you're pending jail time, like, don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, you're, Bad boys, I would, bad boys. I don't, so you, you want people do? to leave happy from your line so they could come back. So you can have repeated persons, you people, so you can have that connection. There is no connection. Have you been to this page? I don't know how fans say they're connected to this man. Fan word, I saw this video, okay? And it is cheesy. Like, more cheesy than the Power Ranger shows, right? <laughs> cheesy, really bad acting. Um... You know, he said he keeps mentioning the whole time. He's being really nice about it. Like Walter's being really nice. Yeah, about why it. the fuck you won't you be mean about it then? Hey, well, interject. Okay, like, Walter's saying a little too nice talk about it. And like you let me pop shit. off. Like talk shit because I would respect you more. I mean, I would probably be on here like Austin, you're talking shit. Like don't don't talk shit. But like he's like, oh, he's really being sweet about it. He's really really nice about it. What I saw in that video is. He egged Walter on. Walter fell for the trap, and Walter talked shit. Mm, yeah, in in my opinion, and and he, I, I even feel like Walter was uncomfortable. There, there was like a clip at a point that he was like, you know, well, you know, everyone had had a, a stuttering. Everyone had a reason why they they didn't go ahead with yeah. this. Yeah, he was trying to save face but also trying to please Austin. I wouldn't be surprised if Austin was the one that wanted to make that video. Oh, shit. Hot water because of the whole Zach thing. I mean, yes, people have forgotten about it, but, you know, it's still in people's heads. So I wouldn't be surprised if Walter got uh, tricked into that video, to be honest. 
Wow. Wow. Now, can you speak on the recording? Did I did I make anything up? Was I lying? Was I flying? Did you I did are, You weren't lying per se. You weren't lying, but there uh, uh, Jason didn't mention the fight. Right? The and and it wasn't when he mentioned the fight, the fight wasn't supposed to happen when when the video when the recording happened. He was mentioning to Walter like, "Hey, there was a point when I wanted to fight Austin when it was, you know, they were hot in their game. You know, they were offering us both each 25,000. Um, I could have used that money at the time for my family. And that's what Jason said bothered him because, you know, Austin, not only did Austin say like, no, like he didn't answer him. Like he even said like, Hey, I need that money. You know, I need that money for my kid for my kids or for my family, whatever was the case at the time. And Austin never responded um, or gave him the time of day. And then think about it as Susan said, oh, they could have done shows together. That's bullshit. Jason wrote to, emailed, and that he also mentions in the recording to Walter, emailed Austin. I remember that. Never yeah. responded. At least if you're a man like he the man he claims to be, he could have responded. Damn. He could have said, hey, Jason, you know, I'm still upset about you talking shit. Because let's be honest, I'm not going to lie just because I love Jason. He talked shit. <laughs> he was popping off. He was popping off left <laughs> and right and instigating left and right, which that was Jason's character. You know what I mean? He was a martial artist. It really bothered him that Austin would pop shit about how he killed people in the ring when it was BS, right? So Jason was didn't really like lying, like things like that, like like lying for no reason type of thing, right? And then, you know, you know, people are saying that he lied about his service and you know, he's all this stuff and all that was known by Jason, right? And 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 he never mentioned it out in the public, but you know, when you keep hearing that this person's lying and lying and lying. So I know that Jason mentioned it in the in the recording, like, you know, he could have helped me. He didn't answer my email. It's kind of like practice what you preach, because Austin was preaching a lot of stuff like, no, it's him, it's him, it's him. But then there, you know, we would be at a show and people would contact us about how Austin's at another show talking about other people that own Mac Dojos and blah, 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 blah. When, you know, referring to Jason. So, um, I mean, I think, I really think that uh, that recording, as much as I want it released, <laughs> and, I, and I know everyone's like, release it, release it, release it. I, I, I think it leaves certain people in bad light. And I don't, I don't want to do that. Well, well, you know, what if you get hacked? You never know. You can get well, hacked. I, hack. I mean, people have. <laughs> Anything I else that. you want to add? Um, that I want to add. Or do you want to talk to Brent? I mean, you could bring Brent up. You know, everybody loves a good me. All right. I mean, my voice is shot, so I can't argue too he, much. He's waiting. It. I see flames in his I goddamn know. eyes. I was hearing, first of all, <laughs> I was th- before you bring him up, Jesus. Prepare yourself. Uh, <laughs> Brent, I, I, I really, I feel like sometimes I take one step up, two step forwards with Brent, but then three steps back. Um, Jason's gone. Like he's gone, uh, and uh, we're stuck with what he said. He can't back up what he said even more so than what he did. But I can tell you this: from the beginning, I met Jason in 2012 till the you know the end of his life. He never changed those stories. Mm-hmm. He said the exact same thing. He said said the exact same details. He never. It you know it's not like. Like me, I have really bad memory, right? So I could tell you something and then I'd be like, oh shit. Yeah, I I forgot that this happened. But no, Jason knew like this was like the same story over and over. He would always (laughs) say it, always. So like, I don't, I don't think Jason lied. Um, And I think with time we're, we're seeing that he wasn't really a liar. I mean, 
you're being accused of stealing from the government. I, I don't know. I don't know what else, how, how you could save yourself from that. Your yeah. Boy, all this- uh, all these girls is try- sliding in my DMs and shit. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I see, what? I see, uh, Cheyenne, knee, sticky Vicky. Uh, what's sticky Vicky got to say real quick. What's going on? Sticky Vicky. Where you been? Your mic is muted. You going to unmute yourself. Yeah. She's muted. All right, we got to drop her down. She don't know what she's doing. You know, <laughs> you unmute yourself. <laughs> she like, ah. You you got to unmute yourself. I missed you. <laughs> I missed you. I've been traveling a lot, hanging out with this girl. Oh, okay. All right. I you, do. You got to mute the TV because you, you got. You, I did. Oh, got, we're not the same thing. I get it. Yeah, so. there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, what did you think of all you, this? Did you, you just get here? Yourself. All right. She she got it. Did I now? I missed you. <laughs> all right. We got it. We got it. We got to drop Sticky Vicky. Come on, Brent. Come cook. All right. Oh. We got we got Brent up here. This is the you know. With, Brent, first before you talk shit, where are you? In his I'm at mansion. The Got it. He at yeah. he at the office. <laughs> he, he he at the office. All right. Now we have the floor, Brent. What did you think about the million dollars per episode? I I don't think they asked for that. I think that's an exaggeration. Um, because million dollars per episode, that's a lot. Okay. And I don't think they des- I don't think they deserve that. Maybe a million per season. Maybe, maybe. All right, that's a bit. That's a bit much. I like that you at the but office. I can see why they would want million per season, especially after the first season. Maybe. Okay. I, but can, per episode, no way. Can I make a request that you adjust your camera to move your head just a little bit up? Like this. Perfect. Yeah, oh, too hot. Perfect. You're perfect. Now we're good. Now we're good to go. Uh, so, what would you like to say to Francis about anything that happened about Walter shaking down JDF for some money at a comic con? He didn't shake uh, well, shake- what what the hell happened, Francis? Why did why well, did JDF I mean, count out the money and say, "Hey, well, stop telling people paid. I blocked you. Stop telling people I blocked you." Because I'm not the only one asking for the the recording. Uh, well, people well, on the well, well. Are asking for you it. think I'm lying? You think I'm lying that JDF no. paid him some money to stop telling people he blocked them? I don't think them? so, but people need to hear the want to hear the recording and. Um, you might leave stuff out, like with the the fanware video. You left some stuff out. You didn't address everything, but I mean, people need to decide for themselves uh, about the. Who recording. didn't address everything? What, what did I leave out the fanware video? About the lawyers and how they, the lawyers. That ha- that's a that's a important detail. Now, Francis, you 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 forgot about the lawyers, right? How they got the lawyer. No, what? no, I did. I know they did get the lawyer. What does that have I mean, to do with anything? But, the lawyer talked no, no, about no, the biggest opportunity of their fucking life. No, no, but what I'm saying is that um, if people hear the whole recording, they can determine what's important and what's not important. Like they, they don't have to rely on my opinion or your opinion or Francis' opinion. And mm-hmm. but, it's, but it's still their they can opinion. for themselves. I it's mean, still their opinion though. <laughs> like they're saying their side of the story, how they saw it, right? How they perceived it. But then if we go and contact David Yost, I'm 100% sure he's going to tell you different. I'm 100% Amy's going to tell you different. You know, Jason, we can't ask him, but like, I'm sure they'll be like, mm, that's not how I want. You know what I mean? So, yes, I'm pretty sure they got lawyers because they wanted more money and they were young. They didn't know. They didn't have the experience but to like. Hold on. Negotiate. What do you think about how I'm offering them more money and them turning it down? Where everyone else thought that, oh, they never were offered any more money. They said in the video, yeah, they came back with a new offer, but it was a joke. And they never revealed the new offer. Are you going to ask Austin St. John about that? What was the new offer? I could, yeah. I mean, um, I, I don't know how much time I have, but I could ask him about that. Yeah. What do you think about him killing someone in the ring on their birthday? You going to ask him about that? Okay, so... <laughs> regarding the killing of the ring, I'll ask him, did you kill someone in the ring? And he might, what I speculate he might say is like, what I meant by killing someone in the ring is like, when you kill someone, you, you, you dominate them. You kill okay. them. Like, he said, tombstone dead, gone. Okay. And, or he could say, oh, yep, I lied. And because um, he ain't going to say I lied. He would not say he lied. He would not say he lied. He'll say, Brent, he'll Brent, say, if you, if you ask him, I will probably like, 
die of laughter if you. He will die. say Jason lie because dead man tells no tales. And shout out to famous Dia with the. I think she just hit a half a million on TikTok. Yeah, you know I'm saying she's checking in with the common folk. She telling all y'all. Get your money up, not your funny up. She really got her funny up and got her money up. Shout out to famous Dia, and then she got a Patreon too, guys. Um, I know I'm not I'm not on the Patreon, but I was on that comedy thing that you was on. Uh, what she say? Yo, Henry the man just toppings to show some love. I'm I'm going on tour soon. You better buy a ticket when I. Hey, you know what, Dia? For for facts, facts. If you come close to me, I will buy a ticket. We would do a meet and greet. And, and the only going to cost you this $5 super chat. I'm a cheap date. Salute to Dia. Stopping by. Uh, thank you, Dia. Um, but we got to get back to uh, the lies or not lies. The alleg- What about uh, Sylvester Stallone's stunt double? Did he ever tell you anything about that, Brent? No, um, you know so, I've never heard that. This is the first time I heard. See, I've heard I to- that. look. No pink spandex is sitting on a mountain of gold that she's scared to drop for fear of ruining whatever business prospects she has lined up. And I don't know why she bleeped out his real name, and I don't know why she didn't put out that whole interview. And I know well, damn know well she's ago. watching this goddamn stream. Henry, that was a long time ago. Um, probably when. When was that? Was it 2015? 14? I don't know. When was that? It was was a long time ago. I'm sure (laughs) she was respecting Austin's decision. to. Yeah. Now, look at this. She jumped over fucking hoops and bounds to respect his decision, and he won't even give her a goddamn interview. So all that shit was for nothing. It was in vain. Hopefully you see in this, uh, Lisa. Come on on to the channel. Chop it up. You know, you're still welcome here, girl. Uh, but anywho, anywho. Um, Good team today, Brent. He is, very, <laughs> he is very quiet. He is very quiet. He's <laughs> because his, his, th- his thing is probably he got to strategize how he can attack. We're waiting on you, Brent. We're waiting on you to pounce on some type of discrepancy, yeah, inconsistency. Cool. You're not asking me anything. Well, so. what, what stood out to you about today's live stream? If anything, I was surprised you actually paid the membership. Well, I didn't pay. I did not pay. Oh, I'm surprised you actually watched it. I watched the whole whole video. Mm -hmm. I took notes and I did every I was like, let me make sure I I dot my I's, cross my T's. Um, It was nothing new in there that stood out to me and they will never be bigger than the franchise. And I do think it was a cash grab. And some people, you know, took the bait. It is a cash grab, Henry, because any streaming service, whether it's uh, their fan word or whatever, they're looking for for clicks and to to cash in, and that's especially them. <laughs> uh, their 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 marketing techniques are very um, looking for clicks and and getting memberships. But and you, I don't know why do that's so that, outrageous. <laughs> do you <laughs> think that this was strategic? Like, I mean, I was asking myself when. When Henry, I, I've been off social media for like, what, three weeks now. But when Henry told me about that video, I was like, why now? Right. Why did they submit that video now when they've had thousands of opportunities to, to say their side of the story? It's the 30th yeah. anniversary. What? No, the 30th anniversary has been passed. What are you talking about? No, 30th anniversary of when they walked off. They walked off in 94. It's now 2024. And that's probably oh, why they did it. Oh, that, so you you mind reading over there. You, you speculate. I mean, I'm just speculating. We're, I mean, I don't know for sure, but that, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. It's the 30th anniversary. So they have an excuse to release it now versus later or now here, you you said that uh david yost was never part of it he was like either we all do it or i'm not doing it you said there were four and a half members who were on board with the strike correct okay. yes or no okay so let me let me let's let's back up a little bit so um was it whoa, 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 i'm at whoa, whoa, LA, whoa, whoa. I'm, was it I'm four and a half comic members comic. was it a yes or a no that four and a half members were with the strike and then we'll let you explain Okay, so um, I spoke with David Yost. What? And- you didn't answer the question.
question. You're talking around it. It's hey. Yes or no? Was it four and a half members who were with the strike? Yes or no? Who wanted to? Who wanted to? Who wanted to leave? So that's a strike, right? Yeah. So yes, correct. Yes. Four and a half. Not everyone. There were six people. Four and a half were always yes. And the four, yes, but the four and a half, he didn't explain what that was, and we have to speculate what he means by well, that. Well, JDF said he was never a part of that shit. Okay, so I'm assuming he's the one person. So at half a person, you have to assume they're okay with both options of staying or wanting to leave, right? Sure. Are we going to assume that? Yeah, we can assume that. We can assume that. So we don't know who that person is. So if, if, if it's four and a half, if David Yo says it's four and a half, that them saying we all agree is a is a false statement, is a misleading statement. No, no, no. Uh, so they l- l- let's back up a little bit. So they they might have agreed in the beginning, um, before they entered negotiation. They might have said, um, "We're going to negotiate together as a team." And then after the negotiations happened, I, I I told David like, "So three and a half, uh, three people wanted to leave right after negotiations." He's like, "Nope." I was like, "Oh wow." Uh, four and a half and i was like oh my god uh, that's why don't you just say five but that's not my aunt that's not my answer that's his answer oh, let me tell you something david has a very dry sense of humor so he could have been just fucking with you just so you know so someone said amy joe was the half he never said i have to be very careful he never said amy joe was the half or jason frank was the half or he Himself was the half. We have well, to be Jason was the one. He was like, "Fuck y'all." Okay, I'm well, doing I mean, it he never own. said that. Okay, I, I get, I get you. I get what you're saying. He never said it, so we can only speculate, right? That it was either David Yost or Amy Joe, right? Okay. And he said four and a half after negotiations. Four and a half wanted to leave, but something happened between when uh, something happened where uh, so, uh, the because the strike didn't happen, like everybody didn't come together. Um, he felt it wasn't going to be good enough. To okay. Sway the, the half, the, the one person or whatever, okay. or the producers. Now, Francis, you were with JDF for a lot of his career. Did he ever talk to you about why people left? Well, well why the, th- the three people left, why the three people left, why the three people stayed. He ever share anything like that? Well, yes, he did. I mean, I think he was very vocal with everyone but like i really feel like maybe and like brent said in the beginning they're like oh let's negotiate but the minute i'm sure 100 percent sure i can almost put my hand on fire that the minute that jason saw that they were kind of like what you know he probably was like "Eh, i don't want to do it right like i'm not going to lose business because i do remember that he would say that he said during that time whoever would be rowdy they would put on like they would cast someone who would literally be like like that ricky guy would wear red you know just in case steve cardenas got out of line you know ricky that ricky oh. guy would steve cardenas. okay so it's almost like oh you want to leave oh you're you want okay. more money me, so S- saban me. was playing mind tricks on the yeah. cast he was he say Brent is the yellow ranger and you know um Francis is the green ranger I'm the red ranger he'll have body doubles on set lingering around just in case Brent want to get fly we'll put in a Timu version of Brent or we'll get the wish version of Francis and we'll get them we'll get them in there like they did true in that one scene where it's like that wasn't twee um no no I, no, no, no. I, what I mean is like I don't know if you remember Maybe Brian, we could correct me. I think his name was Ricky. He worked at the, the juice bar. You there were episodes where you they constantly oh, the character. The side character because that Ricky side character, um, Jason told me was there because Steve was getting out of line or something like that, to kind of remind him, like, you're replaceable. We're replaceable. Uh, so he like, was just so, so it was, was almost like they would, you know, they would be like, oh, you want more money? We'll have someone ready for you. You know what I mean? Ready to replace you. Like, look at what happened with Aisha and what's and Tanya. Tanya was there to like, rep- you know what I mean? She was shipped to Africa and Tanya was there already. At, <laughs> oh, you know, shit. First base. Yeah. So yeah. I, think, I think that um, Jason was too smart of a businessman to, to fall for I, the. He probably, yeah, he probably would have been the, the first one out. Um. And 
David probably would have been the second one out. And then Amy probably was like, ah. but the minute that David and Austin and Jason were like, nope, she was like, ah, I'm going with them. Yeah, because Amy Jo Johnson did follow a lot of Jason's uh, moves. He was the leader. She was she was right behind. But this is this has been an interesting night. Brent has been very tame. Maybe he's <laughs> he's matured. Maybe he is oh, he's seeing yeah. the light. It's um, he's in the office. He can't like go he, off. No, nobody's he's, here. He's, everybody's he's, gone for the night. So. See, the CEO always works late, guys. This is millionaire <laughs> Brent right here. You know, he comes early, leaves late, um, and he goes to Power Rangers on a private jet on his weekends off. <laughs> So I am. Um, you see how he laughs. He, he, just, he doesn't he say no. You see, he didn't say no. He's like, no, nah, I didn't say no, but I didn't say yes either. So I'll be. He, I'm sure he's. Re- I hope you got your list and you ready to approach Austin and Walter with these hard hitting questions because Walter. Email me. Email me, uh, Henry. All right, I'll email you the Question. questions. Um, now, when Francis, let's go back. At, you know, in the time, right? And maybe I'll drop I'll drop Brent down because Brent Brent pretty quiet today. He he a little tame. I mean, what do you want me to talk about? I'm I'm being patient. I'm waiting. Uh, <laughs> He's waiting for me to drop a bomb or something. We we got to drop a bomb when I'm I'm about to fucking drop a bomb when Walter was accusing Jason of blocking him at Comic Cons. Can you speak on that? You keep bringing up that. Tape, but I'm not trying to bring it up. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. That I mean that's the last thing. Okay. Uh, Walter already hates me anyway, so I don't care. You All right. You well, you should release it. <laughs> Diane's, Diane's like, release the tape. Release the tape. over here telling me to release it. Dust, okay. like, release the tape, release the tape. Um, how, were, were there other people accusing JDF of blocking them at Comic Cons? Yeah, everyone did. And what was the real reason why they wasn't getting booked at Comic Cons? Okay. Um, there are two reasons, right? Mm-hmm. One would be the stupid guarantees. Like, let's be 100% honest. They were asking for guarantees when they didn't need to ask for guarantees, right? So you're going to a show like New York Comic Con, and you're, first of all, they couldn't even get into New York Comic Con. Like, like it was super hard for Jason to get to New York Comic Con anyways. Um. For you to go to like a very popular show, let's not even talk about New York Comic Con, that's really big. But let's say uh, Philadelphia, right? Mm-hmm. A show like Philly or something like that. And you're asking for a $2,000, $3,000 guarantee. What are you telling the show? You're telling them you can't make two to 3000 So that's what Jason in the in the audio you hear him stop asking for stupid guarantees because you're gonna make your money anyways <laughs> Are you asking a con for like that's embarrassing for a three thousand five thousand dollar guarantee you're telling them that one you don't believe in yourself two you don't make money you're not a draw so why should we pay for your, this is me acting like a con owner right why should i pay for your flight which a lot of times they ask for first first class mm-hmm. um they, why should we play your flight, your hotel? If you bring an agent, your f- agent's flight in his hotel or her hotel, and then also pay you a guarantee, or at least have that pending that if you don't make that two thousand dollars, tell the whole truth. We have all to the give time. you that too. You're not worth it. You're not worth it to a con. You're a liability to a con. So that's why they weren't booking. And let's be honest, Zach had his ways that it was like you're booking all my people or you're not booking any of them. So some people are like, well, I don't want to book X, Y, Z. So we're not booking. Yeah. I forgot about that. And then also like, you know, I mean, if you have a bad rep, you have a bad rep. Like I know certain Rangers. I'm I'm not going to talk about other actors because that's not my place, but certain Ranger actors were banned from shows because of the way they acted or because a one con owner, talk to another con owner about how they were wasted on the con floor. You know what I mean? It's just a lot. Everyone talks. I would love to know who got banned. You know me, I'm a name name type of guy. Blue character. It was a blue but, character. But, um, you know, it's just a lot, a lot. Of, and, and let's be honest, like, like Brent has said, agents, an agent, if they feel the, a lot of the contracts, it's like if you have one ranger, I don't want any other ranger in the show if you can have my ranger. And, you know, and there were times that, yes, 
that was an automatic thing and contracts made by agents, right? Um, so Jason being the bigger draw and no, being honest, they would choose Jason over anyone else. You know what I mean? They would choose Jason over anyone else because Jason had the draw. And like, if there was a person or something that like personally, I wouldn't want to work with someone that I'm uncomfortable with. So who do you think? I would be like, I don't want to work with him or I don't want him at the show or, you know. Well, 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 Samson, you don't want someone at the show is a low key black ball. No, no, no. I'm not saying that Jason. <laughs> I'm saying that that is what started happening when Austin came on. Oh, like, you know, like oh, well, I don't want to work with this guy, or I'm avoiding J- Jason Frank, or you know, and vice versa. So that there was a lot of a lot of that going on, and you know, there were times that Jason was was blackballed because um, Zach had all the Rangers. So if you have a ranger show, you're going to want the most rangers. Not uh, only so Zach can say, oh. look, I got four rangers. Either you book us and not JDF or you book JDF and not us. Correct. It's a da- dangerous, dirty game out here, Brent. You see this shit? And Brent about to go support ASJ, right? Right. Because um, <laughs> I contacted uh, the owner of the Comic-Con of Power Morphicon. His name's Scott. Uh-huh. And he says uh-huh. that um he is no longer in contact with Zach and he is and he's they he didn't Zach has not booked any guests at his con. So um at okay. least for the local con and then the power morphicon, we don't have to worry about Zach McGinnis booking anybody. Okay. Oh, I, I, know. I know, right? They they talk that talk like no, nah, we ain't working with Zach. We no, working no, no. with Austin, because, but Austin no, no. still get but Zach still get a also, cut because yeah. he signed to Zach. So yeah, sure. Technically, we cut him out the booking process, but contractually, Austin still got to give a cut to Zach. Because yeah, if Austin, if let me tell you something, if Zach is still his agent, no matter what, he has to give him a cut. Mm. How do you feel about that, Brent? Well, I haven't seen Austin since December, um, so. I'm going to ask him and people think, oh, you're not going to ask Ash. Oh, oh, oh I know. Brent is definitely going to fucking ask, ask him. Y'all. him. I've been at Kazi and, like. And I talked to Austin. I, t- I told him straight to his face. Um, I'm not buying anything from you because you have, and, until you don't have Zach booking your, your events, then if that event's booked by Zach, I won't buy from you. And I made that very clear with him. And um, yeah. all right well look we got a super chat from chanzo my brother from another mother he said hi brent hi francis jdf would have karate kicked any man they would have brought in with uh long flowing hair to possibly replace him so jdf was like no one's replacing me no no but you know he did say i mean you know jason was he was like well i don't remember where why it came up maybe it was because of the whole austin thing when they when Susan and and Austin's minion were like red is the new green. Um, Jason did say, well, if you go back and look at the show, there was never a character in green or white. In ah. my there was never a side character that was there to replace me or scare me. But, you know, Walter, I think there was a another character that was there to like replace Zach, Ricky, like there was always someone in the sidelines but never for Jason or Kimberly until, you know, Amy decided to leave. So you know, unfortunately David did have someone always but but not not Jason or Amy. Okay. All right. I saw that interview. It was uh, at San Diego Comic Con. He did that interview in 2018. God damn, I Brent's a him. historian out here. I, I saw that interview. Yeah, yeah. He talked about Zio. It was the Zio. Um, and then he was like, I'm blessed. He he started shading like Tui Trang and Austin. He didn't and, shade Tui. He loved Tui. Uh, well, you know, but, shading but, is something. No, is he was subjective. About, you know, let me let me tell you about shade, right? He was, I'm gonna be honest, he was upset with Tui. Um, that she sided with with them and and left the show because i can tell you he always said that out of 
everyone Tui had a lot of potential. He's like Tui was, you know, yes, she was a fragile girl, but she had so much potential and she had such like a dynamic like aura to her. He's like, I was very upset that she left because I I don't know if I told you the story that a few years later she was his waitress when he was out with Haim Saban. She was their waitress. And he was like, I was so embarrassed to even order something from her that he left. Damn. What's wrong with being your waitress? No, no, no. no, no. no, no. It's, just, it's like, imagine seeing your friend that you were imagine. side by side with, and then you go to a restaurant, and then they're serving you what to make you? ends meet while you're you an actor. You know? If we're friends, it doesn't matter what job they have. Well, but that, you know, that's how I feel. Like, if, if no, she's no, a waitress, it's not about the job. It's not about the job. That's a very dignified job. It's the fact that they were once equal characters at a show working together and now she's serving him water and like he's like hey get me water like he just didn't want to disrespect her like that and feel like it's embarrassing like he said that she looked embarrassed to be waiting on Haim Saban and him did Jason see her did, did, did she see Jason yeah yes yes how do you oh, wow. how do you not see him at the, if you bringing him water and shit so he they he he actually I remember he said I think he said that he made he told them like let's go somewhere else and they went somewhere else. Yeah, she had so much potential and you see her wasting her talent away, busting fucking tables because she wanted to follow the fake ass Jerry Maguire off the show. Agreed. Well, I so, mean, who's coming I mean, with I, me? To be honest, I'm sorry. I would not believe, I would not follow someone. <laughs> I made up a story about killing someone in the ring on their birthday. A fucking like, high school dropout too. So like, we get, we got to throw that in the mix. Like um you think I'm going to take legal advice or take anything that's going to affect my life with someone See, that's obviously a liar? Here's the thing I don't get y'all. If they were making so much money on the weekends doing appearances at car shows and craft shows, why not do the show and then the craft shows offset what you don't make on the show? Kind of like what JDF did. I don't care about the money I'm making at Power Rangers because guess what? As soon as this shit's over, I'm going to go on the contour and I'm going to make double, triple of what I probably could have made while they were paying me. And guess what? The, the shows are giving me the fame. They're boosting me up. That is going to, in turn, bring in new customers. They didn't see right, but honey, you have to understand, JDF was a, his character is iconic, and he's a, mo uh, your, your a viewers, they get shocked when I say this. Would have stayed. You think Jason wouldn't have been an iconic character if he would have stayed? He would have been, I feel like he would have been just as iconic as, as the Green Ranger. Oh, like, 100%. You no, know, if Austin, I said Jason, I if know. Austin would have stayed as Jason for as long as Jason stayed as Tommy, he would have been as iconic. Right, I, of course. And, you know, because and with Zach. people look for uh, continuity. And um, when Austin left, it broke up the, the chemistry of the team. And you see this in um, the, the, the movie. You see this when, um, when they got to Turbo. J everybody left. Or, everybody was fired. Uh, JDF left early. And I feel like if uh, Austin stayed and the team stayed together, I feel like um, the show would have lasted at least until in space, where and then uh, Austin's character kills Zordon, and then then they get uh, re uh, replaced by new people. I felt like that would have been um, everybody would have benefited from that, but instead, what happened was um, three leave, and then four, and then five, and then eventually everybody left. By the end of tur uh, the middle of Turbo and um, the but it middle of Turbo that was already a long time right on the show. I feel like we all agree and even Austin and Walter agree they messed up. They should have stayed on the show. If they would have stayed on the show, they would have been. They'd have been superstars. Better. And I'm gonna use uh, Walter's favorite word. They would have been wealthier. You know what I mean? Like because they all ganged up on Jason because he was wealthy, but Jason was wealthy because he made better decisions, better business decisions. He used the show 
to build his karate schools to continue, you know, continue making not even money, just continue making a career, a life out of the show. Who there like it it doesn't matter. I mean, he's gone, but even that, even now that he's gone, his character is still so popular. People are still mentioning him, even though he's been passed for a year. It's just gonna be that it's not he's not replaceable, right? And Austin would have been that. Walter would have been that. There, please name how many black characters are superheroes. It was just him and Static Shock at the time. Exactly, and now Static Shock came second. Second, look, now we have Black Panther, and Chadwick Boseman died, but he's still iconic because he is that male black figure. And Walter, if he would have stayed, would have been that original in my opinion. And he, he messed up because he thought about, they were thinking about the now and not the future. Facts. Jason was a person that talked about, thought about the future. Let and him that's cook. why he had longevity. I remember he, every time we used to go shows and that's why like when you put that, that interview with Susan, so many things relived in my mind ah. during those times that he would tell me, Francis, don't stress out. Don't worry about it. Um, it's about the marathon. Who could run the marathon? We, he used to tell me, we could run the marathon. They won't. And it's, and that's exactly what happened. Austin was at first asking for 25 to 50,000 a guarantee. So now I'm hearing he's asking for three, two, two, three, two to 5,000. Like that's a big Damn. drop. Right? A big drop if he gets it. So like you, they were, he messed up on the con, on the con world too. They were thinking about quick money, not the long term. How they could have made money, how they could have been more made. Not even let's not even think about money, right? Because money is important. But if they would have listened and done the show like Jason wanted, they would have had more people. They would have left a bigger impression on everyone. Um, what can I tell you? Like, why would Jason go back to the sh- the reunion shows? What did he say? I go back, not because they didn't, let's be honest, they didn't pay them well. But he's like, you know what? I'm going back to the 20th anniversary. I'm going to have new pictures, which he did. I'm going to go back to the 25th anniversary. I'm going to have more content. I can build more from my appearances. No one thought about that. What did they think? Because, and and they can't lie to me because in every single email, every single email, I was CC'd in every single email of the negotiations of who said, oh, it's not enough money or I wouldn't do it for X, Y, Z. And what do they, what are they doing now? They're dropping. They're dropping in the con world. They're dropping because they're not connecting with the fans. They're not connecting with the fans because they're not visible. David Yost is connecting with the fans because now he's in the 30th anniversary and then he did uh, Cosmic Fury. But if you don't go to the show or do something relevant or new, you're not connecting. There's nothing that they can, people be like, oh, you know, how many times are they going to get signed the same Red Ranger thing? Ooh, yeah, you how cooking. You cooking. But if he would have came back, I mean, I did. He, I know he came back to that, to a show, but no offense because I'm fat, right? <laughs> he came back to the show unfit, un, you know, unprepared. And what people got from when Austin went back to the show was kind of like, how did he go from big, like bigger to skinny? Like, it, people don't relate that. It's, it, people like made fun of his appearance. So, like, I feel like they should have done the 30th anniversary. He should have done the 20th anniversary. Well, I don't know if he was back from wherever the hell he was but they shouldn't have thought about the money they should have thought about the longevity of making this a career goddamn well said well said let's end it on that note for you but let's sam wanted to come back what'd you have to say sam what'd you think about this Um, i think that um brent needs to look at it from a business point of view um because the thing is is that and Francis is absolutely right. Um, if you don't have anything new, what's the point of me getting something signed a hundred times if you're not relevant? Um, and that's the thing about Jason that Austin, Walter, and them don't have is um, 
they're not part of anything. They, they haven't done anything new. You know, you don't see Austin St. John in a movie or um, doing anything relevant. And that's, you know, Jason, at least, you know, he was the king of cons. You know, that was his title. You go to see the, the king of cons. <laughs> um, so even after he was no longer, you know, Tommy Oliver, he was still relevant to the fans. Um, you know, and if you don't have that kind of charisma, and I know Brent's going to be like, oh, no, that's, you know, he's going to say something. Um, we'll give him the Jason, floor. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep, cook, keep cooking, yeah. saying. Um, if you don't have the charisma to be with your fans and talk to them and be, you know, make it worth it. Um, like I understand actors, musicians, all that. If you go and bother them while they're having lunch and they're pissed, you know, I can understand that. But if we're going to a con, if we're paying our money, we're paying for your time. We're paying for your experience. So it better be worth, I don't care if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, it better be worth my money. Um, because that's your job. You know, when you're at a con, that's your job. All right. And we're well, let's let Brent interject. Let's let's give him his space to talk. Do you think they messed up, Brent? Uh, they could you clarify who's they? Uh, Austin St. John, Twee, and Walter by leaving the show. Um, no, because um, we're inter- no because Stand I understand the J the the business at, like. Sans thinks I don't, I, I absolutely understand it. But at the same time, people have different priorities and different value sets. And um, they, they seem to value making money in the short term. And maybe JDF have different visions. But the whole point of the video is not that Jason David Frank had different vision. If, if he said from the beginning, I don't want to be a part of this. I am confident in my abilities to be the leader or whatever. I have absolutely no problem with that. But the issue with the video, the whole reason that the entire video, which is the topic of this stream, the reason why it was made is because according to Austin and Walter, they all agreed to act as a unit. And when you, as Jason David Frank says, when you give someone your word, you have to honor it. I'm paraphrasing. And, um, that's a whole different story than what Jason presents. In the San Diego Comic-Con interview in 2018, uh, Jason talks about Zio and how there were like replacements waiting in the shadows. He also discussed about, he, he pretends that he, I'm just blessed to have a job. Um, I don't want to be involved in helping those um, other Let people. Him cook. I'm just worried about myself. And if he truly took that approach, there's absolutely no, nothing wrong with that. Let, let's just make that very clear. But that's not the discussion that we're having. What the discussion that we're having is that Jason give his agree to act as a unit. And that makes a, 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 a huge difference because also in the fan where you interview, they talk about a lawyer, how they got a lawyer and how everyone agreed, according to Austin and Walter, that yes, um, we will we'll meet with a lawyer. And then when they went on set, all of a sudden um, they didn't want to meet with a lawyer and they were blindsided. And I, that's a huge, that's a huge problem because I didn't hear that. They didn't say. Oh, they didn't oh um, the lawyer. Can, okay. Um, Hold we don't on. have a camera video, but I would love to play it. Trust me, but I know how they watch my fucking channel. Yeah, they would gonna, strike my gonna, shit. You're gonna get you, Henry. They're I know they would, you. they would, they would come for me, and they would, they, they would have a legal ground to stand on. Hold on, sir. Right, right, we'll right, get to you. Um, so nobody's I, so name. let me be very clear again. Um, if Jason said from the beginning, I have a family, and I cannot risk my my career on a strike. If you said it from the beginning and there was no agreement to act as a unit, then absolutely. I, I would tweet what everybody would understand it. Twee would understand that. But right. when you give your word to act as a unit, then you need to stick by it. What if and happens if, if, if you, you change want, your you mind? Sell out, yeah, Brent, if but, but, give them like a million dollars, let's say a side deal. Then that's, you look out after for your family and that's, and I would get that even though it's an unpopular position, I would understand why he would take a side deal after agreeing to be act as a unit, but you have to own up to it. As Matthew Egan says, um, JDF is very transparent about his flaws. Then if 
what ASJ and Austin, if what they're saying is the truth, then just say that, oh, I agreed with them initially, but Haim um, Saman offered me something on the side and I have to look after my family. So yes, I agree with them initially, but I have to look after my family and I did what was best for me and I own it. Okay, that, hold on. Distinction. All right, so he's saying that JDF may have agreed based on ASJ and Walter speaking 100% truth. Uh, Dust came in with a super chat and said, nobody named Carrie weight like Jason David Frank. People saw outside of Power Rangers knew who he was. He did other things. So he was worth more. And I would say he was That's worth more conversation that we're having. I get it. You I know this. But, okay. But listen, Brent, the problem. Hold on, is hold on Francis, Sam, Sam, and then Francis, go ahead. And then we'll bring in okay. actor O2 because he wanted to get a piece. Okay. So I have a question for Brent. How can you guarantee that that is what actually happened? Because we're going off of the, we're talking, the discussion is the fan word video. And right, we're going I'm off of what Austin really? and Walter said. And if that's if, what truly happened, then I could see why they would take issue with Jason and Amy and David. And he called him a backstabber. He called him a backstabber. And if, if what Austin and Walter said is true, then honestly, I would think the same thing. Right. But what if it's not, you know, we're going on. Okay. So the discussion is if they're saying the truth and you're absolutely right. If that's the case. And he was like, yeah, I agree. And then was like, you know what? I'm not feeling it. Understandable. And yeah. And Jason, you know, should have owned up, but we're assuming that that is the truth. And the thing is, is that they keep changing their story. You know, you look at the different interviews over the years, and they have a different story every single time. Uh, and but that, but that, sorry, Sam, but that story is consistent with what they're saying. But, but the thing is, have, but some of the stories, like Austin, it might be more, might be meaner, or it might be more um, not so nice. But it, it is consistent with okay. what they're saying in the Canward video. All right, we're not going to go in circles with y'all two. Francis, go ahead, and so then the actor, my, get ready. My thing is right. We don't know at what part of the negotiations the three that stayed back down, right? So we can't say that wholeheartedly, let's say what they're saying is true. We don't know if they, if all six were really like, yeah, let's do it. We're going to do it. But then at some point when the negotiations started, they were like, uh, this is a bad idea. Well, hold on. You know what? things let me interject brent said david yo said four and a half which contradicts walter's walter in austin st john's story so who is telling the truth and who is lying no no henry you keep uh and does say you, how you, could you, you jdf be a backstabber if he was never on board with the strike so so what walter is saying is that everyone initially agreed to act as a unit um that austin st john said this and then after negotiations, four and a half wanted to leave, one and a half wanted to stay. I don't. I okay. Okay. All that. right. Actor O2, O2, chime in. Actor O2, you have the floor. Okay. Well, Francis <laughs> kind of took what I was about to say because let's just say they all, they're all on set and they're like, all right, guys, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. But when they started probably asking for a million dollar grab, and Jay like, whoa, 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 this is not a good idea. Cause Brent, if I ask you, hey Brent, let's go to let's go to Comic Con, right? I'm driving, right? And I'm he and you agreed to come, you give me your word to come in with me. You're in my car. If I start heading down, uh, heading to a cliff, off a cliff or whatever, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep your word with me? Are you gonna come with me? No, you're gonna go. Wait, this is not what we agreed. This you're is a great up. point, Actor O2, bringing up a great point. So, guys, what Actor O2 is saying is initially they all agreed to negotiate, probably true, and then after negotiations, they saw that maybe Austin St. John and Walter and the lawyer was asking for way too much, and they said, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm a, I was agreeing to negotiate as a unit, but the price you're pushing for is making me uncomfortable and I'm not willing to risk my position on a show because you want not a million dollars, but more than what you should, more than what you deserve or I think we deserve. Also, let me add, plus we have an example. Remember the, the original Yellow Ranger was a Latina and she got fired. Why? 
she was asking for too much money. Mm, so they yeah. have an example. Jason has an example already. Wait, 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 wait. And he was he must have been there, or you heard about it or whatever, you know. All right. Yeah, I think he got hired in after. Go, say it again, saying. I think he got hired in after. Yeah. If, oh yeah, you're it. right. He got hired like around the 15th episode. Yeah. So. Um. There you have it, Brent. You got a couple of different scenarios. And maybe when you meet Austin St. John or Walter, you can hone in on this and just ask straight yes or no questions. Hey, did JDF agree? How much were you guys asking for after negotiations? Who was in, yeah, who was that's, out? That's a good question to ask. And um, but even after negotiations, it seemed like Amy uh somebody was uh, okay with staying or leaving, and there was four other people that were willing to leave even after negotiations. Whoa, so, and hold one up. person wanted to stay. So who, who, we don't know who that is. We have to stop, stop talking. We have someone with their first super chat. I got money. April, she says, so oh, this April. is the main reason Brent doesn't like JDF. He thinks he backstabbed them. <laughs> <laughs> the, not the main reason, but. Um. <laughs> A reason, huh? A reason, huh? <laughs> it, I think it's 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 a reason. Um, I think um, the way he talks about the other Rangers, I mean, talking about people's weight, I mean, I think it's very disrespectful, but that's just my opinion. I mean, he was fat. I mean, if someone okay. says you're fat, <laughs> oh, I'm fat. I'm not gonna get mad. Oh, if someone's out of shape and, and oh, the person was in shape and then they're not out of shape, it's it's not and I'm not trying to be like you know, I, I'm fat. So if you be like Francis, you're a fat bitch. Okay, I see myself in the mirror. You're not insulting me. So I don't feel he was fat shaming him. He was saying the truth. Austin was out of shape. He came back was really out of shape. He was really looking scruffy. Like he it, he was just telling it like it is. Let's be honest. To go from the shape that Austin was in during the show to the shape that he is now. It is not the best. He was saying it like it is. If you say, Francis, you're fat. Okay, Brent, I am. I know. I see the mirror. You're not insulting me. Like, I hate, I really, as a fat person, I hate when people are like, oh, that's so bad. I'm fat. You could describe me as fat girl Francis. I don't care. Like, So you, you might be okay. You might be okay with it, which is fair. Because you have a, you're, you're a, str a strong person. Uh, that's There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But um, if, there was someone who took issue with that. Do they have a right to take issue or are they just weak? No, they have a right to take issue, yeah. but like, it's not, I, I don't, it's like, you know, I don't want, it's like, oh, he's, you know, he's talking about his weight. No, he wasn't. He was describing Austin's shape. He was out of shape to be in spandex. Could Austin be in spandex all the way he is? No, he, it's like, I hate when everyone brings that up. Like, oh, cause Austin uh, was talking all about right. his weight. he wasn't. This is tr this is some true statements. All right, actor in uh, saying I'm gonna drop you down, and I gotta bring in my brother from another mother who won a piece of Brent. You know, everyone just taking turns. Oh, we running a chain. We running a train. Now he's a historian too. Chanzo is a historian, so he's up, he's up there with Brent, if you will. Chanzo. Francis Brent, always <laughs> nice to see you guys. <laughs> What would you like to add to the conversation, Chanzo? You you've seen this, the million dollar um per episode, the Walter Jones shakedown, the ASJ ignoring the fight, the JDF being accused of blackballing. Uh you have so, it was so much content tonight. So so much, so much. I actually can't wait to go back and watch all of it consistently. Um so forgive me if I repeat something that somebody has already said. Uh, my thing is, and, and about specifically, and maybe Francis, you can bring some clarity on this. What we forget to acknowledge is that JDF had been fired one time before, and maybe I shouldn't use the word fired. His, he was never supposed to be there long term, right? He came in only knowing that he was going to do 12, 14 episodes. So he had already walked away one time, right? Another thing that we forget to mention is, is that JDF came in with Twee. When he auditioned, Twee was auditioning with him. He's gone and told that story many times where he thought he was auditioning for a girl's part because there were all these girls. And then he actually picked Twee out of a group and then helped her with her kata. And then that audition helped Twee get the role. So he had already come in 
knowing that there was some sort of replacement going on. And he was, uh, I think actor O2 mentioned that even though he came in at episode 17, JDF had gone on record saying he was there the entire time before he even, before he, so he had seen all of these things. What my, and this is just from what I've pieced together from all the interviews that I've seen, what I do believe is that they came to him as a unit, knowing that, and he's even gone on, even when he left in Turbo, they came to him in, as a unit. They called him the golden boy. Nikki and uh, Kat even said that on their Power Rangers playback. JDF was the golden boy. So, mind you, he probably got those, those karate videos. We all remember those cool karate videos from back in the day that he was making nice money on. He, he went on record saying, I made a lot of money off of those karate videos. Austin could have got some of that karate money. He could have made his own individual. If he was a real martial artist, yeah. Yeah, he was a real martial artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I saw, the, I, don't know, I saw the shade. But hey, Walter probably could have thrown in some. Hey, like I'll I'll create a hip hop keto karate video because I'm doing something that nobody else has ever done. You know, so there was a lot of money on the table that could have been for everybody split evenly. That they kind of just chose to. They kind of chose to almost have their own little temper tantrum, Ooh. which. Everybody knows, you know, my favorite is Zach, but he the, the decision was just a bad decision when what you're trying to do and you haven't even really truly established yourself. And I'm not even sure if JDF had, I, I think he might have had a baby by then. You know, I think his first child. So I don't imagine that he was probably trying to leave this guaranteed money after he's already been asked back to leave again. And now at this point, he already knows a movie is we're we're about six weeks away from making a movie you know so i feel like when we talk about this the one thing that's always missing from the conversation and even in the fan word thing is accountability you know we if, if it was that serious austin then why'd you come back for zio right like if, if they were if you were being treated that badly why come back for zio like it, it, oh cook it, 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 David was treated badly and he hadn't shown up since until a year ago. That's the only time he's come back. So if it was, and then you keep coming back. So it begins it's to the make, money, man. It, it, it is. And that's what money. I'm saying. It, it begins to make you wonder like, okay, you know, what's, what's true and what's not true because, and I've said this before, it's what Austin, it doesn't seem like there's enough consistency, you know, um, when he's talking about what happened it, it like someone else mentioned the story keeps changing it goes one way or another he still you can tell you can tell he's still very angry he's still very hurt like bro you you can go make as much you were the original you you have a float and you had a float in the macy's oh <laughs> shit not, not the macy's you know, parade you, god damn you chizzo <laughs> so i mean what, you have nothing to be angry about because People still give, but you keep choosing to dig yourself these holes. Why is it that, and I said this in the chat, why is it that nobody has heard of your name except outside the con world until there's a FBI knocking on your door? Like, really? <laughs> like, like and, and, and it begins to make you wonder, like, what is really going on? And I get it. He might have used younger than everybody else. Like, but what's really going on with the kind of choices that you make? The choices that he keeps making, like you can start to kind of seek consistency. Like you kind of make bad choice after bad choice after bad choice. And then when you make those bad choices, you blame JDF. So now next time you make a bad choice and JDF's no longer here, who are you going to charge? Who are you going to blame for the choices that you're making now that Jason Frank is no longer here? You Man, know, Chanzo, you cooked, brother. You cooked. You got Brent speechless. He's just not in agreement. Like, yeah, damn, oh, Chanzo. You're right. You're right, Chanzo. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Interject. What you got for Chanzo? He Okay, so um he came back for money. <laughs> he came back for money. And the thing is with Austin, he never said that, oh, um, I left because um I was tr the working conditions were poor or because um they were racist or homophobic or whatever, not throw any shit up at any other Rangers. He left because of the money. 
And um, he came back because they gave him a better deal with money. So I don't think he's ever said anything to the contrary regarding um, why he came back for Zio. So, but in terms of JDF and the, the strike, we're not, what we're discussing is not that JDF versus ASJ, who made the better business decisions or who's a better businessman or who's more charismatic. Um, that person's JDF. He had the looks, he had the charisma, he had the, the superior martial arts skills. He had all of that, and Haim Saban saw that. And there, that's not the issue. That's, that's never been the issue, at least for me. I mean, Austin might think something different because he has a big – naturally, as playing a leader, he has a big ego. And um, that's not, the, that's not the, the dispute that we're having. Or at least what we're disputing is – when you give someone your word, and I know this is going to sound like we're talking in circles, <laughs> but we always have to bring it because that's a topic of the fan <sighs> word, this, the fan word video. It's not that JDF or Austin John is the superior businessman, the superior ranger or the superior whatever. We all, I know that it's JDF. I've said it many times that he carried the franchise. He was able to do that because of he's just a, a superior ranger. I mean, he took down in, in the show. He took down all five of them and, <laughs> and, and the Red Ranger barely won. And that's, we're not disputing that. We're disputing when someone gives their word in a contract negotiation, you're supposed to, keep, you're expected to keep your word. Yeah, but you know, and you're supposed to, I, I get I get where you're going. You're expecting to keep your word. But, absolutely. And, okay. and, 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 and Walter said in the video that they were asking for SAG for unionization. They weren't asking yes, for a million yeah. dollars. And yes. that, and if Walter and Austin, if everyone was consistent with that demand, and JDF was on board with that initially, and then he just bails out because Saban gives him a side deal, then there are questions about JDF and his quote unquote transparency. Um, you 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 take a side deal for a million dollars. I absolutely would understand that, but as someone who claims to be a man of your word and being transparent, you should. Don't go doing interviews at San Diego Comic Con saying that I was never a part of helping other people. I never want to be a part of that. Say that, yeah, I agreed with um, what Austin Walter wanted. They wanted to be union. I agree with that. And the, but Haim Saban gave me a lot of money, and I couldn't turn it down. And if people want to criticize me, that's fair game. But I did what was best for my family. So if Austin and Walter want to talk about shit about me, I get it. But at the same time, I did what was best for my family. And I'm willing to, to take the criticism from them because I let them down. But I did what was best for my family because I, I had a kid and another one on the way, and I did what was best for my family. So and I think that's hold on. The let me here. you um, ensure my um, attendance to a certain event, and I gave you my word that I would be there. Yeah. If it was a hurricane in the location I was going, and I backed out, would you say I'm not a man of my word? You're you're comparing. Um, a natural event where your life, where your safety is. Okay. Okay. Maybe that was a little bit that's extreme. Not a good comparison. Okay. So if we agree to negotiate for $10,000 per episode and yeah. you go in there and you say, we're asking for $20,000 per episode. And I say, I'm not a part of this. No, anymore. no, 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 no. That's not a good comparison. Cause they asked for unionization to be SAG. Walter said they, they were asking to be SAG. And if, if Walter and Austin, everybody else was consistent in that demand, and JDF just backs out. Um, there's a there's an issue here now. If they change it, that's a little different. But according to what Walter said, they demanded SAG unionization, and but that, I feel that's too much. That's a is I that too much. Then why would, did JDF agree to that? Then why did he agree to that? That's 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 you taking them at their word of being honest and forthcoming. It's easy to throw JDF under the bus because he ain't here to defend himself. And every he has a history. We did the Brent stream for a reason. I agreed to that, even though I knew it was um, a way to <laughs> isolate the criticism. I, I, I know your game, Henry, but I did it anyway. Um, and we addressed why should we should uh, listen to Walter versus JDF. Uh, it's a he said, she said. But when somebody consistently um, lies and disrespects other Rangers, you have to naturally you're going to side with Walter Jones versus Jason David Frank. And um, that's based, I'm taking Walter's word. 
And then maybe one day I'll interview David Ghost and Amy Joe. Maybe I'll convince him to do an interview, which is very unlikely. But let's say we, I hear from them and they confirm what Austin and Walter said. You guys are not going to, you guys are going to say, well. I would, look, I would, have, I would want you to, to get it. If you say you spoke with Jay, David or Amy and they confirm that what Walter's saying is true and that JDF agreed to some sag shit and um, last minute bail for a side deal. Then I would be like, okay, I get you. Maybe you have a gripe there. But at the end of the day, they still chose to walk off the show. When the when the deal came back different, they still chose to walk. When you go to negotiations, when I'm going to negotiate my salary, I say a number, they give me a counter offer, I could take it or leave it. You say you want SAG, they say we'll give you a little bit more money, but we're not doing SAG, take it or leave it. They chose to leave it. And you to put the blame on JDF saying he fucked us over, he stabbed us in the back because we would have been SAG if we would have had this one person on. I, I don't know if that's that's a Which that's a I, accurate. Go ahead, Chanzo. Power Rangers never became SAG for another like six years or seven years after that. I don't think it even became SAG until I think it was like Time Force or something like that. I think they that they're the first season to actually get SAG residual. And then they no longer were SAG after like three years after that. Yeah. But if you look at the time if you look at the timeline of the contracts from what I've understood, the con there were three contracts. First contract was first 40 episodes. They, you know, nobody knew this was gonna be a hit. They filmed about 37 out of the 40. Then first episode airs, they get another 40 episodes, 20 done in the first season, 20 done in the second season. So now we're renegotiating contracts because once that 80 episode contract is up, remember once again, JDF had left and JDF and went to go do VR troopers. So maybe that was part of the deal is that he was gonna go be the lead in VR troopers and get his own situation. So he had walked, he had walked away from Power Rangers thinking, I'm gonna go do this at the time it was Cybertron. I'm gonna go do Cybertron. And then Heim asked him to come back because everybody kept calling, where's Tommy, where's Tommy, where's Tom? So Heim asked him to come back. So maybe in him being asked to come back, you know, that's where things went south. But if you've already been kind of let go once, right? Like, and you realize, hey, I've been on the other side. You've seen what happened to Audrey. I, I can visually see I'm a businessman on top of that. I don't, I, my thing is, is that JDF, it seemed like JDF checked the temperature, knew what was going on, knew a movie was going to come out, knew that this was about to be a really big moment for all of them. And we know that the movie would have been completely different if the original three had stayed. And I think you were on that live stream, Brent, on Power Rangers <laughs> Playback when, when Walter admitted we walked off set. It wasn't, it wasn't like, hey, you know, Ooh, we, that's a no, no our bags and walked away. Nobody kicked us off. Nobody, we, we made a decision and we walked away. What happened is their key cards were declined when they tried to come back. So, you know, basically they, they were like, cool, you walked, you left. We're not even gonna, they you can go. It. Yeah, you can go watch, um, there's a whole episode, uh, Lord Zed's Monster Mash. There, that's the first episode you don't see, that you can clearly see they haven't hired the new people and the old people are gone. So it, it's it's a it's a mess of an episode because you clearly see something's wrong. You now, know? before we let Brent respond, we do have some super chats we acknowledge. We got to acknowledge all our donors. And um, this donor said, ASJ needs to get on Ozempic to get into the spandex. Uh, and that's the show sponsor. Also... Um, and he wants to correct everyone and says, Jason never had a float, Chanzo. That float was Rockies. <laughs> I think he caught everyone off guard. We needed that to kind of break the ice because no, we, we, so <laughs> we were getting so tense. We were getting so tense. So when I saw it, I was like, this going to derail us, but we would right. get a good laugh. So, right. um, but Chanzo is right. Haim knew JDF was the star. He's the only one he called back. JDF had all the leverage, so they go to JDF because he is the golden child. If we can get him to fight for us, we may have a chance. 
And Haim was like, you're not going to flip my golden child. I got money. I got money. I got money. And I know what motivates my golden child. He ain't, he ain't, he don't care about working 15 hour shifts. He'll do that shit. And he's, and he said that when he was working with Bat and Son, he was like, why did, he was like bloodshot when union, he was like, it pissed me off because I had to, we had, we can only film for a certain amount of times, which extended production. And I played that interview on this channel. Also, if you, from Heim's point of view, I don't want SAG in my fucking business. I don't Absolutely. want them telling me I can't work 15 hours in a day. I don't want them telling me after a certain time I have to pay people more. I don't want them to do that. I want to give people the contracts that they want. I know they're hungry. I could be opportunistic, predatory, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I'm giving people opportunities. I'm making people stars. Sure, I'm making billions, but at the same time, there's no guarantee I'm making billions. I'm gambling on Brent. I'm gambling on Chanzo. Here's the contract. Sign this shit, or I'm going to get the next person in line. And that's that's just what it was. So, uh, Any last words, fellas? Because I think this has been good. I think this has been productive. Um, I know we got some people in the back. I see we got the actor. I know he want to come up, who's actually a real actor. He just, he, he just hitting there waiting. <laughs> I'll let we'll 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 go we'll go we'll go actor you get the last word then Chanzo then finally Brent so go ahead actor because you provided us with the tape you get okay. two minutes or a listen, minute and a half minute and a half listen, keep it listen Brent, Brent, Brent listen you can hate JD if all you want but the the because I saw some of your comments in the fan word video and you were talking really bad stuff about JDF that. You don't know there are facts, and it'd be nice to not spread stuff like that unless you know it's facts. You know, because one of the things you mentioned was that JDF lied about the Netflix special. J this has already been established on this channel that he didn't do it because he wanted all the originals. Plus, they were trying to take his baby, The Legend of the White Dragon. It's been established, but yet you keep going off saying that he's a liar and stuff. So, hold on, Brent. I see you warming up. Go ahead, actor. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, and then the the other thing. Uh, 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 no, I think I think that's one of the. Yeah, that was it, pretty much. It. Uh, yeah. All right, Brent. Make sure you take notes. Thank you, actor O2, for your contribution to the show, and thank you for watching for so long, man. It sounds like you've been in the ninja. Yeah, watching I've been zone for I've been watching while. since the beginning. You've been doing the Power Rangers, yeah. <laughs> I love when all my, <laughs> my when my ninja watcher day ones come forward. I appreciate it. So, salute to you, actor O2. All right, Chanzo, brother from another mother, whose mother I actually seen on stream. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to your last words to be to Brent or to the to the audience? And y'all want the Henry after dark? What I think all the women left. <laughs> but uh, go ahead, Chanzo. <laughs> I think that well, we know he and he's gone on many times saying why he didn't um, do the special. Um, you know, and we know that at this point, JDF was tired of being for lack of a better word, screwed over by Power Rangers. I'm tired of not getting the respect that he wanted, you know, not being being the being the person who was directly connected to the fans, you know, and him knowing what the fans want, and then them just being like, no, you don't know anything. And he's so I mean, we know that part. I don't have any disagreement on the actor on that part. So he, he was right about that. And and I just hope that with the situation we all can come together and kind of um just kind of i don't know i, I just you know brent sometimes I, I listen to brent and you know I, I respect your candor brent i respect that you have the gumption to say some of the things you do gumption because, five thousand know, dollar word right there yeah so um that's that's why because you stand on what you believe in and, and even if i'm not you know even if sometimes you're wrong i respect that you'll stand on it you'll stand on it so uh, he'll die on that yeah. cross so if you want to come to c2e2 <laughs> In Chicago, Amy Joe and David Yost will be there. I'm going to be there. So I will walk side by side with you because at the same time, I still want to, you know, pick your brain a little bit, talk to you. And, oh, and my God, Chanzo. <laughs> let me tell you, bro. I didn't have probably a three-hour conversation. A two, I didn't have so many goddamn long-ass conversations with Brent. 
um, on stream, off stream, uh, on the phone, off the phone, email, back and forth. He will tie your ass up and eat that clock up and you will just be talking Power Rangers and Power Rangers. He'll fucking send you clips. He'll be like, what about this? He got all that shit ready for your ass, Chancel. So it is a good time to, if you're a historian, uh, meeting up with Brent, that could be something good to do in Chicago. Just watch out for all the guns and uh, don't get killed out there. You know what I'm saying? So, you yes. Know. <laughs> Keep that bulletproof. But thank you, Chanzo, man. I appreciate you coming up. Tell your mama yeah. I said hi. And we'll wow. go on to Brent. All right, well, Brent. Let's go. You have the floor. You've been here. Francis had to step away to tend to her child. Um, I don't think we got any participants for Henry After Dark. Uh, so this may end it. Brent, what would you like to say? You got the floor. You got the last word to everybody, to your haters to your supporters, to your JDF fans, to your anti-JDF fans. You know, I pretty much don't censor you here at all, except for that one time you was trying to bring up some shit when we was covering this. Definitely, ah, no, we're not doing that shit. Um, but go ahead, Brent. What do you got to say? So the actor, too, he says that um, he took issue with what... We discussed it in the Brent stream. This is something that we discussed before, but people might think it's a repeat, but since actor, two brought it up, then I have to rehash it. So um, in San Antonio in October 28th, uh, 2022, uh, JDF did a panel where he said, I didn't do the 30th anniversary because there's no originals. And I grew up with the originals, um, Amy Joe, David, Walter, ASJ, and unfortunately, Tweed. That's almost word for word what he said. And um, that's, you're the face of Power Rangers. You're the you carried the franchise. You're tell you're you claim you're best friends with David Yost. You you want to tell me that um, you didn't know that David Yost and Walter were doing the special? Um, yeah, that's not. I don't believe personally believe that. I think that's a lie. But if the actor too he takes issue with that, then. Whatever, I have the clip of the video. I have proof of what he said. In terms of where'd Henry go? But okay, that's I'm speaking by myself. That's fine. Um, in terms of the video, the um, what we just the the topic of the video again. I we're going in circles. People are accusing me of going in circles, but be, that's because we have to go back to what the this. The original video is about the, the topic of the video is the fan word video. It's not ASJ versus JDF. Who's a better martial artist? Who's a better ranger? Who's a better businessman? Who's a who's a better looking guy? Who's in better shape? All those things. Um, JDF, no question about that. But that's not the discussion of the of the fan word video. The fan word video is um, about the negotiating the, the strike. And about how Austin and Walter claim that they agreed to negotiate as a unit and they agreed that they wanted to fight for SAG, not for a million per episode. And we have to take Walter's word that they kept that demand for SAG consistent during negotiations. And the issue is the JDF quote unquote backstab them. And if what I heard from Austin and Walter and from David, if, if if what all of them are saying is true, it seems like JDF he did he he did leave them high and dry, and that's the issue. Not that he's looking after his family or whatever. That's if he didn't agree to act as a unit, I would have no issue with what he did. But again, it's about whether he agreed to act as a unit and he didn't follow through. That's that, that is the issue. Whoa. And Sorry. Keep going. So, yeah, I mean, and, and people are going to claim what they want to, they're going to hear what they want to hear and that's fine. But the re the issue again, not who's a better businessman or who isn't, it's about sticking as a team and keeping your word. And I, I believe that's what the, the fan word video is about. So. All right. So Brent yeah. is of the opinion that JDF left him high and dry. 
And I don't think there's anything that anyone can say or do that changes opinion on that. And, you know, here I'm not trying to change people's opinions, but, you know, we do. I do provide a platform where everyone can share their opinion, even if they're wrong, like Brent, we still allow it. So, uh, <laughs> well, do you, have, do you have proof of the contrary? Like, do you have, hey, do you have, where did you talk to David Yost, Amy Joe? Did you talk to them? I, I did mean, not. I'm, you know, I'm just teasing. Um, right. No, I, no, no one will ever get the story. The story is clear as mud. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drop Brent down. I know okay. the actor, the actor, come on, actor, go ahead, go ahead. You got two minutes, go, go. Cause he, okay. he like, no, let, bring him back up. I got, I got some shit to say. He got, okay, he got time today. Yo, Brett, I got all night. I can say, Brett, he didn't lie about the Netflix special. Cause again, you forget that he got a different script and they were trying to steal his baby. So he didn't lie about it. He wanted the original. He wanted everybody to be treated fairly. And that wasn't the case. Only what, two people that were from the original signed up or whatever. And Another thing that you, you said that JDF lied about being sober, you can take a couple of drinks of alcohol and still be considered sober. I don't know about that. You don't get, I still, but, uh, unless you that's don't that get California drunk. sober. And that's no, uh, no, no, I don't know about that shit. But, but the word sober means that you're, 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 your mind is, you're not drunk. So if I take a sip of, of alcohol, whatever, and I don't get drunk, I'm still considered sober. Think about that. Uh, you tell that shit to the cops, man. Tell that shit to the <laughs> cops. <laughs> Anything else, actor O2? Because I actually got a, a real actor in my DMs telling me about everything I said about SAG was true. Um, uh, well, what about SAG? Uh, that you don't want them in your mix if you're trying to um, produce a movie. They slow things yeah, down that, and, and yeah. run up the cost. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's all true. Yep. So, um, all right, actor O2, you're not going to convince Brent. Brent not going to convince you. <laughs> JDF's right. a liar and backstabber in Brent's eye, and Actor O2 is like, no, he stood on business. Okay. Uh, anything? <laughs> uh, let me drop y'all down so I can give y'all my final word. All the ladies, drop. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Actor O2. I really appreciate y'all coming up, man, and contributing to the show. Salute, salute. We back. We live. All right, guys. <laughs> Uh, we could have did some Henry After Dark, but all the women, they skedaddled about this bitch. We need more people. You know, we need new faces. It's really hard to get new faces to cam up and stand on business. We always got Brent. We know Francis a poppy and we know Santa poppy in. I don't know where the hell dust that, but we need people like April. We had Sticky Vicky in the background. I don't know what the hell she was trying to get in. But she ain't cam up, so, uh, I mean, she has some technical issues. She sent me a message like, sorry, I messed up. And I actually got an a actor in my DMs like, yo, you right. You right. And I'm looking at pictures like, yeah, this ninja actor, for real, for real. Like, we need to, I need to, I need to branch out, guys. Um, I'm shocked that people be watching this, this stream, but I do think it's the best Power Ranger streams uh, on YouTube, on the platform. So if you could do me a favor, like the stream, any questions before I shut this bitch down? We've been streaming for goddamn almost five hours. Remember the, the, the five hour Red Ranger stream? That shit was epic. Epic. Mike called in, talked about a crackhead. Mac truck called in, talking about uh, put some respect on Tammy name. It was an epic stream. And I think this one is up there in the in the books. It may not have the viewership of the uh, the Red Ranger stream. Uh, but the content is just just kicking, uh, kicking everyone's back in. So with that being said, you know, um, I don't, I just can't see JDF agreeing to that. Maybe he did in jest and said, sure, 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 I'll support you. And then when the shit, when, you know, when the rubber hit the road, he was like, nah, man, y'all on some crazy shit. Y'all on your own on this I got to step away from you. I'm not, you're not fucking Jerry Maguire, Austin St. John. So what Austin St. John pulled and you know, um, uh, when it comes to this, who, who didn't pop in, who didn't pop back in? Oh shit. Just when I was going to drop, you know, this guy, I cannot go up Ranger stream and not put his ass up in this bitch. Mr. Monster. He just interrupted the monologue and said, let me in. I said, okay, we know he at work and we see, look at him, look at him, look at him. He got his, I'm actually he, closing down the store right now. So I've been listening to the stream. I'll keep it short because I've been listening the whole time, but, uh, man, I feel like mo a couple different things could happen. If they would have stayed on, um, they would have made money with the movie. I would have seen them in the movie. Um, but we wouldn't have gotten Adam and, and Steven. 
uh, 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 Boone got Rocky. And I feel like those two characters were really important. Um, the fact that they didn't show up is sad. Uh, like, but they didn't continue on with the Rangers and make more money and become more famous, blah, 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 all that. I think, think uh, uh, Zach could have been really famous uh, next to Jordan LaForge. You know, he, he, when I think of the 90s and I think of black actors, I think of, I think of Zach, actually, and I think of uh, uh, Jordy LaForge from Star Trek. And uh, I actually met them both at a Comic-Con one time, but he could have been just as big. But if they left for the reasons that they left for, it, it is what it is. We got two other guys. that ended, Rocky ended up staying for the longest a, a Ranger has ever stayed for before. Nobody has, even Jason David Frank doesn't have as many episodes as, as Rocky. He he's hands down the most episodes as as a ranger. So we wouldn't have got him. We wouldn't have got any of that if they wouldn't have left. Um, there could have been great things. Is what it is. If you're asking for a mill, yeah, even if you're not stop. asking for a mill, um, think about it this way: Kimberly went on to do the movie. She got injured in the movie, so you risk it. You don't know what you're going to go into. You don't know how long you're going to last. You don't know any of that stuff until like you're there, you know? So it's like, I, I don't knock Zach or, or, uh, Walter, the red Ranger. What, uh, yeah. well, 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 well I, I don't knock him for wanting to leave. I don't I'll knock Chewie for wanting to leave either. They do. You make your choices in life that you have to make, you know, uh, sometimes you, you just can't, can't see the future. Uh, Jason David Frank knew that he had a family, he had to raise, he had to stay. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like everything that you presented, I'm pretty sure he never was on the page of let's strike. You know, he was not, He did, from everything that you've explained, it seemed like he was on the page of let's stay, let's see how long we can take this. Um, obviously, he didn't stay. He got replaced by TJ. TJ got replaced by Andros, who was just like uh, Jason David Frank. Andros was like the long hair, and he kind of fulfilled that role that was vacant after Jason David. Because let's face it, I love TJ, the first Black Red Ranger, and he's great and all, but Jason David Frank, man, it's, it's hard to replace him. So it's like things happen the way they did. Animosity is the way they did. I didn't really watch that. I, I actually, I linked you when I saw the stream of them two doing their video, but I kind of figured you were already on top of that. So. Here's the thing. When you linked it to me, I was banned. I'm banned from fan work. They banned me. So oh, okay. when uh, people were linking it to me, I'm like, I can't watch it. I had to, I had to go through my back channels to get to the video. And that's it, funny. It, it was, I, I didn't, I, I don't know why I got banned. I never said anything on their channel about them. I did cut a video that may have got like a thousand views, but um, other than that, not, not too much. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Things could happen different ways. It is what it is. Um, I got to meet those Rangers. I got to talk to them. I got to get all their autographs and shit. I'm proud about where they're at. I'm, I, I'm sad about Austin with the, with the legal shit. And I hope that it isn't legit, but it is what it is. You, you do the crime, you gotta do the time. I still will appreciate his work as the Red Ranger. I want to see him in future stuff. So that's why I'm, I hope that maybe he is innocent. Maybe he's not. I don't know. But we'll see where it goes in the future. I definitely need to see Zach in more things in the future. Billy coming back, more things. They rebooted everything after Cosmic Fury, whatever. I haven't watched that yet. But <laughs> the, way, the way I say it, see it is... Sometimes you probably should stick to it. You probably should go through the muck and the mud. You should probably hang in there until that blockbuster movie comes down. You might get treated like Aisha and <laughs> trying to walk up on the red carpet and then you get ignored <laughs> by Saban. But like, <laughs> hey, at least you made it to the red carpet. Fuck, tell fuck him. all of that. Tell him, Mr. You know, Monster. You, you made it to the red carpet, you know? And not Let that many know. people... During that time, not that many black superheroes were making it to the red carpet at that time. What did we have? What is it? Eddie Murphy did that one uh, comedy movie. I can't remember. Oh, no, it wasn't Eddie Murphy. It was, uh, 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 I can't remember the guy uh, from Major Pain. Uh, uh, I can't remember his name, but he did a superhero movie in the uh, 90s. Blake Man, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans. 
Damon Wayans, yes. Yeah, I love that movie. It's a great movie, but man, the Power Rangers came out and Aisha was a big character, you know, for many black youth. Uh, <laughs> so, like Yo, I said, man. sometimes you got to stick through it. You got to go through the muck in the mud and you get the big reward. Uh, Tell anyways, him, I, I got to go. We're, we're closing up the store. Uh, have a good night. And it was a great stream. All right, cool, cook. cool, cool. <laughs> Mr. Monster, let me let me remove Brent. I don't know why I put Brent back up there. I don't know what he had to say. We, we I almost clicked ban from studio. I got to click kick, kick him out of here, guys. We we're, we're we're shutting this thing down. I only did that for Mr. Monster. God damn. I you know when people when my day ones like when I know you my day one and shit, you know you know I'm gonna give you the floor, especially Mr. Monster. Um, anywho, uh, some people asking about the order. Now look, guys, I I have yet to. We we can do a whole live stream on the order, right? And look, we we got we got time today. I got time today, cuz. Uh, let's go to it. Let me. I'll I'll rock the trailer out real quick. The order, uh, trailer, Power Rangers, right? You like hold on. And this about to this about to piss some people off. You like holy shit, Henry? You about to play this shit? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Let's go! <laughs> let's go! This is the order. Remember when Aisha was like, what do you think about doing a movie together? Because she already had one plan. Now they collected like $150,000 for this shit. And this shit is never coming out. Look at that. There go Font. There go, uh, <laughs> there go your girl right there. There go Brent's love of his life. There go, I don't know who that is. Uh, which version of uh, Asian Jason David Frank? I don't know. Bad guys. Deep me. Oh, oh, we saw, we saw him. We're moving into position now. Looks like a bit. Oh, what do you got? The blicky? He got the blicky in his head? We got party crashes. You guys expecting company? Ah! 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 All right, guys. All right, all right. You get the order. I can't really. Uh... <laughs> oh man uh let's let's see i gotta fast forward some things you know youtube be like don't be showing blickies it's never been done before we're all gathered for a fallen friend look at the bad guy look they come in look at they coming in right you like yo who the bad guys for a fallen friend. look all right we got all the power rangers we got him he's the leader of the gang all five two of them let's go that applies to those oh look at the hair <laughs> look at the hair he's a tough guy he's, a, he's the one kicking in your door <laughs> talon talon is that you talon johnny young bosch talon is that you buddy Bring the assets in. Oh, Zordon, that you, buddy? Is that you? Zordon, no. Why he got a desert eagle in his hand? Get out of here. Get out of here. Look, you. Oh, it's like one clip. I, I've shot one before. Look at that thing. <laughs> Bro, you shoot a desert eagle. Oh my god, man. You might pop your face in, but uh yeah, I've shot one before. <laughs> this was all just one big thrill ride for you. Yes, Jack. Yes. I was so thrilled when you left me for dead. I was so thrilled when I lost my eye! Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, all these everyone got the blicky but no one got a with jack who was that the, the the wish version of the punisher the uh kingpin who was that oh that's bulk i'm sorry <laughs> So eager to jump right in. 
Oh, who is that? Is that the girl who got knocked out? I don't know. Where, where's she at? Yeah, that brother star. Well, now would be a great time. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, yo. <laughs> strings from the beginning what are we gonna do oh he's still playing the smart nerdy type oh my goodness <laughs> we're gonna fight back we gonna fight back y'all we gonna fight back we're gonna collect some money and we're not gonna put the movie out we're gonna fight look at all of us okay she from time force all right yeah yeah that brother's ah oh, yeah i need to go see her at comic-con because of you the order is divided I mean, look at Cat though. Cat was Cat was crushing it right there. All right, Cat. I know, I know. The order's divided because of you. Chaos was born. Notice Jason David Frank is not in this shit. All right, come on. Oh, the order movie. Give us money and we not gonna put that shit out and we gonna say so it was SAG. It was SAG the reason we can put it out. Now you know why Saban is like, mm-mm, I ain't fucking with SAG. You see, that's how that shit go. All right, guys. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. This was the longest stream I've ever done by like a couple minutes. And I typically don't do these type of streams because they're very hard on my body. But I got to be up. I got to go see my little daughter at uh, ballet. I have to um, go to my nephew's birthday party. I got to go out, get some dinner. You know what I'm saying? I got needs, God damn it. <sighs> Shit, boy. I mean, anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Next stream will be um probably wednesday i gotta talk about some twitch stuff they like henry you can't be doing this shit about what you want to do you gotta talk about twitch i'm like i don't want to talk about twitch sometimes it just be getting to me i'd be like oh twitch oh these ranger streams be so much better they be so like <clears throat> i'll be killing these shits and then the twitch streams i'll be like all right man i gotta I got to react to some shit. I'm waiting on court docs. Court docs ain't coming. They want me to talk about Power World and, you know, how it's ripping off Nintendo. Um, I, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, talk to Karen Ashley about the order. So we are, it ain't coming out. It's done. Y'all y'all want me to do a Power Ranger stream about the order and Karen Ashley, little firecracker ass, what she used to be. Not, not, not so much a firecracker. She's a little tame now. You get a little older, you get a little quiet. You look quiet. Look. But anyway, guys, this has been a great stream. It's been action-packed, jam full of content. It's probably going to get copyrighted to shit, deleted to hell. Um, so if you are a part of this, consider yourself in a privileged position. Uh, watch the replay sooner than later because I don't know if it's going to be up. I know I'll be deleting live streams, but this one... When I want to send a message, I'll leave it up. <laughs> so this one will be up and I'll probably clip me going in on the goddamn um, the Ranger video. But like it's a big weekend. So uh, like the stream on the way out and I will see you. I know like I should stream Wednesday. You going to email me? OK, well, I thought you was going to email me during the show. Like which one is it? Shaw? make up your goddamn mind, man. Do a stream about the order. They're like, do it. Do it. You know how long it takes me to produce these shits? It ain't an easy feat. You know, I'm a producer. I, I, don't, I don't got no benefits, guys. But good night, everyone. Shout out to my family members watching and all that good shit. And, you know, be kind. Keep your word or Brent going to come for your ass in them dreams. Now, you know what I'm saying? With that being said, peace.